What's up guys? It's yo boy on the sensei. Welcome to, what if I was reborn as Uchiha reviving the clan with harem system? Part 5. Like, share and comment on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed. Also remember to check out the original story, link in the description. With all that out of the way, let's get into it. Ichiha clan training ground. Two children approached with excitement on their faces. Big brother, is this where you usually train? Yes, Konohamaru. My strength has been accumulated here over time. Oh, to have such strength at the ninja school, you must have put in a lot of effort here. Of course. Now that I've brought you here, I will naturally teach you something. Oh, oh, oh. Thank you, big brother Naruto. That's right, it's Naruto and Konohamaru. Originally, these two should have met after Naruto graduated, but as Naruto's strength grew, he learned the transformation technique in advance, and naturally developed the sexy technique. With the sexy technique, he defeated the third Hokage, and successfully won Konohamaru's heart. Today, I will pass on my secret sexy technique to you, hoping that you will carry forward our seduction school and make it flourish. Naruto said with great emphasis. Yes, big brother. Konohamaru was filled with excitement. Idiots can you two find another place if you don't want to train? If you want to play, go somewhere else. Sasuke said displeased. This training ground is located in the territory of the Achiha clan, and was originally used by Natsuo to train Sasuke. However, after Niji arrived, he also started training here. After Naruto came a few times, he voluntarily moved his daily training location here. Sakura and others followed Sasuke, occasionally coming here to have a meal. Yes, they didn't train here. They just came to see handsome guys. Sasuke harbored dissatisfaction towards the aforementioned individuals, believing that they were affecting his own training. In response, Naruto merely glanced at Sasuke with disdain in his eyes, using his gaze to communicate. Do you think I'll tell brother Natsuo that you took me to the club? You. Sasuke instantly lost his composure, tightly gripping his shinobi sword, almost wanting to strike out with it. Although he had mentally prepared himself for the shame of advancing his Sharingan, Sasuke really didn't want Natsuo to know about him secretly going to the club. Or rather, he didn't want anyone to know about it. Ah, why can Naruto know? Well, maybe Sasuke doesn't consider Naruto as a person. Shem PH, you're still teaching students. Sasuke coldly snorted, aware of misleading the younger generation. Niji, who was beside them also smiled and said, That's right, Naruto. Teaching others and making oneself stronger are not the same thing. Hey, hey, don't underestimate me. Naruto said in a carefree manner. I have defeated the third Hokage, and am destined to become the fifth Hokage in the future. By then both of you will be under my command. Be careful that Hokage-sama doesn't give you a hard time. Hokage? Huh? Sasuke sneered. Although some time had passed, he still felt a bit frustrated whenever he thought about the mission the third Hokage had given to the Ichiha clan. Shaking his head, he approached Niji. Niji, let's practice together. You're about to participate in the Chunin exams, right? I can definitely help you. Sure. Niji smiled slightly, showing his elegance. Although Sasuke hasn't graduated, his strength has already surpassed that of a genin. Practicing with him is like a rehearsal for the Chunin exams. The two quickly engaged in combat. Meanwhile, Konohamaru and Naruto began practicing the sexy technique. As a man who has already been led astray by Sasuke, Naruto's knowledge level has greatly improved. The allure of the sexy technique has also been enhanced. Konohamaru may be the one who understands this best, as he witnessed Naruto use the sexy technique to teach his master Abisu a lesson. According to Naruto, he didn't even use his full strength to defeat Abisu. He still has a secret move called Harem Technique. Once this move is used, gods and demons retreat. Konohamaru is looking forward to it, and then he starts sparring with Naruto. Transformation. Your chest isn't big enough. Transformation. Do you understand the posture? Posture is important. Transformation. Being completely naked is indeed good, but half-covered is what truly makes a man's heart flutter. Konohamaru, you still need to continue your training. Yes, that's how it is. Although Naruto has not yet graduated from ninja school, but due to the butterfly effect caused by Natsuo, he has learned a series of powerful ninjutsu, such as the shadow clone technique and the multiple shadow clone technique, 
thanks to Natsuo's occasional guidance. However, Konohamaru, who is a year younger, is physically underdeveloped and limited in chakra, so he quickly becomes exhausted. Huff huff Naruto Nyasen, let me rest for a while, you're really useless. You can't handle a little training. How are you going to inherit the legacy of my sexy techniques in the future? Naruto looks dissatisfied, but still said, fine, go rest. I'll continue training. He can't spend all day with the kid. Sasuke has already completed a training regimen on the side. How can he be decadent? So, he finds a place and is about to start physical training. On the other hand, Kinohamaru catches his breath and recovers his strength after resting for a while. He glances at Naruto, then at Sasuke and Niji who are already resting beside him, especially at the uneven ground created by the battles between Sasuke and Niji. The Achiha clan has an absurd number of ninjutsu, and Sasuke and Niji have been taught many of them. When the two of them fight, it's definitely earth-shattering. But there are fire effects, wind techniques, jinjutsu they have it all. Highlight one word. Handsome. Kinohamaru is just a kid after all. Although he deeply desires to defeat the third Hokage, when he sees Sasuke and the others looking so cool, he can't help but feel a little envious. Naruto Nyasen. How about you teach me some normal fighting? Sure, I'll fight you using your speed and strength. Naruto casually agrees. He's always been a warm-hearted guy. However, this time Konohamaru gets taught a harsh lesson. Konohamaru, you can't throw a straight punch like that. A straight punch should be straight, not thrown with your eyes closed. Your movements are too obvious. Do you think I'm blind and can't see your little tricks? You are revealing too many flaws. Do you think you can bluff in battle? Do you think the enemy will not attack such an obvious flaw? Konohamaru is just a kid. He doesn't have that much combat thinking. And Naruto used to be just like Konohamaru, or even even worse. But he's been beaten up by Natsuo so many times. Although his straightforward nature hasn't changed, his movements have become more subtle, and he has learned the most basic combat techniques. Kinohamaru is completely bewildered. He's also a ninja student this year, and although he's younger than Naruto, he's also a genius who is highly regarded. Didn't Abisu sensei say he's a genius? Why did he get beaten up so badly by Naruto Nyasen? I'm still number one in my class. And Naruto Nyasen didn't use more strength and speed than me, but he completely suppressed me. Is the gap really that big? Naruto Nyasen, are you the strongest student in the school? Kinohamaru couldn't help but ask. With equal speed and strength, but you completely dominate me in every aspect you must be the strongest, right? Kinohamaru's eyes are filled with admiration. He Naruto laughs happily. He remembers when he used to ask Natsuo for advice, he seemed to have the same expression. Is it my turn to teach others now? This feeling is really great. With the admiring gaze of his little brother, Naruto suddenly becomes excited, feeling light and airy. He immediately waves his hand. Of course, your big brother here has defeated everyone in the school and recently even defeated the third Hokage. Doesn't that prove my strength? He laughs heartily, pounding his chest. Let me tell you, in the ninja school, if I, your older brother, rank second, there is no one who dares to rank first, I'm ranked first. An untimely voice interrupts. Sasuke and Niji exchanged a glance, then each added a sentence. Last year, I was still in school, and I ranked first. This year, Niji graduated, and I ranked first. Both of them smiled slightly, indicating that they had reached a consensus. Upon hearing this, Kinohamaru's small eyes were filled with great confusion. Naruto, to interrupt me at a time like this, don't you know I'm showing off? Sasuke, aren't you supposed to be aloof? Niji, aren't you supposed to be refined? But in the end, you're both just as arrogant, right? Feeling the doubtful gaze of his younger brother, Naruto suddenly became angry and shouted at Sasuke. Arrogant Sasuke, if you have the guts, come down and fight me one on one. Sasuke didn't hold back either. Alright, it seems like I need to show you the power of the top student in our grade. So you won't keep bragging and affecting the reputation of our Kanova Shinobi school. And so, three minutes later Naruto, who had not activated the Nine Tails Chakra, was hit by Sasuke who had activated the Sharingan and fell to the ground. Looking at Konohamaru's disdainful gaze, Naruto felt like crying without tears. Next time, I'll have to avoid these two when bragging Konoha has prepared so much for the Chunin exams, and it's finally happening. Today is the second round of Niji's Chunin exam. Yesterday's first round of the exam was similar to next year's exam, testing the ability of Shinobis to steal information. Although the method is different, it makes no difference to Niji. The second round of the exam today is also the same death forest. If the first round of the exam could still have some new elements, the second round of the exam is always the same, and all the Jonin are familiar with it. Although Niji has made progress and has preliminary Jonin level strength, he can easily crush all the candidates. But after all, it's an exam. Niji can't help but become anxious and serious. 
Don't forget that he's also on a mission to improve his own reputation, which is much more stressful than just having to pass the exam. Otherwise, he wouldn't have teased Naruto before. This doesn't fit his calm personality. But although Niji is nervous, Natsuo doesn't pay much attention to it. With Niji's strength unless he encounters Gara, who is willing to use the tailed beast, no one is his opponent. In fact, even if he encounters Gara, who has unleashed Shukaku, it wouldn't be difficult for him to escape if he can't defeat the opponent with his strength. So as the team leader Natsuo is not worried at all, he has no desire to send his own student to the Chunin exam. Instead, during his disciples' exam, he is thinking about how to spend a wonderful night with his wives. However, at this moment, Anko suddenly came to the door with a serious expression. Natsuo, I smell a snake scent. I want to go to the exam site and take a look. The Forest of Death. It seems like there aren't any outstanding talents in this generation. Although I've heard that Sasuke is a very talented young man. If I were to lay a hand on him, Natsuo and Itachi would kill me, right? Orochimaru wandered in the Forest of Death his snake-like eyes seemingly seeing through the dense jungle, observing the shinobis fighting. He sighed lightly, his words filled with regret. In fact, the shinobis in this generation are not that bad. Let's not talk about Niji, who has grown stronger. Gara doesn't count either, as he is a Jinchuriki. But the others are not bad either. For example, Kenkoro and Tamari from Sunagaga. Tamari was the strongest wind release shinobi before Naruto in the fourth Great Ninja War. Although her strength did not reach cage level, she was among the top elite jonin. Kenkoro was the same. Although he couldn't compare to the genius of Sasori or the experience of Chiyo as a puppeteer controlling the puppet scorpion, he had the confidence to fight against cage level opponents even though his chances of winning were low. Kurigika did not send very strong shinobi. But perhaps Terumi may wanted to highlight the importance the new Mizukage placed on Shinobi with KK Genkai. So she specifically sent a Shinobi from the Hazuki clan, and a Shinobi from the Terumi clan. Both of them had KK Genkai and average talent. But that was compared to top tier geniuses. Kurigika had to save face. And even if it was just for show, they couldn't let their own Shinobis fail to enter the final exam. As for Kanoha, there was no need to mention it. A team of Ino Shikacho and Inyazuka and a high eager, all of them were the cream of the crop among Kanova Shinobi. The third Hokage had the confidence to hold the Chunin exam, with the intention of intimidating other countries. Other small villages also brought out their hidden talents. After all, they were weak in strength, so they needed to showcase themselves on such a stage. Otherwise, they wouldn't even have a chance to compete with the major Shinobi villages in other aspects. But these talents were simply not worth Orochimaru's attention. It seems unnecessary to meet these so-called geniuses. Orochimaru sighed lightly, his snake-like eyes narrowing slightly. Then I'll just wait for the third round of the Chunin exam, right? Suddenly, he raised an eyebrow and looked to his side. And a few seconds later several figures emerged from the jungle. You're really here, Orochimaru. Anko jumped out with a fierce expression, her eyes bloodshot. It seems my intuition was right, you really came. Anko, it's been a long time, how did you find me? Orochimaru was somewhat surprised. With your strength, you shouldn't have been able to detect my presence, right? Anko's face was filled with killing intent as she said. I just smelled your scent disgusting snake stench. I followed that scent and indeed found you. Orochimaru fell silent for a moment. This wasn't just a scent. As a cage level expert, how could he not know how to eliminate his own residual scent? Not to mention, Anko wasn't from the Inuzuka clan, so she didn't have that kind of nose. Is it intuition? Well, your intuition has always been particularly accurate, Orochimaru sighed softly. You've brought quite a few people with you. Huh, you really want to kill me. But do you think you can really kill me with these few cats and dogs you brought? Look at them, they're already starting to get scared. As he spoke, Orochimaru's expression became dangerous, and he licked his lips with his long tongue. Of course, Anko wasn't alone. The reason she sought out Natsuo was because of the promise he made to her, to provide funds to hire Shinobi to pursue Orochimaru together. A team of four people, with the weakest being a special jonin, and the strongest being an elite jonin. Although they weren't particularly famous experts, even Anko, who had trained in the Achiha clan for a long time, didn't have confidence in defeating Orochimaru. But at this moment, whether it was the special jonin or the elite jonin, they all looked at Orochimaru with solemn expressions, secretly feeling bitter. Damn it. I thought it was just a casual search. I didn't expect to actually find Orochimaru. Anko, with the money in hand, naturally immediately went to the third Hokage. Although the third Hokage didn't believe that Orochimaru would come, since the Achiha clan was willing to pay, there was no need to argue over money. 
Out of respect for the 5 million Ryo reward that Anko presented, four Jonin were assigned. In his opinion, it was just accompanying Anko in her mischief. After all, if they really discovered Orochimaru, Kanoha would take action on its own. How could they need Anko to pay a reward? It's because Anko has no evidence at all purely relying on intuition. That's why payment is required. The Jonin naturally had the same idea, accompanying Enko's antics for a few days in order to earn a rich reward for an s rank mission. Why wouldn't they do it? But the result they thought it was just a fishing trip. Who would have thought they could catch a great white shark while fishing? But since they encountered it, they are experienced ninjas who have been through countless battles. So naturally they won't back down. The leader, an elite Jonin, took a step forward and shouted, Orochimaru, what is your intention for secretly infiltrating Kanoha? Based on your answer, no. No matter what you answer, you will die here today. Fire release. Great fireball technique. A surge of flames erupted. However, no one expected this b rank ninjutsu to hit anyone. The elite Jonin just signaled, hoping to attract support from Kanoha. But in the next second, be careful. Anko urgently shouted. Boom. The ground beneath the elite Jonin's feet suddenly cracked. Orochimaru's head emerged from the ground. Then he opened his mouth, and out came a snake that had a sword coming out of its mouth. The sword directly pierced the elite Jonin. Orochimaru retracted the Kusanagi sword quickly, then the snake released the sword from its mouth, and slid back into Orochimaru's mouth. The Kusanagi sword fell into Orochimaru's hands. The first one, Orochimaru chuckled lightly. In just an instant, the elite Jonin died in Orochimaru's hands. Although he was also at an absolute disadvantage in terms of mentality, and had placed his hopes on the reinforcements from Kanoha, not fully focusing all his energy on the battle. But he was still an elite Jonin. Damn it. Anko cursed under her breath, swinging her sword and quickly forming hand seals. Fire release. Phoenix Sage Flower Nail Crimson. The flames attached to the flying sword, causing it to release scorching heat like scattered phoenix flowers, attacking the opponent. However, Orochimaru just smiled and clapped his hands. A huge snake suddenly appeared, its thick scales blocking the sword with the attached flames. The snake's head raised high and then slammed down. Boom. Anko and several Jonin immediately jumped back. But in the next second, Orochimaru's figure appeared in front of a Jonin, his hand rising and his blade falling, reaping their life. Anko gritted her teeth and quickly formed hand seals. Fire release. Fire dragon flame bullet. The roaring fire dragon whizzed by, enveloping both the Jonin and Orochimaru. The accompanying Shinobis hesitated to speak, ultimately saying nothing. The Jonin couldn't be saved anymore. All that remained was their lifeless body. So, there was no need to hold back. Even if there was no need to hold back, it might not be able to harm that man. Oh, still using fire release. Now you don't need my secret technique anymore, do you? Do you prefer the ninjutsu of the Ichiha clan? A cold voice resounded. Orochimaru slowly walked out from the side, still holding a fainted Jonin in his hand, a smile on his lips. It seems like you really obtained a lot from the Ichiha clan. Huh? But it seems like the time is still too short. Orochimaru chuckled lightly, looking incredibly sinister. And another person was easily killed by Orochimaru. Abandon the mission retreat, said the remaining Jonin without hesitation. Then he turned around and ran. The special Jonin hesitated for a moment and shouted at Anko. Give up, he is not someone we can manage. Then he immediately turned around and left. Anko did not leave, she continued to stare directly at Orochimaru her determined gaze unchanged. In fact, the strength of this team is not weak, and they have the ability to protect themselves from me. Orochimaru looked at the two fleeing individuals and casually said, but it seems that, except for you, they are not mentally prepared to fight me. Anko remained silent. Yes, even though Orochimaru has cage-level combat power, it shouldn't be so easy for him to instantly kill the people she brought. Her team is not weak. The real problem is that this team was not prepared for battle from the beginning. They didn't believe Enko when she said, I smell Orochimaru's scent. They just wanted to deceive her and get it over with. The third Hokage didn't believe Enko either. But the reward of 5 million Ryo is not low. Just by wandering around Kanoha, they could earn this reward. Of course, he wanted to keep it for their own ninja clan. Yes, all four of them are Saratobi clan ninjas. But Enko didn't change at all. She just silently tightened the sword in her hand. Orochimaru, even if it's just me, I'd rather die fighting than run away from you. This is my responsibility as someone who used to be your disciple. Swish. A shuriken was thrown. Shuriken shadow clone technique. Sure. 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 Countless shuriken were thrown. Orochimaru frowned and stepped back. Don't think you can escape. Anko didn't hesitate and started bombarding wildly. 
Fire release. Great dragon fire technique. Fire release. Great blaze ball. Fire release. Great fire annihilation. In an instant a large sea of fire appeared in the death forest. This girl. A hint of anger flashed in Orochimaru's eyes, but under such an attack, he continued to retreat. Not only because Anko was not sparing her chakra, but also because he dared not take action. With Orochimaru's strength, it would be easy to deal with Anko, even if she risked her life, it would only take a few moves. But the problem is, Anko is Natsuo's wife. Back then, Natsuo was able to chase after him for a spy he sent out. Who knows what Natsuo will do to him if he deals with Anko now. Take a deep breath and quickly calm down. Orochimaru turned and walked away. He can't afford to attack Anko, but he can still hide. But only a short period of time had passed, and Anko found him again. Orochimaru, don't think you can escape. Fire release. Blazing meteors. Boom, boom, boom. Explosions rang out, wreaking havoc. Orochimaru's mouth twitched, but he had to run away again. However, Anko persisted and kept finding him. This girl had ample supplies, not just chakra replenishing pills, but also high-priced forbidden drugs to enhance chakra. The highest quality supplements money may not create a top level combat power, but it greatly enhances an ordinary shinobi. Relying on the Achiha's wealth, Anko didn't care about money at all. Even if a battle cost 1 million Ryo, it would be reimbursed by Natsuo. Her husband was rich, so she was willful. Meanwhile, Orochimaru could only retreat again. Unfortunately, no matter where Orochimaru ran, Anko could quickly find him probably due to some kind of intuition because Orochimaru had no idea how she tracked him down. As a result, all the participants in the Forest of Death that day witnessed occasional large explosions. The commotion was too great and attracted too many people's attention. Over there, there's a master Gara squinted, his blood boiling. It's Miss Anko, she's fighting Orochimaru. Niji activated the Byakigan and looked into the distance. Damn, who the hell are they? We're just Genin participating in the Chunin exams. And there are guys, so powerful. Other participants were running around, fearing that they would be caught in that battle. Even the third Hokage was alarmed and sensed the problem with the Forest of Death before the retreating ninja reported it. Could it be that Orochimaru has really come? Was Anko right? The third Hokage gritted his teeth, changed into his battle gear, and ordered the mobilization of ninjas preparing to charge into the forest of death. On the other side, Orochimaru was also annoyed by being chased by Anko. If things continued like this, the entire village of Kanova would be put on high alert. Jiraiya and Tsunade might also be summoned back. How could he complete his plan? Moreover, how could he, Orochimaru, be running around like a rat? Anko's expression became serious. She also didn't understand why Orochimaru was so focused on running away without fighting back. If it weren't for her intuition telling her that this person was Orochimaru, she would have thought it was someone pretending to be him. But even though she didn't understand, it didn't stop her from bombarding him relentlessly. Her supplies were still abundant. Orochimaru's face revealed a fierce light, finally erupting. Almost instantly he approached Anko. Anko's expression changed. She had been too relaxed and let her guard down after her previous attacks. Orochimaru's hands moved quickly, and several snakes came out from under his sleeves, lunging fiercely at Anko. Anko, you really are however. The next second, a voice suddenly interrupted from the side. What is she really? Natsuo appeared next to them, a slight smile on his lips. Orochimaru's mouth twitched, slowly retracting the snakes, and then he forced a smile that was incredibly stiff. You are really too cute, Orochimaru. Oh, but what a pleasant surprise. Natsuo, dear, it's nice to see you. It's refreshing to see two brave young men together. Orochimaru's desire to survive is bursting, spouting all sorts of nonsense. Anko, confused by Orochimaru's sudden transformation, blinked several times before processing what was happening. She was completely dumbfounded, standing there in a daze, staring at Orochimaru's performance. Even Natsuo couldn't help but be a little surprised. He didn't expect Orochimaru's desire to survive to be so high, even he couldn't understand it. Orochimaru was also helpless. My desire to survive is high. But isn't it because of you? I don't have anything to trade with you now. If my desire to survive were any lower, would you kill me? Anko, what are you up to now, Orochimaru? Natsuo remained silent, watching Orochimaru's performance, while the atmosphere around them seemed more tense with every second. Orochimaru, nothing at all, dear Anko. I was just taking a walk, and I just got excited seeing familiar faces. Orochimaru sighed deeply. What is this? All right, stop pretending. Natsuo said helplessly. I see your tolerance. I'm not angry. It's about time for you to go back. His expression calmed down as he looked into the distance. If you don't go back soon, the third Hokage will bring people over. 
Are you not afraid of being left behind in Kanoha because you're not ready? Orochimaru's expression also quickly became indifferent returning to his initial coldness. Yes, Orochimaru's exaggeration just now was all an act. For a true ninja, what is dignity? Isn't it something that can be thrown away? If acting in a play can avoid losses, he doesn't mind acting every day. But since his goal has been achieved, he retreats without hesitation. He actually wanted to leave a long time ago. But Anko has been relentlessly pursuing him, so he couldn't leave. The air still vibrated with the tension of the recent confrontation with Orochimaru. Anko, with her questioning gaze, turned to Natsuo, whose eyes conveyed a mix between determination and a hint of discomfort. Anko looking at Natsuo in surprise. Do you know Orochimaru? I do. Natsuo smiled and said, I had dealings with him before well. Those wives with a snake aura that you mentioned, they were all Kinoichi trained by Orochimaru. They accepted the mission to have children for the Ichiha clan in the name of Orochimaru. But even so, Orochimaru shouldn't be so afraid of you, right? Anko said in a daze. I've never seen Orochimaru like that before. Well, it's just that let's say he had an eye-opening experience with me. Natsuo said. Anko asked with narrowed eyes. An eye-opening experience. Natsuo replied. Yes, something like the Sharingan illusion too well. Defeat him. Anko blinks in disbelief. Did you just use something like that to defeat him? Anko opened her mouth but couldn't say anything for a while. In Anko's eyes, Orochimaru was definitely the strongest renegade ninja in the ninja world. And Natsuo. Well, even she knew he was hiding some of his strength. But in name, he was just a jonin, and even called himself the shame of jonin. He didn't focus on training every day, but rather which room he should go to sleep in today. How the hell does that look like a strong person? But thinking about Orochimaru's expression Natsuo, are you really strong? Well, yes, but it's not important now. What matters is that you should stop being so impulsive, you know. Anko crossing her arms said impulsive. I'm not impulsive. Natsuo raised an eyebrow. Anko, please, after seeing the Jonin team you gathered run away. You still confronted Orochimaru without a second thought. That's almost the definition of impulsiveness. Anko snorted. Okay, maybe you have a point. Look, I understand you. But I won't always be able to appear as a hero to save you from your follies. Hey, it's not crazy. It's risky strategies. Sure, risky strategies that could end very badly. Wouldn't it be better I don't know to think a little more before jumping into action? Anko frowned. ESK, are you afraid that I will get hurt? Yes. But I'm also worried that you can't cope with certain situations. Anko sighed. Okay, I'll think about it all right, stop thinking about it. Natsuo chuckled lightly, tapping Anko's forehead with his finger. You should think about how to deal with the people coming soon. As he spoke, his figure slowly dissipated, leaving behind a devastated land. Not long after, the examiner in charge of the exam was the first to arrive, followed by several Anbu members. The third Hokage also arrived fully armed, quickly joining them. Anko, Orochimaru really came. The third Hokage's face was serious. Did you two cause all this commotion? Yes, because the snake really came. Anko glanced at the third Hokage inside. The commotion here was caused by a battle, but unfortunately, he managed to escape. He actually came. The third Hokage frowned. Compared to his old self, Orochimaru may not be young and strong, but he definitely maintained his combat power. He didn't have confidence in fighting against him, however, Anko. How are you okay? The third Hokage looked at Anko, furrowing his brows, and asked strangely, I remember I sent an elite squad to assist you, with the weakest being a special Jonin. As a result, the captain of the elite Jonin team died, but you're fine. Upon hearing this, Anko couldn't help but complain. Third Hokage, how can you say that? I even paid out of my own pocket to hire ninjas to deal with Orochimaru, and you gave me a team of good ninjas. The Jonin weren't prepared for battle at all. One was killed with just one blow, and then another lost their courage and was quickly defeated. Finally, the remaining two fled together. When did our Kanohu Shinobi become so useless? They are not even as good as a Chunin. As soon as these words were spoken, the third Hokage's face turned red. Anko wasn't injured mainly because of Natsuo. The main reason the other two died was because of their own shortcomings. They didn't have the right mindset for battle. Facing a cage-level expert, how could they not fight to the death and expect reinforcements from the village? If you don't die, who will? The ninjas present were all seasoned warriors. How could they not understand this principle? In addition, in Anko's words, there was a hint of the generous reward she offered, and a trace of understanding flashed in everyone's eyes. It must be the third Hokage who gave the generous reward for the mission to their own ninja. Unfortunately, they didn't expect that Orochimaru would actually be summoned by Anko, and they almost got wiped out. 
The third Hokage's face couldn't hold up, but fortunately, a few trusted individuals quickly spoke up. Why was Enko unharmed? Why did Orochimaru flee in panic? There is only one truth. Orochimaru feared the strongest Hokage, you, and sensed that you were coming, so he ran away. This conversation finally saved the face of the third Hokage. But whether other ninjas believe it or not, it's up to them. After Orochimaru and Enko caused such a commotion, one third of the Forest of Death is now engulfed in flames. The examinees had to flee to avoid the fight between the two, which led to chaos, and many people were injured. The second round of the exam cannot continue. As there are still many Shinobis left, the third Hokage waved his hand and decided to hold one last preliminary match, with the winners participating in the final round. Of course, considering that some examinees were affected by the Orochimaru chase, the third Hokage decided to postpone the preliminary matches for a few days, and let the Kanoha Hospital take care of the injured. But all of this has little to do with Anko. After complaining to the third Hokage, Anko hesitated for a moment, but ultimately did not reveal any information about Natsuo. After all, Natsuo has always been secretive. There must be a reason, right? Of course, she is still angry. So, carrying this resentment, Anko returned to the Ichiha clan. Just as she was about to angrily question the relationship between Natsuo and Orochimaru, she saw Natsuo chatting with Yakushi Kabuto. Yakushi Kabuto had a wry smile on his face and said, Orochimaru-sama is willing to pay a greater price, hoping that you can restrain Anko and prevent her from acting like this again. Fight. He can't fight. Run. He can't escape. What do you want Orochimaru-sama to do? However, Natsuo said indifferently. I already talked about this with her, and for now she won't attack him again. Anyway, Anko is not that strong. She can't harm Orochimaru. So let him try his best to run, right? Everything aside, I can cooperate with him in his next plan. But if he dares to touch a single hair of my wife, I will not only interrupt his next actions, but I will also kill him. Anko, upon hearing that she was considered very weak, experienced a mixture of anger and surprise, but also sensed Natsuo's genuine affection towards her. Yakushi Kabuto finally smiled bitterly and left. Natsuo's request was simple. He cannot attack or approach members of the Ichiha clan. This time there won't be another chance like when he tried to sell his information to Danzo or sent spies to his house. Anko watched Yakushi Kabuto leave silently, then spoke quietly, Natsuo, I heard you talking when I arrived. Is this another of the spies of that reptile I hate so much? Anko frowned. That guy didn't smell like a snake to me at all. Natsuo said smiling. Oh, Anko, if you only knew. But about that, Kabuto isn't exactly a spy or at least not an ordinary one. Anko asked intrigued. What do you mean by that? Natsuo continued to explain. Kabuto is how to put it, an ally with quite particular abilities. He is very talented in scientific research. Orochimaru placed him in Kanoha, and then I called him to help me develop medicines. His contribution to the development of Revival No. 1 is quite great. Anko winking at Natsuo said, I see so you forgive him for being a spy because it's useful. But why didn't you tell me about Kabuto before? Anko lazily lay in Natsuo's arms, grabbing his collar and lightly reproaching him for keeping her in the dark. Anko lightly hummed, is there anything else you're hiding from M.E. Tilda? That expression was just like a girlfriend catching her boyfriend secretly drinking. No, there's really nothing else. Natsuo chuckled, but don't worry, I'll be more attentive to sharing information next time. Although Anko had been with the Achiha clan for a long time and knew some of Natsuo's secrets, she had never asked Natsuo about her doubts. Shinobi are always used to having hidden cards, so it is normal that Natsuo doesn't tell her everything. Anko was satisfied with Natsuo's answer. After the whole incident with Orochimaru, Anko had calmed down and somewhat vented some of the resentment she had after being suppressed in the village for so long. Due to Orochimaru's rebellion, Anko said playfully, Mem Mem, I don't know if I should forgive you so easily. But of course, she wouldn't let him off easily. Saying that, Anko grabbed Natsuo's collar and dragged him towards the bedroom. Natsuo. Anko closed the door with a soft click plunging into the dimness of the room. Natsuo looked at her from the bed, his eyes meeting a silence full of promise. She approached slowly, the moonlight dancing on her raven hair with bluish hues. Anko stopped in front of him, her gaze expressing more than words could say. I need to be compensated. She admitted with a soft bite of her lip, the tension between them pulsing in the air. Natsuo stood up, his imposing presence approaching her calmly. His fingers brushed Enko's ponytail, carefully undoing the knot, letting her hair fall freely. I'm here, he whispered, his breath brushing against her cheek. What do you need? Anko tilted her head to the side, her hands finding the hem of the metal mesh blouse, sliding it gracefully over her shoulders. Compensation, she repeated, her eyes shining with suppressed desire. Natsuo captured her lips in a slow, deep kiss, 
her bodies moving closer with a complicity that spoke louder than words. The soft sound of her synchronized breathing filled the room, mixing with the soft touch of her exploring hands. Anko turned away from him, her breath ragged, meeting his gaze. Natsuo he nodded understandingly, passion reflected in her light brown eyes. His fingers caressed the curve of her neck, leaving a trail of tickles on her skin. I know. He responded softly, his voice thick with complicity. I will compensate you. Anko laid back on the bed, her eyes searching the depth of Natsuo's. Without saying a word, her lips met in a soft kiss, full of longing and tenderness. Each caress was a whisper of contained desire, a silent language that only they understood. Time seemed to stop while their hands explored each other's skin, searching for that unique connection that united them beyond the physical. Each contact was a sigh of contained passion, an intimate melody that only they could hear. With a soft whisper, Anko turned, seeking Natsuo's closeness in a new way. She stretched gently, feeling the soft breeze caress her skin, a whisper in the night that intensified the passion they shared. A scream escaped Enko's lips, not of pain, but of ecstasy, an echo of the connection between them. The trust between them was palpable, as if their souls met at that precise moment. In a soft, emotion-filled whisper, Enko let out a suppressed moan, her voice revealing a mix of pleasure and longing, as they both immersed themselves in the intensity of that unique and special moment. After a long time, Anko lies lying in Natsuo's arms, enveloped in a serene calm, as if the soft caresses of contentment have brought her to a state of absolute stillness. Her skin, now bathed in the soft light of the room, glows with a serene glow. Natsuo, I know that I don't have the strength to face Orochimaru now. Besides, you were right, I was reckless when I faced him before. All right. Natsuo reassured her, Orochimaru won't attack you or the rest of the family. Just don't be reckless again. Anko was very satisfied with this answer. Then she thought for a moment and spoke. By the way, Natsuo, since that Yokushi Kabuto is also Orochimaru's subordinate, doesn't that mean Orochimaru knows about Arachiha's secret medicine? It's nothing. Natsuo smiled. Although Yokushi Kabuto will report to Orochimaru, the secret medicine we research is mainly prepared for you. It is an absolute requirement that it does not cause harm. But Orochimaru does not care if it is dangerous. He only pursues effectiveness. Our objectives in research are inherently different. The amount that Natsuo must spend to make the secret medicine is too high. To upgrade a person to the Chunin level, it requires an amount equivalent to Asuma's reward. Orochimaru can't bear to spend so much money. Perhaps it could be used for his more talented subordinates like Kimimuro. But for shinobi like this, the Chunin level improvement is meaningless. Oh, but since you're stronger than Orochimaru, could you teach me how to train? Anko's eyes lit up. I really want to defeat Orochimaru. Then you need to learn more ninjutsu and increase your supply of chakra. Natsuo smiled and said, I mainly rely on my bloodline, but I can teach you ninjutsu. You can't become a shinobi like me. But it's possible to be like the third Hokage, a shinobi who doesn't rely on bloodline but on ninjutsu to make an impact. Natsuo's main combat power comes from the Sharingan, which Anko finds difficult to replicate. For ninjas without a bloodline, the third Hokage, a shinobi who relies on ninjutsu, is the real target to catch up with. Don't underestimate the aging third Hokage. Even in his prime, he was the top combat power among the cage level, the number one person below the gods of the shinobi world. In the Naruto series, even though he was old, in poor physical condition, and had scarce chakra, he was able to forcibly take Orochimaru's arms, and seal the two Hokages, who had been summoned with the impure world reincarnation technique. Despite the reasons for the poor condition of the first generation and second generation, his combat power is really not weak. Danzo, Ichiha Kigami, Yudatenka Haru, Mitakado Hamura and Akamichi Tarifu all submitted to him, not just because of the second Hokage's orders. Danzo, Ichiha Kigami and Akamichi Tarifu are cage-level powerhouses. Yudatenka Haru and Mitakado Hamura may be useless now, not even as good as a Jonin, but they were almost cage-level experts back then. I understand. I will study hard. Anko said seriously. So, Anko became the third person to be guided by Natsuo after Sasuke and Niji. Anko is excited after her confrontation with Orochimaru and starts bragging during breaks in training. Guys, you don't know what happened. I faced Orochimaru and almost defeated him. Not even the mighty Sanin could withstand my fire release. He had to flee. With a single swing of my sword and my body flicker technique, I made him lose his way. That snake thought he could compare to me. Simply delusional. Sasuke and Naruto's eyes lit up, applauding continuously. Although they didn't know Orochimaru before, it doesn't matter, Anko can describe him to them. 
For students who haven't graduated from the Ninja Academy, Anko's real-life examples are much more interesting than listening to stories. Really? That's great, Anko-ni. Naruto couldn't contain his excitement. What happened next? What else happened next? Anko waved her hand. Oh yeah, the third Hokage was late to back me up. If he had been on time, we would have caught Orochimaru easily. And to top it all off, the third Hokage assigned me a team of incompetence. Anyway, it was all just boasting. No need to feel embarrassed. Niji was also listening from behind, smiling and applauding. Although with his Byakugan, he had long seen Enko chasing Orochimaru from a distance until Orochimaru was about to make a move, then Natsuo appeared. If he didn't know that Enko was definitely fine, how could he continue to participate in the exam calmly? After a round of boasting, Enko was satisfied and had enough fun. She patted Niji's shoulder and said, Niji, this time it was sister who affected your exam, but with your strength passing the exam shouldn't be difficult. Go on, beat up all the other trash for your sister. Yes, Enko Ni. Niji smiled gently. I will do my best. Enko left contentedly. Naruto also encouraged Niji a few times. And then there was Sasuke pondered for a moment and said, Niji, are you nervous about participating in the Chunin exam? It's alright. Niji smiled. Although I'm not weak, I'm still alone. I can't say for sure that I can win the championship in the Chunin exam. I still get nervous occasionally. For example, in the Forest of Death exam this time, there were also some strong teams among the Chunin. If the opponents set up an ambush or teamed up with others to target him, he couldn't guarantee a 100% victory. The winning rate it's about 95%. It still made people worry about unexpected situations. Sasuke, on the other hand, didn't think too much. He felt that although Niji had a strong psychological resistance, he would inevitably feel some nervousness. So, out of concern for his comrade, Sasuke pulled Niji along. Come on, Niji, I'll take you to relax. Sasuke is completely sincere. Although his goal of going to the club was always to improve his Sharingan, in the end he is still a regular at the club. So from time to time, he hears the customers who are about to enter talking to their colleagues. Let's go. I'll treat you to some relaxation, guaranteeing that you'll be full of energy tomorrow. Honestly speaking, Sasuke hasn't fully decided to let Niji help him evolve his Sharingan. So, his current request is the purest consideration for Niji. Niji participated in the Chunin exams. Niji is a bit nervous. Niji needs to relax. So, he invited Niji to relax. This is what true brothers should do. Sasuke said seriously, compared to that idiot Naruto, someone like me, a real man is worthy of friendship. I'm really great. So, Sasuke took Niji and ran to the club. At first, Niji didn't quite understand what was going on. After all, he didn't think that Sasuke's relaxation meant coming here. He thought Sasuke was planning to take him on an outing, fishing to ease his mood. As a result, even Niji, who remains calm in any situation, was left speechless. Sasuke, you want to relax here with me? Niji opened his mouth, looking at Sasuke as if he were a monster. Who at this age would come to a place like this? Not to mention Sasuke, even Niji, who is one year older than Sasuke, shouldn't come to a place like this, right? Everyone says that this place has the best relaxation effect, Niji. Don't worry, tonight's expenses will be covered by me. Sasuke said seriously, let's go, don't loiter at the entrance. Saying that, he pulled Niji and walked away. Of course, they both transformed as they did before. After all, the club doesn't cater to people their age, and it's not easy for the girls to handle them. Niji was dragged in by Sasuke, feeling confused, and looked at Sasuke talking to the manager with a skilled tone. You're a regular here, Niji exclaimed. How old are you? You're already a regular. Yeah, Sasuke said calmly. Does Natsuo know that you come to a place like this? I was brought here by Natsuo the first time it gave me a good experience. Well, I came here specifically to enhance my mental strength, please don't misunderstand. But Niji obviously misunderstood. He looked completely bewildered, with his mouth wide open and his eyes staring straight ahead. Did Natsuo-sama bring Sasuke here? But he's just a child. However, Niji had no doubts about whether Natsuo would do this. After all, his own master had a total of more than 50 beautiful wives. For someone like that, bringing his younger brother to a club is normal, isn't it? The two of them entered a private room, and the charming escorts all gathered around. Take good care of my brother, and you'll be generously rewarded. Sasuke waved his hand grandly. Yes, sir. The charming escorts responded sweetly. And so, Niji, with a bewildered expression, found himself surrounded by women. As the young master of the Haiga clan, 
Although he belonged to the branch and not the main family, Niji, like Sasuke, was never short of attention. With his handsome face, exceptional strength, and the bloodline of the Hayuga clan, especially in contrast to Sasuke's aloofness, Niji was gentle and refined, making it easy for female classmates to approach him. However, even though he was like this, he was still a pure novice, and couldn't resist so many charming women. He was instantly overwhelmed. Sasuke, who was watching from the side, nodded silently. Niji had already started working, and it was clear that he would gradually become as skilled as Naruto, making it impossible for him to provide enough embarrassment for himself. For the sake of my brother, I even gave up the opportunity to stimulate my own advancement in the Sharingan. I am indeed a selfless man. Niji will definitely be moved by our friendship. Because of Sasuke's friendly help, Niji, who had just tasted the forbidden fruit, seemed a bit uncertain for the next few days. Regardless of whether one is male or female, the first time is always the most memorable, and it may even affect one's future view on choosing a partner. Although Niji is calm, he is not calm to this extent, so it is natural for him to be mentally absent-minded. As a result, a few days later in the preliminary round, Niji almost got overturned by an examinee, whose strength was far inferior to his own. Fortunately, there was a fundamental difference in strength between the two, and when Niji realized it, the opponent quickly lost. Of course, Natsuo didn't know about Niji and Sasuke's situation. Natsuo only thought that Niji attached too much importance to this Chunin exam, thinking that this was an important occasion for him to demonstrate his strength and gain prestige, which made him a little too nervous. He couldn't help but give a few reminders, causing Niji to look at him silently. Master, it's because of your younger brother that I was influenced. And the root of all this is in you. Of course, Natsuo couldn't guess his disciples' thoughts. And he didn't bother to guess. He was immersed in the joy of the newborn baby. Yuzumaki Yoko has given birth. Offspring plus one. The comprehensive potential evaluation is 191. You gain chakra plus 17. Sage mode. 191's evaluation is already close to 200. Attaining sage mode as a reward is understandable because the current evaluation is the highest at which you can obtain skills that belong to the shinobi world. In the Naruto series, although the protagonist learns sage mode with a little effort, it is actually the only technique that can confront the power of the six baths. Its essence is very high, and is not inferior to the secret techniques of the six baths. Natsuo tried it immediately, and the unique characteristic marks appeared on his face. He also noticed that there was no problem like partially transforming into a snake or a toad. This technique was perfectly adapted for humans. Since this technique is not the inheritance of Mount Mayaboku or Ryuchi Cave, it can be called human sage mode. Natsuo's eyes lit up. Natural energy does not have attributes. It only petrifies people, and does not deliberately turn them into toads or snakes. Whether it is Mount Mayaboku, Ryuchi Cave, or even the Shikotsu Forest that Natsuo has never seen before, the way they use natural energy has obviously evolved based on his identity as a toad or snake. Adapting to the body of a toad does not mean adapting to the body of a human. Although Natsuo has not yet fought against Shinobis who have truly practiced the sage mode of these sacred places, he vaguely feels that his sage mode may be superior to these Shinobis. Because what he is using is the human sage mode. Then several wives gave birth to children one after another. Offspring plus one, the comprehensive potential evaluation is 133, you obtain chakra plus 11, wood release, wood dragon technique. Offspring plus one, the comprehensive potential evaluation is 111, you gain chakra plus 13, scorch release, extremely steaming murder, the increase in the potential of Natsuo's newborn children is quite large, mainly because their life essence has undergone a qualitative leap due to the six parts sage body. Natsuo then continued to diligently strive to revive the Ichiha clan. On the other hand, according to calculations, the three snake princesses should have given birth. However, when Natsuo went to Ryuji Cave, he found that there was no movement. It's probably because their reproductive cycle is different from humans. Natsuo thought to himself, the original body is a snake transformed into a sage, so there will naturally be some changes the tune in exams continue. Since the finalists have already been determined, invitations are naturally sent to various factions. From the invitation to the actual start of the fights, there is a whole month of free time. This gives the leaders of various factions enough time to reach Konoha. The daimyos and high-ranking nobles of the Land of Fire naturally eagerly come, and there are also many high-ranking nobles from the Land of Wind. People from all over, including wealthy merchants and officials, gather here. Not only ordinary people, but also Shinobis will come in droves. The Kazakirj is also preparing to attend, stating that he will bring some high-ranking officials, and hopes to reach some agreements during the exam. Among the cages of the participating villages, only Turumi Mei does not plan to participate. 
Although there are two Kurigika Shinobi who have advanced this time, that is only one less than Sunagika who is fully committed to the exam. But the actual strength of these Kurigika Shinobi is quite average, and their reaching the finals is probably the result of the third Hokage's intervention. In the current finals, the Kurigika Shinobi who go on stage will only become stepping stones for the Kanoha Shinobi. She doesn't want to see this kind of scene this news has put many people at ease. Especially Rasa himself. It seems that we no longer need to worry about reinforcements from Kurigika. With the power of Sunagika and Atogika, there is hope for a successful surprise attack on Kanoha. Rasa let out a sigh of relief and the dark circles under his eyes, caused by years of pressure, seem to ease slightly. I just don't know if my alliance with Orochimaru is right or wrong. Rasa leaned back in his seat, his face filled with loneliness. This is a high stakes gamble. Given the current state of the shinobi world, after this gamble, a great shinobi war will immediately break out. But he has no choice. Compared to other countries, Sunagika has the poorest accumulation and the weakest strength. Even the daimyo does not support Sunagika much, and even openly entrusts missions to Kanoha. As the Kazakij, he actually needs to mine and pan for gold day and night to support the village's military expenses. If he wins this gamble, it will be fine. The daimyo will witness Sunagika's strength, and a surprise attack on Kanoha will also help Sunagika recover. If he loses the gamble Rasa let out a long breath and began to pack his belongings, preparing to depart. As the Kazakij, he naturally had to bring more followers with him. Even the high-ranking members of Sunagika have brought many followers, in order to bring enough combat power, and increase the chances of success for the plan to make Kanoha collapse. Although Miga, they are all working hard, of course, to avoid Kanoha's surveillance. The high-ranking members of the village have already departed, and now only the Kazakij himself remains. Rasa put on the Kazakij hat, brought some members of the Shadow Guard, and left Sunagika. With the speed of a cage level, they naturally advanced quickly. However, when they were about to reach the border of Kanoha, it seems like I lost the bet. Rasa sighed inwardly, then his expression became serious, and the sand surged beneath his feet. Orochimaru. Haven't we been cooperating well? Why did you attack me? Two figures slowly emerged, Orochimaru in front, and Kimimaru silently standing behind the giant snake. Orochimaru let out a hoarse laugh. Of course, Orochimaru didn't really intend to destroy Kanoha. Couldn't you see that? Rasa was taken aback, and so was Orochimaru. Because Orochimaru didn't say that, the figure of Natsuo slowly appeared, a smile on his lips. Orochimaru only intended to give his teacher an honorable death. Why would you think he would want to destroy Kanoha through your hands? Wouldn't it be better to directly provide you with the information about Kanoha that he knows in order to achieve this goal? You couldn't see that. No wonder your manipulation of the tail beast is so crude. Did you become a fool from mining? Rasa gritted his teeth, a hint of shock and anger flashed in his eyes. Another formidable opponent. However, what he didn't expect was that Orochimaru was even more shocked than him, exclaiming in surprise. Natsuo, what are you doing here? He is an expert. Rasa's face was solemn, his gaze intense. Being so close without even noticing. What else could this person be if not an expert? Who is this guy? How come I have no information about him at all? However, I have a feeling that his face looks somewhat familiar. Natsuo, what are you doing here? Orochimaru exclaimed, his face showing surprise. I remember this time I didn't even inform Kabuto. Natsuo, how did you know I was here? Previously, Natsuo had been too accurate in capturing him. First, there was the deal with Danzo. Then the battle with Enko. He appeared by his side every time, making Orochimaru even suspect Kabuto, who was familiar with his actions. Although he didn't believe that this subordinate would betray him, just in case, he didn't inform Kabuto and only brought Kamimaru, who would never betray him. But in the end, Natsuo still caught him red-handed. How did he know that I was going to attack the fourth Kazakij? Natsuo said while laughing, Long time no see, Orochimaru. Our paths are truly destined to meet how did Natsuo know? Of course, it's the plot of the Naruto series. Natsuo deliberately came over and specifically seized this opportunity. Wait Natsuo. Suddenly, Rasa reacted and looked at Natsuo's face in shock. Are you that Achiha Natsuo? How could you be so strong? He looked shocked, his mouth slightly open, filled with disbelief. He was really familiar with this Natsuo. Due to the Achiha's frequent actions showing off their wealth, it directly attracted poor Sunagika's attention to Natsuo himself. The fourth Kazakij, Rasa, even sent out Kinochi spies one after another, intending to combine internal and external forces to reap a large fortune from the Achiha clan. But the Kinochi sent out were all wasted. Rasa also considered sending Kinochi over in a normal mission manner. After all, the initial standard set by Natsuo for the tuning Kinochi was a minimum of 10 million Ryu, 
and it increased several times later on. But thinking about it, those Kinochi would not allow him to earn the difference in the price of the mission, they might even choose to accept the money directly and stay in the Ichiha clan. In the end, Rasa completely gave up. For Natsuo, who had once been the center of his attention, Rasa had also seen his photo. After shedding tears of envy, Rasa could only throw away the photo and continue searching for Sunagaka's promotion. However, he was clearly just a guy who got carried away with the pleasure of women. Why was he so strong? Even the long famous Orochimaru looked wary. Natsuo, what is your purpose for coming here? Orochimaru took a deep breath, his gaze serious. Don't tell me you want to help me. Of course not. I really believe in Orochimaru-sama's strength. Natsuo smiled lightly. I just want to keep him alive. As he spoke, he pointed at Rasa and said, Anyway, he's not your main target. I will imprison him and release him after the collapse of Kanoha. It won't affect your plans. Why? Orochimaru couldn't help but ask. I remember you don't seem to have any connection with Sunagaka, right? Of course. I have no connection, but his daughter is very beautiful. Natsuo said confidently. I saw her when I was shopping some time ago, and I was immediately attracted to her. I feel like maybe I can develop a good relationship with her then. At least he will be my father-in-law. That being the case, do you think I can let him die easily? That's right, Natsuo is the one with this intention. Rasa's life does not matter, but Tamari is a relevant character in the Naruto series. Compared to some of Natsuo's current wives, Tamari is relatively normal. But that's because she's still young. Throughout the Naruto series, Tamari proved to be a highly skilled and powerful Kunochi. She also demonstrated tactical and leadership skills. Additionally, being part of the Kazakiage clan and Gara's sister, she has a special bloodline. During the Boruto era, Tamari proved to be a loving, attentive and very beautiful mother, with a somewhat distant feel, instantly becoming an excellent choice as a wife. With all this, shouldn't I try something with such a beautiful girl? That's why Natsuo came. Orochimaru. Kimimuro. How should I put it? Orochimaru didn't know what to say. Although he has long known that Natsuo has a personality no less scandalous than that of a certain toad sage. But even Jiraiya, that big-hearted and straightforward person, wouldn't argue with a cage-level expert of the same rank just because of a woman who has nothing to do with him, right? But Natsuo actually did it. I don't know if he's fearless or just overly lustful. Orochimaru hasn't spoken yet. On the other hand, Rasa instantly became furious. What are you joking about? He gritted his teeth, his eyes filled with anger. What do you think I am? Natsuo, my father-in-law. I am the fourth Kazakage. Rasa angrily shouted, his anger boiling over. I am the esteemed Kazakage, and in your eyes, am I just a bargaining chip to be killed or saved? I am a cage-level powerhouse. The next second, a surging wave of sand gold rushed out madly. Covering the sky and earth, it came crashing towards the three of them. Swish, swish, swish. The three of them jumped at the same time, avoiding the onslaught of the sand gold waves. Arachimaru Sama, Kimimuro reached out his hand, his palm bones protruding, with a hint of sharpness. Natsuo Khan, what do you say now? Arachimaru calmly said. Natsuo chuckled. If it's my father-in-law, then of course I have to save him. If it's not, then it seems like it has nothing to do with me. I understand. Arachimaru nodded calmly. Kimimuro, take action. Yes, Arachimaru-sama. The curse marks emerged on Kimimuro's body. Facing a cage-level expert, he couldn't be careless, and he didn't dare to be careless. What do you understand? Rasa was furious. What do you think I am, the fourth Kazakage? I am a cage, a man standing at the pinnacle of the shinobi world, holding the power of one of the five great shinobi nations, Sunagaka. Why is it that when you speak, it feels like you're treating me like disposable trash? Swish. Kimimuro pressed his hand against the ground and Chakra surged wildly. Dance of the Seedling Fern. E-R-R-R-K. 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 Countless bone spurs rose from the ground, almost instantly covering the entire ground. The fourth Kazakuja's shadow guard was almost instantly swallowed by the forest of bones. Only Rasa, relying on the sand shield, held off this attack. This kid, is he also a cage-level expert? Rasa was surprised. But so, what? There are differences between cage-level powerhouses. A mere brat dared to compare himself to a seasoned cage-level. However, the next second, countless snakes surged towards him. Orochimaru was lying on the ground where a countless number of summoned snakes came out of his mouth. Formation of 10,000 snakes. Don't underestimate me. Rasa roared. He forcibly gathered chakra, and a large wave of sand surged, swallowing the sea of snakes. So, what if it's two against one? I am an elite. The next second, Kimimuro transformed into his second state of the cursed seal, 
Like an enraged dragon, he broke through the sea of sand and charged towards Rasa. Holding a sharp bone spear, he fiercely stabbed, unstoppable. Rasa was directly pierced through. Damn, what's going on with this kid? Rasa's mouth twitched. Is he really this strong? Hum, Kamimuro raised an eyebrow. But he saw Rasa, who had been pierced turn into sand particles. Sand clone, Rasa emerged from the sea of sand. This is the biggest difference between us, the difference in experience. But before he could finish speaking, Orochimaru swung his sword of Kusanagi towards him. Then Kimimuro, without hesitation, held his bone spear and joined the battle. After three rounds, Rasa's face was filled with anger. Not angry but imposing, because he shouted, Son-in-law, save me. The battle ended. Natsuo sat on the ground, smiling and said, Orochimaru-sama, then it is resolved. My father-in-law the fourth Kazuki Ij, will be freed from my control. After he finishes the plan to destroy Konoha, don't worry, killing the third Hokage is something we all agree on. I don't want any surprises either. Natsuo had a smile on his face. It seems that one of the Kunoichi with the strongest wind release in the Shinobi world is about to be captured. As one of the top three future Sanagaka experts in the Naruto series, Tamari's future combat power is no weaker than that of a high-level cage-level expert. During the fourth Great Shinobi War, his powerful wind release is second only to the protagonist Naruto. Natsuo decided not to waste her talent and let her help with the rebirth of the Ichiha clan. But compared to Tamari's talent, Kamimuro's talent is truly strong. Natsuo glanced at Kamimuro. This boy is only 14 years old now, and in the Naruto series he should die next year when he would only be 15 years old. And at this age, he can already participate in battles between cage-level experts, assisting Orochimaru in killing the fourth Kazuki Ij almost unharmed. He can even take a poison antidote to save himself, dragging his sick body and almost killing the Jinchuriki Gara. This talent is not much worse than Atachi's. Even the two main characters of the series are not stronger than him at his age. Rasa gasped for breath, a hint of coldness appearing in his eyes. He glanced fearfully at Orochimaru and Kamimaru. Orochimaru, needless to say, is an old cage-level expert, and his combat power is still within expectations. But that boy named Kamimaru, who is about the same age as his own daughter, why is his strength so terrifying? If the two of them join forces, they might really be able to kill him. They might not even get hurt, no. This young man's talent is not the most terrifying thing. What's truly terrifying is Rasa couldn't help but look at Natsuo. This man is truly terrifying. When he shouted his last words just now, his life was hanging by a thread. However, at this critical moment, Natsuo was able to intervene instantly lightly grabbing Orochimaru and Kamimaru's arms, while his pair of Sharingan eyes could suppress their ability to fight back. In other words, if he wanted to attack me, I'm afraid he could determine the outcome in an instant. According to the information, this guy is a big pervert. Apart from wanting to have children all day, he doesn't want to do anything else. Does he have so much time to take care of having children and training? If it weren't for Natsuo saving me just now, claiming that he is my future son-in-law, it would be obvious that he is a pervert who is very interested in women, and there would be no deviation from the information. Rasa might even suspect that Natsuo found a group of women who were already pregnant and falsely claimed their children as his own, pretending to work hard on procreation while secretly practicing. But the fact is right in front of me, even if Rasa doesn't want to believe it. He has to admit Natsuo's talent. So, you're called Natsuo, right, Ichiha Natsuo. He reached out without hesitation and said, Would you like to come to us, son Agaka? As long as you're willing to come, I'll immediately arrange for all the eligible Kunochi in the village to meet you. Whether it's my daughter or any other Kunochi, whoever you like, I'll arrange for you. Want women? We have plenty in son Agaka. Come to us, son Agaka. There should be a place for you here. Rasa's face was serious as he extended an olive branch. Our son Agaka needs talents like you. Although Rasa's idea was sudden, it was sincere. However, already possessing such strength, son Agaka, on the other hand is facing a serious shortage of high-level combat power. In all of son Agaka, apart from him and the retired Chiyo and Ibizo, there are no other cage-level shinobi. It can be said that son Agaka is quite miserable. In the Naruto series, after Rasa's death, the position of Kazuki Uchi remained vacant until Gaara reformed and became the fifth Kazuki Uchi. So why did Gaara, who caused trouble from a young age and damaged Sanagaka many times, causing the loss of many lives, become Kazuki Uchi before the protagonist Naruto, simply because he reformed? No, it was because Sanagaka could not find a successor for the position of the fifth Kazuki Uchi. Cage itself is the title of the leader of the five major shinobi villages. Cage level represents the strength of the five leaders. Because the five major shinobi villages have a complete and large-scale talent training system, with geniuses constantly emerging, 
they can always ensure that at least their cage possesses sufficient strength. However, after Rasa's death, Sun Agaka completely lacked successes. It was not easy for Gara, whom the entire town resents to rise to the position. Therefore, Rasa is truly the only prominent shinobi in Sun Agaka during this time period, even though his strength is not considered strong among cage-level shinobi. In the ever-changing shinobi world, can he guarantee that he won't die? Orochimaru wanted to kill him right now during this incident. That's why Rasa gave Natsuo that invitation right now. Compared to such top-level strong individuals like Natsuo, what can a few women mean? Natsuo, come to us son Agaka. Rasa extended an invitation again. You must feel uncomfortable living in Kanoha, unnoticed. I promise you that you will enjoy all the glory in son Agaka, plus you will be able to choose any Kunochi in the village. After me. You will be the fifth Kazakij of Sun Agaka. Sun Agaka needs talents like you. It must be said that Rasa's offer is quite tempting. However, Natsuo smiled lightly and shook his head. Sun Agaka, how many Kinochi can you have in Sun Agaka? There are some Sun Agaka Kinochi in the Ichiha clan. So, I know a little about the situation in Sun Agaka. Even if you, as the Kazakij, forcefully command it, how many highly skilled Kinochi can Sun Agaka produce? Kinochi are already a minority and highly skilled Kinochi are even rarer. Furthermore, the environment in Sunagaka is quite harsh, with the village's funds extremely scarce, and the number of shinobi is the lowest among the five great shinobi nations. And yet, the proportion of Sunagaka spies in the Achiha clan is the largest among all the great shinobi nations. What does this mean? With this situation, do you still need to give orders for the Sunagaka Kunochi to go to the Achiha clan? Of course, Sunagaka definitely still has some Kunochi with great talent and strength, who, due to their pride and other reasons, have not come to the Achiha clan. But the problem is, these Kinochi definitely possess Jonan level combat power, and belong to the upper echelons. Would such people be willing to sacrifice themselves for the words of a Kazakich? Rasa also thought of this problem. His face turned red, but he still said, So what? If the quality is not enough, we'll make up for it with quantity. If Jonin is not possible, then Chunin. If Chunin is not possible, then Jenin. There are plenty of ordinary women in the land of wind even if you want a noble woman. I can knock her unconscious. What's the use of that? Natsuo sneered. Do you really think I don't know the principle of quantity makes up for lack of quality? My Echiha clan is wealthy and powerful. Even if I have to use money. I can find thousands of women willing to bear my children. The problem is, I lack the ability to choose. Nowadays, the Achiha clan has an abundant number of wives. Natsuo even hesitates and evaluates when it comes to selecting a Jonin level Kinochi. Why would he choose an ordinary person? Alright, father-in-law, please stop talking. Natsuo sneered. Contributing one daughter is enough. It's a pity your wife is dead, otherwise Rasa. The Chunin exams have finally begun. Today, Natsuo specifically gathered all his wives at home and spent a lot of money to invite Kakuzu back from Akatsuki. Don't worry. Kakuzu patted his chest and guaranteed, for the sake of money, I promise that not a single person in your Achiha residence will die today. You can go and do what you want with peace of mind. I will handle all the problems for you. Based on the amount of money Natsuo provided, Kakuzu felt that even if the leader personally came to kill, he would be willing to handle it, at least delay it until tomorrow, so I can earn this money. Are you kidding? As long as you pay enough money, even if a god arrives, Kakuzu will kill him for the reward. Then I'll leave it to you. Natsuo smiled lightly. Leave it to me. Kakuzu patted his chest and then leaned in closer. Boss, during this time, I actually found another powerful expert. Although she hasn't reached cage level yet, she has a strong bloodline limit. I accidentally let her slip away before, but I'll see if I can bring her to you in a while. Kakuzu said. Natsuo's eyes brightened at his words. As the most proactive mercenary, this old man always managed to surprise Natsuo. The price is negotiable. Natsuo responded. The two exchanged a glance, understanding each other. With reliable Kakuzu, Natsuo didn't have to worry about the safety of his wives. Actually, there was no need to worry in the first place. His wives were definitely stronger than most of the shinobi clans, especially Ringo and Mayuri. Being cage level, she could easily wipe out a whole clan by herself. However, if it was just a matter of spending money, he preferred that his wives and children not run the risk of being involved in a fight. Amayori was also pregnant, and Natsuo didn't want to risk harming the baby. That's why he brought in Kakuzu, not only his wives and children, but even Sasuke and Naruto, at Natsuo's request, took a day off from their studies under the pretext of watching Niji's Chunin exam, making their fellow students like Kiba, Choji, Shikamaru, and others extremely envious. The safety of the Achiha residence and its properties was entrusted to ordinary mercenaries from Akatsuki. 
Kukuzu was in charge of the Achiha mansion while others were responsible for the regular properties. It can be said that Natsuo prepared himself thoroughly. Natsuo led Sasuke and Naruto straight to the competition venue. The Chunin exam began, and after the third Hokage's usual nonsense, the match began. To be honest, although this generation of Shinobis is not as outstanding as Naruto's generation, they are still qualified elites, much stronger than ordinary Chunin. After all, every Shinobi village is supposed to show their strength before the nobles, merchants, and high officials present, therefore, ordinary Shinobi cannot reach the finals. Various flashy ninjutsu were thrown, although Sasuke, after training with Natsuo, was no longer inferior to ordinary Chunin. He was still very excited watching. Naruto was even more so, wishing he could personally join the fight. Listening to the cheers of the surrounding audience, he excitedly said, So cool, so great, I also want everyone to cheer for me. Then they will definitely acknowledge me, right? Sasuke also said, Natsuo, if there's a Chunin exam, is there a Jonin exam? Fighting as a Jonin should be more exciting, right? There is no Jonin exam. Natsuo smiled and said, The reason there is a Chunin exam is because the level of tuning cannot have too much influence. If there were a Jonin exam, I estimate that after the competition, there would be less than half of the audience left alive. Although in Natsuo's previous life, fans of the Naruto series jokingly commented that when the Jonin fought, pots and pans would fly, but when the Jonin clashed, the heavens and the earth would shatter. In reality, Jonin battles are already at a level where ordinary people would die just by being close to the battle. When they fight, they won't hold back, releasing all kinds of powerful ninjutsu, and the audience would be gone. In fact, even during the Chunin exam, there are always elite guards patrolling the spectator stands. Hosting a Chunin exam is not cheap, even the wealthy and powerful Kanoha can't afford it. Otherwise, they wouldn't have to wait for a month after selecting the finalists, until high-ranking officials and nobles from various countries gather to officially conduct the final round of the exam. Isn't it just to earn more ticket money? After several rounds of battles, Niji entered the arena. He was wearing a standard Hayiga clan loose kimono, with a gentle smile on his face, walking at a steady pace, and wearing the Kanoha forehead protector. As soon as he entered the arena, he attracted the attention of a large number of spectators. Is this the genius of the Hyoga clan? I heard that in this Chunin exam, he is the only one in his own team participating in the exam. One person in a team, no teammates. Even teammates are not needed. Are people from the Hyoga clan that confident? Shouldn't it be three people in a team? How did the Hokage agree to let him participate on his own? Who knows, maybe it's a privilege of the Hyoga clan. Most of the spectators, especially the Shinobis, were first surprised and then somewhat indignant, feeling that this kid was being treated too favorably Shinobis act according to the rules, and those who break the rules have always been despised. It is the rule for three people to participate in the Chunin exam as a team, so why did you break it? As a result, the Shinobi began to whisper, saying things like, It's because he's from the Hyiga clan. The Hokage has to give him certain privileges. I heard that this boy is the nephew of the leader of the Hyiga clan. No wonder they treat him so well. Having connections is always good words like these filled the crowd. Naruto frowned and Sasuke looked angry. On the other hand, Natsuo shook his head with a smile. In the shinobi world, regardless of whether breaking the rules is good or not, first of all, you must have the ability to be able to break the rules. Niji was able to do this not only because of the influence of the Hyuga clan, but also because he directly approached the Hokage that day, demonstrating strength comparable to a Jonin. Before he could even speak, the third Hokage invited him to participate. Even if Niji firmly refuses his teammates, the third Hokage is willing to make an exception for him, because he also knows that someone with absolute dominance in combat can bring great honor to Kanoha in the Chunin exams. Unfortunately, most people in this world don't look for reasons within themselves. When others succeed, they like to find various excuses to cover up their own incompetence, such as having a better family background, better timing, or receiving money. Most have a mentality of, I'm not recognized for my talent anyway, all because these bastards stole my opportunities. In reality, most people who hold on to this kind of thinking are just useless. Even if they are given opportunities, it's all in vain. True strong individuals never complain about the unfairness of the world. Instead, they take the initiative to change the world. That's why these Shinobis will always be trash, at most slowly accumulating achievements to become Chunin. But they will never reach a prominent position in their lifetime. When high-level Jonin experts see Niji entering the arena, their expressions instantly become serious. Because they know that if Niji can make the third Hokage relent, he must have exceptional abilities. And indeed, that is the case. After the examiner's signal to begin, Niji charges straight towards his opponent. After evading the opponent's fire release with two quick changes in direction, 
He closes in and defeats the enemy with a single strike of gentle fist. So fast, even the Jonin among the audience were astonished. To be able to participate in the finals of the Chunin exams, means that each one is among the best of the Chunin. But Niji defeated him so easily. Even Orochimaru disguised as the Kazakiage couldn't help but be impressed. Orochimaru said to himself, A 12-year-old Jonin, Natsuo, has truly trained an extraordinary genius. It's a pity that he is from the Hayiga branch. If he were from the main family, even if he offends Natsuo, he might try to snatch it away from him. The third Hokage, of course, is unaware of Orochimaru's thoughts. But upon noticing his surprise, he showed a proud smile and said, I heard that the Kazakiage's son is also participating in the competition. He's younger than Niji. I'm sure the Kazakiage has high hopes for him. In the midst of the conversation, the next round of the competition has already begun. Gara stood in the arena and started forming hand seals. Orochimaru smiled slightly. Yes, I do have high hopes for Gara. Just like now. Hum third Hokage frowned. The next second a huge amount of chakra surged from the Chunin exam arena. At the same time, Orochimaru grabbed third Hokage, and his subordinates simultaneously threw smoke bombs. The plan to destroy Kanoha begins. Roar. Shukaku let out a thunderous roar. The chilling chakra unique to the tailed beasts soared into the sky, and the wild waves of energy swept through the entire venue. Some fifth or high officials and nobles were knocked unconscious by the force of that impulse. This is a tailed beast. Why is the tailed beast of Sunagaka here? Damn it, are the Sunagaka Shinobis planning to attack Kanoha? Countless Kanoha Shinobi were shocked. At the same time Orochimaru grabbed the third Hokage and ascended to the rooftop, followed closely by his subordinates, the Sound Four, Seiken and Yukin, Teiya, Kitamaru, and Jirobo, who all removed their disguises and formed hand seals. Four invisible barrier walls enveloped the entire area where the two were about to fight. The sudden eruption of the battle between the Hokage and the Kazakage caught everyone present off guard. Some nobles instinctively shouted and tried to escape, causing the exits to become congested. Other guests from different shinobi villages also gathered together without hesitation. Realizing that this attack was orchestrated by Sunagaka and Togaka, they immediately retreated to protect the nobles of their own countries, while avoiding a clash between the shinobi of Sunagaka, Togaka, and Kinoha. They wouldn't let Kanoha use them as cannon fodder. However, Yukushi Kabuto quickly launched a Jinjutsu, hypnotizing all the spectators. Hey, what's going on? Because Kabuto deliberately avoided Naruto, so he was not affected by the Jinjutsu. But his mental state at this time was obviously not so calm, and he was somewhat nervous. The Shinobis of Sunagaka and Atogaka are preparing to attack Kanoha. Sasuke widened his eyes, his Sharingan appearing. Compared to Naruto, he was much calmer. His pair of three Tomo Sharingan accurately captured the enemy's figure. What should we do, Natsuo? He calmly asked, but there was a hint of excitement in his eyes. These were enemies. Although he had sparred with Niji, Naruto, and others, he had never fought against enemy Shinobis before. Although he was asking, his eyes were eager for battle. Then let's play around with the Shinobis of Sunagaka and Atogaka at the edge of the battlefield. Natsuo chuckled lightly, seemingly unconcerned. This level of battlefield was only suitable for these two little ones to treat as practice. Should we retreat first? Sasuke calmly said. We can't can't defeat that monster across from us, can we? He was referring to Gara. Although Sasuke has made significant progress in strength, he now understands the opponent's strength and won't recklessly charge forward. It's fine. Natsuo smiled and said, someone will take care of it soon. The next moment both of them saw Niji, who was sitting in the participants' seats running forward. He arrived in front of Shukaku along with Kakashi and Mike Guy. The latter, being Jonin elites, naturally carried the heaviest responsibility. The moment Shukaku broke out, they did not hesitate to move forward and tangle with this colossal creature. Are you a Genin participating in this competition? Kakashi noticed Niji's actions and frowned. Are Genin these days all so reckless? Kid, this big guy is not an opponent that a Genin can handle. You retreat quickly. Leave this to us. Suddenly Shukaku roared in anger, and his arm rushed downwards. Kakashi... Mike Guy and the others were about to take action. Suddenly, they saw Niji rushing forward, directly meeting Shukaku's arm at the forefront. He twisted his body and used the eight trigrams palms revolving heaven. Bang! Shukaku's arm was forcefully pushed away. As a Kanoha Shinobi, I can also help protect the village. Niji stopped his figure, a smile on his lips. At this moment, there are countless high-level Kanoha Shinobi here. Niji, who wants to gain reputation. Would he find any other occasion more suitable than this? Niji's actions seemed dangerous, but in fact, there was no risk at all. Although Shukaku is a tailed beast and is difficult to control when it goes berserk, at this time, it is still under Gara's control, and won't go on a rampage. There are high-ranking officials and nobles everywhere, and Gara is not crazy enough to want to eliminate them all. 
which would cause everyone to hate him and bring disaster to Sunagaka. Gara will cooperate with the Shinobi of Kanoha, and voluntarily leave this place to truly unleash his fury outside the examination grounds. Not only Gara, but also the Shinobi of Sunagaka and Atogaka, after they go berserk, will gradually move the battlefield outside the examination venue, while cooperating with the Kanoha Shinobi. To think there is a Jonin level Kakashi was stunned. He didn't expect this examinee, Niji, to be so strong. Then he decisively said, All right, you take care of yourself. The Jonin level experts can now no longer make the excuse of holding back the tailed beast, and have to try to rescue the third Hokage. They can't say they have to stay to protect the younger generation. However, despite everything, Kakashi also decided to pay more attention to this genius, and if possible, prevent him from dying prematurely here. Not only Kakashi, but even Hayuga Hiyashi, stopped from luring the enemy out of the examination room, when he saw Niji's actions. He decided to annihilate the enemy here and take care of his nephew at the same time. Meanwhile, Natsuo was pulling Sasuke and Naruto to level up in the outer ring, while his gaze was directed towards the outer side. Sure enough, he's back. It's within my expectations, but he appeared a bit early, huh? Why is he coming this way? Shouldn't he be dealing with the enemies on the outskirts? Never mind, I'll go and take a look at this moment. Kanoha was in complete chaos. The attacks from the Shinobis of Sunagaka and Atogaka were not limited to just the examination hall. Several giant snakes were summoned and forcefully broke through the outer walls of Kanoha. The Shinobis of Sunagaka and Atogaka entered through the breach, but the Kanoha Shinobis quickly reacted and confronted the enemies, buying time for the evacuation to the shelter. For a while, there was a constant roar of various ninjutsu in Kanoha village. Some outsiders who were visiting Kanoha during the Chunin exams couldn't help but start looting. However, there were always unlucky individuals who targeted people they shouldn't provoke. You old geezer, hand over your money quickly, or else are. A rough-looking old man with white hair grabbed the head of the unknown wandering shinobi and slammed it hard against the wall. Bang. A muffled sound. The wandering shinobi immediately passed out. Orochimaru, is this your plan? Are you really going to attack a teacher? Jureya looked at the exam site, his eyes filled with a mixture of complexity and sadness. He hesitated for a moment, feeling the uncontrolled snakes inside Kanoha and then looking at the exam venue not far from him. In the end, he decided to run towards the exam venue. Kanoha has a deep base. He was surprised this time, and the snakes were allowed to wreak havoc to buy time for the villagers to evacuate. Once the evacuation was over, expert shinobi would immediately come to the rescue. A few snakes were nothing to worry about. And he really wants to see Orochimaru again, and see his master for the last time. Without hesitation, he headed straight for the venue, occasionally encountering some Kanoha shinobi along the way. Some young Shinobis instinctively wanted to attack this person of unknown origin, but before they could act, they were stopped by older individuals. This is our Kanoha Sanin, Jureya Sama. What are you trying to do, kid? Jureya Sama has returned to Kanoha. That's great. With him here, Kanoha will be safe and protected. As the master of the fourth Hokage, Jureya, even though he has been away from Kanoha for a long time, still commands great respect. With a serious expression on his face, he headed straight to the exam venue. But he hadn't arrived yet. Suddenly, he stopped in his tracks, his eyes showing a hint of seriousness. You're actually here too. Judging from the direction, you were originally planning to go to the Achiha clan's residence, but changed course midway to come here. Well, there are several new clubs there. With your style, of course you would want to experience them first. That was my mistake. Natsuo approached with calm steps while speaking. In the Naruto series, during the Chunin exams, Jureya was led astray either by traces left by Orochimaru or by a girl playing in the mountains. It was not until Kanoha was in total chaos due to the attack of the Shinobis of Sunagaka and Atogaka that all the Shinobi clans realized that the situation was getting out of control and their experts began to act. Only then did Jureya rush over and suppress several large snakes in one fell swoop. But now, the renowned Achiha club seems to have caught the attention of even this sage causing him to intervene in the conflict prematurely. This disrupted Kanoha's plan for collapse. Others may not be able to break through the four violet flames formations barrier, but he might. It's all because of our captivating Achiha club. Who are you? Jureya's face turned serious and his eyes narrowed. But he soon noticed the unique Akatsuki uniform on Natsuo. His face is partially hidden by the high collar of his coat, and a bamboo hat that covers his head, casting a subtle shadow over his features. Despite this, two crimson-red eyes are visible through the shadow. Wait, that outfit, and those eyes, are you a Chiharitachi? That's right, 
Once again, Natsuo disguised himself as Itachi again. Jiraiya's pupils contracted. He had once tracked Orochimaru and naturally knew about Orochimaru's affiliation with Akatsuki and the information about Itachi. But he quickly calmed down. No, you're not a Chiharitachi. So, who are you exactly? Jiraiya's expression was serious. He didn't know the true relationship between Itachi and Konoha, as he had been away for many years when the Achiha clan was annihilated. But as a skilled shinobi, he could see the traces of transformation technique on Natsuo. Although he couldn't discern the true identity beneath the transformation technique, it also denied the fact that he was Itachi. I am Ichiha Itachi. Natsuo smiled. Or would Jiraiya-sama like to verify it personally? In the next second, his pupils changed. The pattern of a windmill appeared in his eyes. The Manjekyo Sharingan. Manjekyo Sharingan Jiraiya's face changed, his expression becoming more serious. As a cage-level powerhouse, he naturally could sense the opponent's aura, and immediately recognized them as a formidable enemy. But Manjekyo Sharingan isn't that an ability only possessed by Ichiha Itachi. Could this person really be Ichiha Itachi? I clearly notice traces of transformation technique on him. Could it be that I'm getting old, and my eyes are deceiving me? However, do you think that with just your eyes, you can defeat me? Jiraiya remained fearless, facing him directly. Being an Ichiha doesn't mean you're invincible. When I let my troops against the shinobi of Awagika, there were no shortage of Ichiha clan members among my subordinates. He subtly moved his posture, showing the confidence that a Sanin should have. In reality, the Sanin were undoubtedly the top powerhouses in the shinobi world. In the Naruto series, when Ichiha Itachi and Kisum tried to capture Naruto while he was traveling with Jiraiya, they only acted when they managed to get the latter away from Naruto. In fact, Itachi and Kisum commented that in a fight against Jiraiya, they would at best kill him, but end up dead as well. Even Payne admitted that his victory over Jiraiya was largely due to his ability to summon multiple bodies through the six parts technique. This gave him a crucial advantage over Jiraiya during their confrontation, otherwise he would not have been able to defeat Jiraiya. This shows how powerful the Sanin really are. If Orochimaru had not been with his health deteriorating and his body beginning to fail, due to his experiments and continuous use of forbidden techniques, which made him much more vulnerable in combat, he could have defeated the young Ichiha Atachi and taken the Manjekyo Sharingan from him. So facing Natsuo, Jiraiya naturally had no fear and proudly said, I participated in two of the three great shinobi wars. I've seen all kinds of grand scenes. So what if you're an Ichiha? You're just a coward. Let me measure your worth. Don't underestimate me. Even if this plan to destroy Konoha was probably orchestrated by Orochimaru, this person in front of me is either Orochimaru's subordinate or an ally brought in by Orochimaru. But even if Orochimaru personally made a move, I am confident that I can hold him off. The next second crack, the surrounding space suddenly fell silent turning into black and white. Then, a series of cracks and breaks appeared. The monotonous and cold aura of the Tsukuyomi world came forth, Jiraiya was directly bound to a cross, unable to move. He had never seen this scene before Jiraiya was a bit dumbfounded. Did I just fall into a Jinjutsu? Splatter. Natsuo calmly stabbed Jiraiya, then turned his head to look at him. Jiraiya-sama, what did you just say? Oh my god, it hurts. At the same time Kanoha village, Ichiha residence. Among the Ichiha clan today, Aside from the young children, the remaining wives are all skilled Kinoichi. Additionally, some of the most trusted wives have received information from Natsuo. When the alarm sounded in Kanoha, the Achiha residents immediately reacted. A large number of rogue and wandering shinobi recruited by Akatsuki appeared and firmly protected the Achiha residents. They were not protecting Natsuo's wives, but rather the ordinary customers. After explaining the current situation in a friendly manner, all customers, merchants, and service personnel calmly sought shelter and constructed temporary defensive structures using earth release. Due to Natsuo's presence, Orochimaru deliberately did not allow the giant snakes to break into the Achiha residence, and even deliberately arranged for the shinobi of Sunagaka and Atobika to avoid that direction. Of course, during the chaos of war, it was inevitable that some shinobi would get out of control. However, they were quickly killed by shinobi brought by Akatsuki, Grandpa Kakuzu sat firmly in the main house, and several masked creatures had already been summoned, giving off a murderous aura, giving a feeling of invincibility. In coordination with the shinobi brought by Akatsuki who came and went, the Achiha clan's residential area, which was of considerable size, surprisingly gave the feeling of a paradise amidst the chaos of war. Many Kanoha residents who were near the Achiha clan's residential area also gathered there, hoping to seek refuge. The person in charge of the residential area, Yukino, of course, did not refuse. Warmly, she arranged for the residents to welcome people, 
while quietly promoting the Achiha clan. At least they have obtained the protection of the Achiha clan, and the residents of Kanoha are grateful. Even the Kanoha shinobi who lived nearby, hesitated for a moment, and chose not to go with their families to the Kanoha shelter, which is a bit far away, but instead sent their loved ones to the Achiha clan area. The defensive power of the Achiha clan is so strong that it may be safer than going to Kanoha shelters. It can be said that even though there is only one adult, Natsuo, left in the Achiha clan, they have miraculously become the anchor for all the residents of Kanoha. Some merchants who have settled in the residential area of the Achiha clan, couldn't help but feel grateful for the protection provided when they saw this scene. Even the expensive rent they had to pay is no longer a reason for dissatisfaction. However, there are still some internal problems within the Achiha clan. I'm going to find Natsuo. Koronai said seriously, according to intelligence, this Sunagaka and Atogaka operation is centered around the Chunin exam site, and Natsuo and Sasuke are inside the site. What if something happens to them? That's right. Yu Gao also said, we have enough manpower here, so why not provide some support to Natsuo? Other wives also expressed, exactly, those women who are pregnant should not take risks, but those of us who do not have any physical impediments, are still combat forces who can go and help her husband. The problem is that your husband doesn't need your help, Anko thought to herself, but she persuaded everyone together with Yukino. She couldn't directly mention Natsuo's strength, so she could only say, Natsuo bears the great responsibility of the Achiha clan's revival, and he definitely won't recklessly fight to the death with others. He will definitely be safe, so you can rest assured. But such statements are of no use at all. Even the recognized elder sister, Yukino, couldn't suppress the emotions of her sisters. In the end, Amayuri suddenly drew her sword and stabbed it at the door. Stop wasting time. Whoever wants to go save Natsuo, if you can defeat me, I'll let you go. All right. Kuranai, starting to get impatient, accepted Amayuri's challenge. Kuranai knows that Amayuri is a Kunochi who has hidden her identity. She is clearly a wandering shinobi, who was lucky enough to meet Natsuo, and was eventually accepted into the Achiha clan. She's just a wandering shinobi. How could she be my opponent? Of course, she is also pregnant, so I should spare her crackling. Kuranai was stunned when Amayuri easily tackled her to the ground in three moves, despite Amayuri's belly showing signs of pregnancy and preventing her from moving easily. With your appearance, it seems like you haven't seriously trained in a long time. Are you even qualified to participate in this kind of big battle? Amayuri looked disdainful. Are you asking for death? Be a good girl and wait for your husband to come back. He's much safer than you. Amayori remembered the scene where Natsuo defeated her back then, and her mouth couldn't help but twitch. Even though she had been training diligently since then, she did not feel the slightest chance of winning. Although Natsuo was at the site of the Chunin exam, facing many expert shinobi from various villages. But she still felt that she and the other women, who were being protected by the shinobi brought by Akatsuki, were in greater danger than Natsuo. With his strength, I'm afraid no one in the entire village can kill him, right? Amayuri thought in her heart, and without mercy, said, If you can't beat me, just stay here. Then she mercilessly knocked to the ground another of the women who was screaming, that she wanted to go save Natsuo. They all began to doubt their lives. As Kinochi who could marry Natsuo, even the weakest among them were Chunin, and some even had Jonin level strength. However, they were all defeated by Amayuri, a pregnant woman. Could it be that I really haven't practiced well for too long? and my strength has greatly declined. No, I have to work hard to train in the future. Otherwise, when a dangerous situation occurs again, I will only be able to stay at home honestly like now, and I will be of no use at all. Then, one by one, the women said goodbye to their quiet life, which had become idle due to the wealth of the Achiha clan, and began to work hard and practice again. The strength of a shinobi can improve. A strong kunochi can obviously give birth to more outstanding children. Natsuo has always encouraged his wives to practice hard, but unfortunately, the results were not significant. Except for a few like Amayuri, most of them gave up on becoming stronger and became idle. In short, under Amayuri's suppression, the Achiha clan stabilized. On the other side, Jureya collapsed weakly in the corner. Damn it. How did it end up like this? Of course, he wasn't directly overturned by Natsuo's Tsukuyomi. In the Naruto series, even Kakashi, after being hit by the Tsukuyomi, was barely able to hold on until Mike Guy arrived before finally collapsing due to letting his guard down. Jiraiya is much stronger than Kakashi. Even if he was hit by Natsuo's Tsukuyomi, he managed to forcibly break free from the illusion and still maintained a certain level of combat power able to counterattack. But the time he stayed in the illusion was enough for Natsuo. In a cage-level battle, even a small flaw can be seized by the enemy, 
and become a crucial factor affecting the outcome. Furthermore, Jureyo was attacked by the Tsukiyomi, which affected him, leaving him as if he had stayed awake for several days, exhausted and without strength. Jureyo gritted his teeth, supporting his tired body. He tried to summon the two great sage toads. But Natsuo, who was familiar with Jureya's techniques, would never give him this chance. Taking advantage of the fact that he was weakened, he quickly defeated him. Of course, Natsuo didn't really intend to kill Jureya here, and Jureya also had some tricks up his sleeve. So, with Natsuo's deliberate performance, Jureya finally managed to escape, but was unable to participate in the current Konoha battle. Damn it. Who uses the Manjekyo Sharingan before even starting the battle? Jureya leaned against the corner, panting heavily with a helpless expression. Normal Shinobis would evaluate each other first and seize the opportunity before revealing their trump cards. But Natsuo acted against common sense, starting with Tsukiyomi. And Jureya, who was unfamiliar with the Manjekyo Sharingan technique, fell into the trap and lost outright. Damn it, where did these Manjekyo Sharingan come from? Could it really be a Chiharitachi? Has he come to seek revenge on Konoha? Exam venue inside the Four Violet Flames formation, the idle chatter between Orochimaru and the third Hokage was already over. In the eyes of others, the fierce attacks that could kill at any moment were not even worth a test for the two cage level individuals. They could only serve as idle chat for them to play with. The next second, the two finally got serious. The third Hokage revealed his armor and Orochimaru took off the Kazuki Age robe he was wearing, revealing his usual attire. And at that moment, hum, just in time, Natsuo walked onto the roof in his regular attire, as if taking a leisurely stroll. Looking at the two who were still not completely serious, he smiled immediately. This is really great. Luckily, I acted fast, otherwise it might have been too late Orochimaru, and the third Hokage's eyes both narrowed at the same time. Hum, Natsuo, you're Achiha Natsuo. The shadow guards next to him saw Natsuo and were first stunned, then without hesitation said, What are you doing here? This is not a place where a jonin like you can stay. Hurry up and go down, find an opponent you can handle. Leave this to us. Their words were full of impatience. However, they didn't see the solemn look in the third Hokage's eyes and the furrowed brow of Orochimaru. Natsuo, how did you end up here? Orochimaru's eyes drooped slightly. I remember I brought Jureya here. Didn't you run into him? Oh, you mean him. Natsuo was taken aback, then laughed. So, it was you who brought him here. I thought it was our Ichiha clan's clubhouse that was too attractive and made him go out of his way. Come to think of it, even if he likes women, a shinobi of that level wouldn't be delayed by women. When it comes to important matters, it seems I was being presumptuous. Saying that, Natsuo laughed self-deprecatingly, as if mocking his own overestimation. He slowly walked up to the barrier and looked at the four violet flames formation. He then looked at Teiya, whom he found beautiful, and smiled, saying, Miss, can you let me in? To be honest, I've wanted to kill the third Hokage for a long time. I really don't want to leave it to someone else. Natsuo gave a kind smile as he spoke, would it be possible for me to be allowed in, please? But in the instant when Natsuo's words fell, the three Ember Guards launched their attacks without hesitation. He is Orochimaru's accomplice. Kill him. We can't let him influence the Hokage inside. The three Jonin level experts arrived in an instant, holding ninja swords and kunai. They directly aimed to kill Natsuo. However, Natsuo just smiled lightly. He grabbed the hand of a Jonin who was holding a kunai, and using the kunai, he killed the shinobi who was about to stab him with a ninja sword. Then, using the manipulating attack blades technique to control the kunai, he stabbed another jonin who was heading towards him. Finally, he threw the remaining jonin, whose wrist he had grabbed, onto the body of the last jonin, who had just been stabbed, manipulating the kunai, so that it cut his neck. Blood flowed instantly, dyeing the roof tiles blood red. In just an instant all three jonin were wiped out. This guy the expressions of the shinobi of the Sound 14 changed. The Shadow Guard of the Third Hokage was not weaker than themselves. Natsuo could kill the Shadow Guard in an instant, just as he could kill them in an instant. It seems that you guys don't want to let me pass. Natsuo sighed lightly, looking at the Four Violet Flame Formation. In the next moment, a huge purple arm appeared next to him. At first, the arm was just bones, but then muscles emerged, and it was covered in armor the arm extended out forcefully, directly piercing the barrier with a violent twist. Crack! The seemingly absolute defense of the four violet flames formation was directly opened by a long and narrow crack, which then began to spread across the entire barrier rumble. A huge crack actually opened in the four violet flames formation. The sound four scalps went numb, their entire bodies tensed up, their hair standing on end, and their hearts seemed to stop beating. Stay calm, stabilize your chakra output. Natsuo said with a light laugh dispersing the Susanoo arm while taking a light step forward, walking into the crack. 
As Susanoo's power dissipated, the sound for Chakra surged madly. Finally, the four violet flame formation stabilized again, but their hearts were pounding in a panic. That incredibly tough barrier, which even cage-level experts needed to take seriously, seemed like a piece of paper in front of this man. With a casual swipe, it could be torn open. Is this barrier really useful? Arachimaru Sama, is this for violet flame formation your modified ninjutsu? It's quite impressive. Natsuo exclaimed as if he had seen something novel. Arachimaru's mouth twitched. You could say that. This is a modification I made from the Yuzumaki clan's for red yang formation when I was still in Kanoha. Although its power has been greatly reduced, the four red yang formation requires four cage level experts, making it too difficult. This one is more practical. Orochimaru-sama truly lives up to his reputation as the number one scientist in the shinobi world. He's amazing. Natsuo raised his thumb. The four violet flames formation has its merits. Don't underestimate the four violet flames formation, although its power is dozens of times less than that of the four red yang formation. But the problem with the latter is that you still need to find four cage-level experts to activate it. Under normal circumstances, even Konohagaka might not be able to produce four cage-level experts at once. Even if they were able to produce them and trap the enemy, can they afford to allocate manpower to enter the formation and kill the enemy? Has no sense. So, although the four Red Yang formation seems powerful, its practicality is almost zero. On the other hand, Orochimaru's improved four Violet Flames formation is quite good. Currently, the Sound Four have trapped the third Hokage and are blocking the Anbu outside. However, Orochimaru, after hearing what Natsuo said, couldn't help but twitch the corners of his lips. The merit is that it can heal itself after being torn apart. That's not the merit I had in mind when I made the improvements back then. Natsuo Yorochiha Natsuo, right? The third Hokage's face became serious. So you've been hiding so deeply all this time. The so-called revival of the Achiha clan. The so-called having children. The so-called spending a fortune to have children. Are you hiding from me and avoiding Danzo's attention? Hello, Lord Third Hokage, long time no see. Natsuo smiled and said, But you're wrong about one thing. I really do want to have children, and the children I have are real. However, the Third Hokage didn't believe it at all. A person who indulges women every day and has had so many children in a few years, can he still have so much strength? Shouldn't those who train every day just bang their heads against the wall and die to save themselves from showing their stupidity? Natsuo, what do you want by coming here? The third Hokage stared at Natsuo with his old eyes. Is Achiha really planning to betray Kanoha? Hey, hey isn't Kanoha the one who betrayed the Achiha? Natsuo laughed and said, Third Hokage, have you forgotten that it was you and Danzo who deceived Achiha Itachi? and joined forces to exterminate the Achiha clan. I also found the eyes of the former clan leader, Fugaku, and those of his wife, Makoto, in Danzo's research laboratory. It turns out that you are the one responsible for that incident. The third Hokage's face twitched. In fact, the moment he saw Natsuo, he thought of the root attack case and the attack on Danzo. Although Danzo denied the existence of the research lab in front of other clan heads. But in a later private conversation with the third Hokage, they discovered what the missing materials were. Who knows if the culprit would use those items against Kanoha. Anyway, something was lost, and in this regard, he wouldn't hide it. So you knew. The third Hokage hesitated, saying, Natsuo, there are some misunderstandings. It wasn't me and Danzo manipulating Itachi, but rather your Uchiha clan plotting a rebellion. Itachi tried to dissuade his father several times, but couldn't resolve it. He had no choice but to. Yes, just like how you watched Danzo kill Shisui. Just like how you decided to eliminate all the weak and sickly Achiha, not sparing even newborn babies, and had the Achiha's Sharingan dug out to be used as research subjects. Natsuo said, full of sarcasm, the third Hokage choked and couldn't speak for a while. Besides someone like Itachi, who was manipulated, who else would firmly stand on the Hokage's side if they knew about this? When you first came back, Danzo suggested that I get rid of you. Maybe I should have listened to him then. The third Hokage took a deep breath, his gaze incredibly serious. You indeed know too much. Hey, hey, it's not that you didn't want to get rid of me, but I never left Kanoha, right? Natsuo smiled and said, If I had left Kanoha, I don't think you or Danzo would have simply watched as the Echiha's great wealth was used by me. The corner of the third Hokage's mouth twitched. Yes, both he and Danzo had tried to manipulate Natsuo to leave the village. But in the end, he stayed in the village, never stepping out. So, are you here for Achiha's revenge? The third Hokage took a deep breath. Are you accumulating power for revenge with those eyes of yours? No, I'm not that close to the Achiha clan. I didn't awaken my Manjekyo Sharingan because of that. Natsuo chuckled. 
Actually, although there may be some issues, Itachi's act of eliminating the Ichiha did me a great favor. It was because of his actions that I easily obtained a large fortune and live happily every day. From that perspective, I should perhaps thank you. Then why do you still want to kill Third Hokage was about to speak, but was interrupted by Natsuo. Third Hokage, have you forgotten about your actions against the Ichiha clan recently? Have you forgotten about forcing me to carry out difficult missions? Have you forgotten that because of Asuma's jealousy, you attacked the Ichiha clan? So now I want to kill you. What's the problem with that? Third Hokage was dumbfounded. Yes, he did target the Ichiha clan and cause them some losses. But just because of this small matter, just because of this small matter, you want to kill the leader of your own village. Orochimaru sighed lightly. Yes, this man may seem gentle and easy to talk to, but he is not magnanimous. The fact that he was almost extorted clean is the most obvious evidence. Regarding the plan to destroy Kanoha, Orochimaru and Natsuo hardly discussed it because they both knew each other's intentions. To kill Third Hokage, Orochimaru also brought Jiraiya specifically to prevent Natsuo from taking action. But unfortunately, this arrangement did not have any effect Natsuo-kun. Can't you let me have Third Hokage? Orochimaru sighed lightly, his voice hoarse, his gaze serious. Although I don't have anything to trade with you right now, I promise to give you a satisfactory reward in the future. Killing Third Hokage is my responsibility. Natsuo silently looked at Orochimaru. From a utilitarian perspective, it would be the same no matter who made the move. But Orochimaru took the initiative. Or rather, he still had strong feelings for Third Hokage otherwise, with his personality. Why would he bother with the plan to destroy Kanoha? When has Orochimaru ever cared about the village or power? He only cares about immortality and power. But Orochimaru eventually took action because he wanted to give his teacher a perfect ending. The third Hokage became increasingly old, yet he was unwilling to relinquish power. He endured humiliation from external forces and used a heavy hand internally. During the third great shinobi war, Konohagake clearly defeated Iwagaka. But in the end, they signed an equal peace agreement. The things he had gained on the battlefield were unexpectedly given away on the negotiation table. This weakness made all the Kanoha shinobi dissatisfied. So Namika's Minato, at a young age, took over and became the Hokage. Had he not taken office, the third Hokage would have been the first cage to be removed. And now, with the death of the fourth Hokage, the third Hokage has returned to power, and the resentment towards him has been accumulating. Especially after Natsuo attacked the Roots Research Lab, it completely angered all the shinobi. If it weren't for the imminent danger of a great shinobi war, forcing the shinobi and the higher-ups to quiet down for the sake of Kanoha, the third Hokage would have already stepped down. But is the fourth great shinobi war really an opportunity for the third Hokage? Not necessarily. Or perhaps, one mistake in the Fourth Great Shinobi War could be the time when the Third Hokage loses all his honor. So before that happens, Orochimaru wants to allow his teacher, the Third Hokage, to retire with the honorable status of a deceased Hokage. This is the principle behind Orochimaru's actions. Natsuo has always known this because if it weren't for this reason, Orochimaru really had no reason to kill Rasa. Rasa is also a cage-level Shinobi, and even though he may be considered the weaker among cage-level Shinobi, he could still cause greater casualties to Kanoha. However, this goes against Orochimaru's plan. He wants to see his master retire with honor, to see the old man in his twilight years, still fighting him to the death, and protecting the safety of the Kanoha village as a hero, and not the culprit who lost incompetently to the enemy, causing Kanoha to be leaderless and suffer heavy losses. Who made him attack me and the Achiha clan? Natsuo smiled and said, I'm sorry, Orochimaru. I don't have the habit of passing up the opportunity to finish off my enemies. Orochimaru narrowed his eyes, his face filled with killing intent. His palms opened and closed, as if hesitating about something, yet also seemingly eager to take action. But he hadn't taken any steps yet. The third Hokage couldn't help but be filled with anger. Orochimaru. Natsuo. He shouted angrily. You two seem to be having a great time chatting. What do you think of me, the Hokage? Do you think I'm some random shinobi that you can easily kill? Suddenly, an enormous amount of chakra emanated from him, his aura imposing, as if he had returned to the peak of his ninja prowess. With such an imposing presence, he could easily overwhelm weaker shinobi. You two brats, come at me together. As the third Hokage of Kanoha, I will send you both to hell. He was full of aggression. However, Orochimaru let out a sigh. Natsuo even smiled slightly. Okage-sama, you're right. We really regard you as some random shinobi that we can easily kill. Before the third Hokage could get even angrier, Natsuo looked over and carefully examined the third Hokage's armor. The ninja armor he wore was of the Sengoku period style. During the Sengoku period, there were few missions involving infiltration, espionage, and instigating discord. Most missions involved direct conflicts between shinobis. 
protecting oneself with armor became the first choice for shinobis. And even the early shinobis of Konoha preferred wearing armor, rather than the lightweight ninja attire used nowadays. However Natsuo smiled faintly and said, Third Hokage, you don't often wear this battle armor, do you? The third Hokage was surprised, he didn't expect Natsuo to suddenly mention his outfit. But what he said was not wrong. As the third Hokage, he hadn't engaged in combat with anyone for a long time, so he naturally didn't need to wear battle armor. This armor had been stored at the bottom of a box, and if it weren't for the news of Orochimaru's attack, he probably wouldn't have put it on today. Natsuo's eyes carried a hint of mockery, as he looked at the shiny new battle armor worn by the third Hokage, and said slowly, Ninja attire has never been as clean and tidy as yours, Hokage-sama. It should be stained with sweat, mud, and blood. It should look tattered, that's how a shinobi should look. Third Hokage, you have become old, very old. The brave shinobi of the past died a long time ago. What remains is just an old man who relies on past glory, monopolizes interests, and suppresses newcomers. With such a mindset, how can you possibly defeat us? Even Natsuo, who now enjoyed a comfortable life, had fought to the death in his early years, engaging in life or death battles with enemies multiple times. Even now, whenever the system rewarded him with a new ninjutsu, he would immediately find time to sweat and work hard to thoroughly digest and incorporate the ninjutsu into his own battle style. Not to mention Orochimaru, who had defected from Konoha and had fought with others more than once. In our eyes, you are truly just a useless waste that can be killed with a flick of our hands. The third Hokage's face immediately turned pale, but he couldn't say a word in retort, because he also understood that what Natsuo said was right. Or rather, any ninja would understand that if they give up fighting and spend a long time in administrative positions, their strength will gradually decline, and they may eventually be defeated by enemies who are far inferior to themselves. So many ninjas persistently carry out missions, even someone like Hayuga Hiyashi who holds a high position, and can constantly mobilize his clan members to protect himself as the clan leader, will occasionally undertake a combat mission. Orochimaru let out a light sigh. He formed hand seals and finally clasped his hands together. Hum. The third Hokage's expression changed. This ninjutsu is. Natsuo also cast a faint gaze over. Bang. Two coffins slowly rose. The first one had the character one written on it and the second one had Natsuo. Let me handle this one. Orochimaru calmly said, I owe you a favor if you insist. I don't mind competing with you. Natsuo replied, Bang, bang. Two coffin lids fell to the ground, revealing two men wearing the Konoha forehead protector, summoning impure world reincarnation. Shodai, Nidaim. The third Hokage widened his eyes. Orochimaru, how dare you desecrate the souls of the deceased? However, Orochimaru remained silent. It was Natsuo who showed a hint of surprise in his eyes. The physical bodies affected the combat power of the characters summoned through the impure world reincarnation. Originally, Orochimaru used the bodies of two failed participants in the Chunin exams, Kintsuchi and Zaku Abumi. From this, it can be seen that Orochimaru was really desperate. How much power can two genin bodies summon for the Hokage? The third Hokage fought against three opponents at once, achieving the title of the strongest Hokage in the hearts of Hokage fans. A moment of great glory. But this time is different. Natsuo keenly felt the surging chakra coming from those two bodies. Elite Jonin level bodies. It seems you've made quite a preparation. Natsuo chuckled lightly. Have you been ready to face me for a long time? The first Hokage, Senju Hashirama glanced at the third Hokage and revealed a smile. Long time no see, monkey. Monkey, you've also grown old. The second Hokage, Senju Toborama, swept his gaze across the battlefield. So the one who called us now is this young man, right? Senju Toborama's gaze fell on Natsuo. He almost instantly saw through the third Hokage's level, and without hesitation, locked his gaze onto Natsuo who had activated his Sharingan with a hostile expression. Did the evil Ichiha ultimately harm Konoha? Toborama. I told you not to say such things. Hashirama frowned, but couldn't help but glance at Konoha. But young Ichiha, are you still a ninja of Konoha? Clearly, Orochimaru's relaxation of control and strengthening of power had greatly enhanced the abilities of the two Hokage. They even displayed agile thinking, and their conversation flowed smoothly without the dull and awkward feeling of the battle that resulted in the death of the third Hokage. Of course. Natsuo smiled and said, I am Natsuo, the Ichiha clan head of Konohu village. It is an honor to meet the two Hokages. He lightly laughed and bowed, then said, But haven't the two of you realized? This is a three-way power struggle. Orochimaru and I were both summoned here to kill Saratobi Hiruzen, the so-called strongest Hokage. He summoned you both just to argue with me about who should kill the third Hokage. Who should kill the third Hokage? 
Is the evil Achiha finally betraying the village? Tobarama's eyebrows furrowed, and he glanced at the third Hokage beside him, then said coldly, If that's the case, then I'll eliminate you first. Seemingly ordinary words, but they conceal the hidden agenda. The third Hokage's shiny armor and aging body had already proven his level of strength. Although he is now not far from his power when he was still alive, Senju Tobarama did not believe that he could resist Natsuo, who emanated a dangerous aura, and Orochimaru who performed the summoning, in pure world reincarnation of himself and his older brother. So it would be the best choice to let Orochimaru and Natsuo face each other first. No, no, I haven't betrayed the village. Natsuo shook his head. Why are you planning to attack the Hokage? Isn't that considered betraying the village? The third Hokage couldn't help but angrily say, Natsuo, if you still consider yourself a ninja of Kanoha, you should unite with me and drive away the thieves who attack Kanoha first. Don't speak so self-righteously. Natsuo sneered at his words. You are the one who killed our entire Achiha clan, causing only two adult Achiha members to be left. Oh, no I forgot that it was Achiha Atachi who massacred the clan and then defected. There's only one adult Achiha left, and that's me. You keep talking about unity. But why didn't you think about uniting the Achiha clan, and presenting a united front back then? He is the only adult Achiha left the first and second Hokage's expressions changed. What's going on, monkey? The first Hokage's face turned pale. Why did the Achiha end up like this? It's not me, should I? It has nothing to do with me. The third Hokage's face turned white, as if he were a student being called out by his teacher. He said, the one who killed the Achiha clan was Achiha Itachi. Natsuo added with a smile, well, it's true that you didn't do it yourself, but you incited Achiha Itachi, didn't you? You ordered the Anbu not to interfere, and after the Achiha were wiped out, you recovered the Achiha clan's Sharingan, right? It wasn't me. The third Hokage angrily said, the Sharingan was collected by Danzo. Natsuo said, so, you're saying the other two things were done by you? The third Hokage opened his mouth but ultimately couldn't refute. The Senju brothers were dumbfounded. So, it was really the monkey who did it. Why did it turn out like this? Why did he do this? Senju Hashirama took a deep breath and said seriously to Natsuo, The situation with your Achiha clan, it is not something that should have happened. But no matter how angry you are, now that the village is under attack as the shinobi of Kanoha, we must unite and face the external enemies. Brothers of Kanoha should not continue to shed blood. His words were filled with deep emotion, perhaps remembering his situation with Ichiha Madara, with a touch of melancholy on his face. But Natsuo still shook his head. I'm sorry, first Hokage, I am not as great as you, and I am not seeking revenge against the third Hokage for the sake of the Ichiha clan, as you think. There was a hint of disdain in his eyes. I just want to kill him myself. It has nothing to do with the Achiha clan. No, you can't do anything. Tobarama suddenly formed hand seals. Water release. Water dragon bullet technique. A giant water dragon rose out of nowhere, roaring as it pounced towards Natsuo. Hashirama also sighed lightly and quickly took action. Orochimaru breathed a sigh of relief when he saw this. Regardless, anyone who poses a threat to Kanoha is an enemy of the Hokage. This was the common understanding of the Senju brothers. From this perspective, the actions of the two Hokage were clear and subjective, greatly reducing Orochimaru's difficulty in manipulating them. He didn't need to exert much effort to suppress their resistance. Of course, after killing Natsuo, the two Hokage would probably start to resist. But that can be dealt with later. Natsuo laughed and leaped up, avoiding the attack of the Water Dragon. The next second, he encountered Senju Hashirama. Fists, knee strikes, elbow strikes, kicks. Various physical techniques were used by him, full of strength as if he was constantly in a state of chakra enhanced strength. Natsuo also fought back without hesitation, relying on the observation of his Sharingan, striving for every opportunity. Both sides exchanged punches and palm strikes. Then Hashirama was kicked out by Natsuo. Of course, this was not because Senju Hashirama's physical techniques were weaker than Natsuo's but because Orochimaru didn't dare to give Senju Hashirama too much freedom. He also knew the drawbacks of this forbidden technique. When impure world reincarnation is used to revive someone, and if this person was strong enough, there is a chance that they will break free from the summoner's control. Once the two Hokage break free from his restraints, it would be troublesome. However, although Natsuo took out Senju Hashirama with a kick, Senju Tobarama's attack appeared again. Bringer of Darkness Technique Are you underestimating Ichiha by using Jinjutsu in front of them? In Natsuo's eyes, the Sharingan rotated rapidly, and the power in his pupil burst out. 
Before darkness could descend, it was shattered by the formidable power of his eyes. Then, with a casual strike, he killed the large number of snakes that were rushing towards him. This time, Orochimaru took action. When the two Senju brothers were making an effort to suppress Natsuo, it was easier for Orochimaru to act. However, he still worried about Natsuo Sharingan, so he attacked from a distance throwing a pile of snakes. That's enough. Orochimaru smiled. Beside him, the first Hokage clapped his hands, and an immense chakra surged forth. The earth shook, and one after another, tree roots gradually grew and twisted. This is Shodai's unique wood style. The third Hokage's eyes lit up from a distance. From the very beginning, he stayed far away, allowing Natsuo and Orochimaru to fight each other. After all, both of them were his enemies. So let's let them fight each other like dogs. It would be best if Orochimaru killed Natsuo, and then the impure world reincarnation went out of control, and they killed Orochimaru himself. Yes, he didn't want to kill Natsuo after Orochimaru was killed by him, but rather wanted to see Natsuo die first. Compared to Orochimaru, whose intentions he had already guessed, the third Hokage hated Natsuo even more, who openly mocked his old age. Now that he saw the first Hokages would release, he naturally felt great joy. Great! This should be enough to teach that ignorant Echiha a lesson. The third Hokage's face showed anticipation. The wood release of the first generation was a powerful Kekei Genkai that pacified the chaotic world and suppressed Echiha Madara. Is this all? However, Natsuo looked at the small sapling that had just emerged and was gathering power at his feet and sighed lightly. It seems that the impure world reincarnation cannot fully unleash your true power. If others were to see this, they would doubt your strength and mock the fact that Echiha Madara of that year couldn't even defeat opponents like this. Should I be the one to show them the true power of wood release? As he spoke, he clapped his hands, at the same time as the first Hokage. Wood release secret technique, nativity of a world of trees. A large number of trees grew, the branches and roots twisted. In almost an instant, the entire barrier was filled with them. However, everyone present exclaimed in unison, how is it possible? How can you use wood release? Wood release that's wood release only the first Hokage, Senju Hashirama, mastered it. Even his brother, the second Hokage, Senju Toborama, couldn't learn it. For the sake of this wood release, the second Hokage did not hesitate to sacrifice a large number of Senju clan members, which indirectly led to the decline of the Senju clan. Danzo still has cells from the first Hokage, and has transplanted them into himself. Orochimaru wasted the lives of many children, but the only result was Yamato. And this is an irreplicable achievement. Thinking about it this way, Yamato may have some special characteristics, and now Natsuo is using him so skillfully. And the power difference with Hashirama is huge. Although both sides use the same ninjutsu at the same time, the branches summoned by Senju Hashirama were easily twisted and forcibly swallowed by Natsuo's branches. In almost an instant, Natsuo crushed Senju Hashirama's wood release. The rapidly growing trees filled the entire barrier in almost an instant. Even the barrier began to shake, which scared the sound for, causing them to desperately increase their chakra production. This attack almost caused the barrier to collapse. Orochimaru and the others simultaneously moved their bodies, slashing their weapons to cut off the trees, their faces showing astonishment. How is this possible? This is the real wood release. Senju Hashirama widened his eyes. Kid, aren't you from the Ichiha clan? Since when can you use my wood release? Toborama, I remember you researched wood release. Did you succeed? Senju Toborama looked confused. No, at the time, all of my research results were failures. Could it be that after my death, they succeeded in replicating the wood release? After finishing speaking Senju Toborama along with Senju Hashirama, turned to look at the third Hokage. No, we were unable to replicate it. Although we have made some achievements in our research, we do not have such a strong wood release. The third Hokage was also bewildered. The difference in power between Natsuo's wood release and Yamato's is too great. While dodging the attacks from the trees he began to ponder, then said, The person responsible for investigating the wood release at that time was Orochimaru. Orochimaru, have you achieved any results during your defection? After speaking the third Hokage looked towards Orochimaru. Orochimaru, it's not me. Orochimaru's voice was hoarse. I have indeed conducted some experiments, and I have gained some results, but so far, there are no practical achievements that can be used in combat. So where did Ichiha Natsuo's wood release come from? Oh, I understand. Senju Hashirama's eyes lit up. It must be the combination of our Senju clan and the Ichiha clan. Natsuo carries the bloodline of our Senju clan, which is why he awakened wood release. Ha ha ha. The marriage policy back then is still effective. I didn't expect that the Ichiha clan could also produce a member with Senju bloodline. If I meet Madara in the Pure Land, 
I must make amends with him. He laughed heartily as if he had seen his own success. When Kanoha was first established, so that all shinobi would truly become brothers, Senju Hashirama strongly ordered the abolition of the rule, prohibiting members of the shinobi clan from marrying strangers. Although stubborn clans like the Hayuga have been resisting this policy in secret, it seems that this policy has already shown its effectiveness. However, the third Hokage coughed and said, Um, first Hokage, Natsuo's parents are a Chiha. Not Senju well, even his grandparents were a Chiha. In fact, he really wanted to say that your policy has actually failed. Even now, the Hayuga clan still maintains the practice of intermarriage within the clan. Although there is nothing obvious on the surface, it has always been forbidden for clan members to marry outsiders in secret. Other shinobi clans have similar situations to varying degrees, just not as intense as the Hayuga. The clan that truly implemented your policy thoroughly is the Senju clan. As a result, most of the Senju clan members have integrated with other bloodlines in Kanoha, combined with his and Danzo's suppression, resulting in Tsune being the last remaining Senju. Ah, the first Hokage was stunned, then stubbornly said. Could it be that his mother or grandmother made a mistake when they were young, and had relations with a Senju clan, and then kept it a secret ultimately leading to the current situation? Natsuo became more and more helpless as he listened. In order to not let his ancestors be wrongly accused, Natsuo directly said, I'm sorry, I don't have Senju bloodline. This would release is achieved through other means. But what does all that matter now? The problem now is whether you can defeat me. The next second countless tree roots twisted and surged up, accompanied by various branches and trunks, further compressing the already narrow space. The sound for frantically outparted chakra, sweat dripping from their foreheads, their faces gradually turning pale. However, the four violet flames formation still flickered, as if it could break at any moment. And this is just the result of the aftermath of the battle. The ones who are most miserable are the third Hokage and Orochimaru who have to endure the aftermath of the wood release. They are being chased by wood release, constantly evading and struggling to deal with the endless trees. Soon, the Senju brothers are the first to be captured by the trees. Oh, being caught by my wood release, it's the first time. Senju Hashirama laughs. But there is no hint of bitterness in his smile. Instead, it is filled with the novelty of experiencing this situation for the first time. Damn, if it weren't for this guy suppressing me all the time, with my speed, how could I be caught? Senju Tobarama looks unconvinced. The bodies of the impure world reincarnation greatly limit their strength. Even though Orochimaru has carefully prepared elite Jonin level bodies, it is still far from enough otherwise. How could Senju Hashirama's wood release? Not even withstand a single blow. Yes, not only you, second Hokage. In fact, if we only talk about wood release, I admit that I can't defeat the first Hokage. Natsuo smiles and says, whether it's combat experience, familiarity with wood release, or the abundance of wood release ninjutsu, there is still a gap between me and Shodai. Of course, if facing Senju Hashirama at his peak, Natsuo wouldn't foolishly only use wood release. After all, he is an Echiha. Why not use Susanoo? Meanwhile Orochimaru was cutting down the surrounding trees as he headed towards the barrier. His subordinates were in charge of the barrier, and with a single order from him, they would definitely release it. What he wants is to get away from the battlefield between Natsuo and Hashirama, and create opportunities for himself. But the problem is that Natsuo also knows this, so the trees spreading towards Orochimaru's side are the most numerous. He is using wood release to force Orochimaru to leave the outskirts and come to the core, slowly strangling him. Orochimaru understands Natsuo's purpose, but does not dare to order his subordinates to release the barrier. Otherwise, if the barrier is released, wood release will expand unrestricted, and it will be impossible for him to escape from the battle. As for the third Hokage, countless trees surged out, even though the third Hokage unhesitatingly summoned Monkey King, Emma transforming into a golden staff constantly smashing the surrounding trees. But the next second, even more trees surged out. Is this the first Hokage's wood release? Hiruzen, what have you done? What enemy have you attracted? Emma shouted loudly while smashing the surrounding branches. Yes, this is the first Hokage's wood release. I never thought I would have the opportunity to experience wood release. The third Hokage bitterly smiled. No wonder the first Hokage could suppress the ninja world. Who can withstand this? Incredibly powerful chakra that can continuously create tree attacks. With a sudden eruption, the entire battlefield is within the range of wood releases attacks. The sky, the earth, all around wood release attacks can appear at any time. One wrong move and it's over. The third Hokage spewed flames fiercely, burning the trees, showing impressive momentum 
but he understood that this was just a desperate move. Wood release itself has the ability to absorb chakra, and all the captured lives in the field will become a boost for the trees to grow rapidly. Even if you don't take this into account, he can't compete with Natsuo in terms of chakra. So the third Hokage gritted his teeth, form hand seals while shouting, Natsuo, you want to kill me? don't you? Then come. Or is it that you don't even have the courage to face an old man like me? Saying that, instead of retreating like a Orochimaru, he moved towards the core. Aren't you making fun of me for being old? What's wrong? You don't even have the courage to face an old man now. You fear me? At the beginning of the battle, the third Hokage moved away from the center of the battlefield. He had the idea to take advantage of the opportunity. Once Natsuo was defeated by Shodai and Nedaim, it wasn't until he was included in Natsuo's attack that he started to exert his strength, summoning Enma and fighting hard. Third Hokage, you have indeed grown old. Natsuo's voice came. Do you really think that this kind of provocation can anger me? It's true that I said that whether it's a Rochimaru or me, killing you is not difficult. But I must also admit that you may have a chance to take someone with you before you die. Or should I say, you know that you are very old. So you have deliberately prepared a trump card, intending to risk your life for the village in the end. Your finishing move before dying is the dead demon consuming seal, which you keep as a top secret although I trust my own strength. I wouldn't go at you foolishly, when I know you have this technique, right? He actually knows. The third Hokage's pupils contracted, and the forming seal stopped. This is his last killer move that he has saved. Even knowing that he may not be Orochimaru's opponent after defeating Natsuo, he insisted on getting rid of the latter first. The reason was that if Orochimaru gave him no other option, he would use this move to take Orochimaru with him. This is his last gift to Konoha. Oh, Sensei still has a killer move, Orochimaru's eyes flashed with seriousness. All the details have been exposed, and the killer move can no longer be considered a true killer move. And from their conversation, it can be seen that this is probably a close-range sealing technique for sure kill. But the problem now is that Natsuo's would release keeps everyone at a distance. Where can this killer move be used? The third Hokage's face turned even paler. The reason why a trump card is a trump card is because it is hidden, it is a last resort. Once exposed, it can no longer be considered a trump card. But who leaked it in the end? Clearly, this trump card was taught to me by the fourth Hokage, and besides me and him, no one else knows about it. The third Hokage's face showed a look of despair, and he shouted in anger, Damn it! Natsuo, do you dare to fight me? If you have the ability, let's have a real fight. What kind of man are you, relying on Shodai's would release? What about your Aichihes Jinjutsu? What about your Manjekyo Sharingan? Use them against me. I'm right here. Why don't you dare to come and see me? Come on. Why don't you come, damn it? Although the voice was full of provocation, Orochimaru could only sense endless sadness from him. But in the end, Natsuo did not appear in front of the third Hokage. He simply used a simple wood release move relying on his immense chakra and finally caught the third Hokage off guard, spinning him around and catch him. And after desperately struggling, the third Hokage exhausted his chakra, then had his bones twisted by the trees, and finally broke his neck, sending his soul to the pure land. The battle is over. Natsuo watched the corpse of the third Hokage in silence. He was once a heroic shinobi who was willing to sacrifice his life for the village, but later became a mediocre person who monopolized the village's interests and suppressed those who did not obey him. Perhaps this is the most fitting way for him to die. After killing the third Hokage, Natsuo did not relentlessly pursue Orochimaru, but instead stopped his attack, burned the trees created by wood release, and let him go. Honestly speaking, this time he was a bit unscrupulous. Orochimaru has been planning for so long, just to give his teacher a perfect ending. But in the end, Natsuo took away his chance to kill his master. It may be that due to his transmigration, he does not feel much for the genocide of the Ichiha clan, and the third Hokage's manipulations may not have caused him any harm. But if he had not been strong enough, he could have been killed by Danzo or the third Hokage at the slightest carelessness. The death of the third Hokage is necessary for both Natsuo and Konoha. That is why he never thought of interfering with the Orochimaru plan. But that does not mean that he will let the third Hokage become a hero like in the Naruto series. So, it's time to wrap things up he smiled slightly and left the place. Because both the Konoha Shinobi and the Sunagaka and Atobika Shinobi did not want to harm the fainted nobles in the audience, they were somewhat restrained, and the intensity of the battle was low, as they moved away from the audience. Just as Natsuo expected, with the deliberate indulgence of Kakashi and others, as well as the intentional cooperation of Gaara, the battlefield moved away from the place where Orochimaru and the third Hokage clashed. At this moment, Gaara, who used the full Shukaku form, and those who left the exam site, are wreaking havoc within Konohagaka. 
At the same time the evacuation of the Konohagaka villages is almost complete. This allowed the Jonin of Konoha to begin using their full forces without fear of collateral damage. Kakashi wielded the Chidori and slashed a long scar across Shukaku's arm. Might Guy opened the fifth gate and began attacking Shukaku, causing him to retreat repeatedly. Niji also skillfully took advantage of the situation, and used the eight trigrams palms revolving heaven to protect his fellow ninjas multiple times. However, although these annoying attacks couldn't completely harm Shukaku, they greatly angered Gara. He ignored the original plan and directly used the feigning sleep technique. It's finally happened, finally. Freedom is mine. A sharp cry sounded, sounding a bit neurotic. The Shukaku form's pupils began to spin, finally revealing a look full of ferocity and cruelty. The ominous aura of violence accompanying it quickly spread, causing the faces of the surrounding shinobis to change. It's Shukaku the real Shukaku. After venting, Shukaku began to launch attacks while laughing maniacally. Wind release. Sand buckshot. Wind release. Drilling air bullet. A frenzy of explosions turned the surrounding buildings into ruins in an instant. The shinobis scattered and fled, hastily dodging in the face of a true tail beast, they could only temporarily avoid its sharpness. However, Shukaku became more and more excited as it continued to attack. Finally, it began to gather its ultimate move. The tail beast ball. The positive black chakra and negative white chakra are compressed into a spherical shape in a ratio of 8 colon 2 possessing tremendous power capable of vaporizing entire mountains easily. Whether intentional or not, the target direction of Shukaku's tail beast ball is the Achiha clan's residential area. Haha, <laughs> Gara, you specifically warned me not to attack in that direction. Now, I insist on attacking there. Even if I attack, what can you do to stop me? Shukaku's voice is high-pitched revealing a sense of satisfaction. Not good. Niji's expression changed, and he intended to intervene forcefully. But he is stopped by Hayuga Hiyashi. What are you thinking, Niji? Hiyashi grabs his nephew and angrily says. What are you, even if you risk your life, can you really stop a tailed beast ball? Also, in that direction is the residence of the Achiha clan, not the residence of our Hayuga clan. So what if Shukaku attacks? Achiha and Hayuga have always been rivals. Although Hayuga now believes that Achiha is no longer worthy of being their opponent, there is obviously no need to sacrifice their own genius to save them. However, Niji doesn't care about any of that. What a joke. If Shukaku really destroys the Achiha clan residence, it is possible that Natsuo in a fit of rage will eliminate everyone present. It might even involve Konohagaka and Sunagaka. After all, his entire family is now in the Achiha clan's residential area. But just when Niji was about to use his chakra to free himself from his uncle Hiyashi, he suddenly calmed down. Because his Byakugan has detected a unique chakra standing in front of Shukaku, Gara must have his reasons for not allowing you to attack that side. Natsuo appeared in front of Shukaku, and an arm of the Susanoo appeared at his side. Shukaku widened his eyes and was about to say something when the next second, Susanoo's arm forcefully grabbed the tail beast ball and stuffed it into Shukaku's mouth. Boom. Shukaku's body begins to swell like a colossal balloon. Cracks appear on the surface of his skin, almost as if it is fracturing from the inside out. The energy blast distorts her corporeal form, causing Shukaku's mass to stretch beyond its usual limit. His skin now appears deteriorated, as if it were marked by the aftereffects of countless blows and attacks. But all this chaos and agony are just the outward reflection of the anguish that Shukaku endures within himself. As his body swells and heaves, the pain within is incomparably more intense, an amalgam of torment that echoes through his core. Before he could howl in pain, Natsuo decisively grabbed him and threw him in the direction of Rasa, who had just been freed by Natsuo. His originally fierce and crazy look now seemed completely lifeless. Rasa, you better control him otherwise I'll kill him. Nichuso said calmly. I understand. Rasa forced a smile. Waves of sand and gold surged up, trapping Shukaku to contain him. As someone who often deliberately provokes Gara, he is quite experienced in controlling Shukaku. After seeing this, Natsuo's figure disappeared using the body flicker technique. Everything happened so suddenly that the Konoha Shinobi barely reacted. Who was that person? Was it a Konoha Shinobi? I don't know. I was too busy dodging the attacks and didn't have time to see the person clearly. Now is not the time to think about that. Kakashi took a deep breath, his face serious. Look at the person over there. That's the fourth Kazakage. Fourth Kazakage. Shouldn't he be fighting with the Hokage? Why would he appear here? Could it be the Hokage was killed by the Kazakage? The faces of the crowd changed, showing a solemn expression, and even some individuals had a sense of panic in their eyes. 
They did not know that the fourth Kazakiyage who attacked the third Hokage was actually Orochimaru in disguise. They only knew that the fourth Kazakiyage and the third Hokage had started fighting. Did the Hokage lose so quickly? Isn't the fourth Kazakiyage on the opposite side known as the weakest cage? However, the opponent's clothes were clean, as if he had not received any injuries. Judging by his expression and his abundant chakra dam, our Hokage can't even inflict a little damage on the weakest cage. Is the Hokage really that weak? The current problem is who will stop the fourth Kazakage. Although he is known as the weakest cage, his gold dust is the most suitable for use on the battlefield. Each move has a large coverage area and has a great killing effect on non-cage level ninjas. It seems that it's time for me to contribute to the village. Mike Guy's face showed determination. If I open the eight gates, I should be able to kill him. Kakashi hesitated to speak, but his strength was not enough, he was only an elite jonin. What else could he say? Now there are only two choices left. Use the lives of everyone around to pile up against the fourth Kazakage. Or use only Mike Guy's life. Kakashi hated this kind of multiple choice question. However, while the Kanoha Shinobis were tense for a long time, Rasa did not continue to attack Kanoha. On the contrary, while suppressing the Kanoha Shinobis with gold dust, he shouted loudly, The third Hokage is dead. Sanagaka Shinobis, we have achieved a strategic objective. In the name of the fourth Kazakage, I order everyone to retreat. Kanoha Shinobis, the next time we meet will be on the battlefield. Prepare to have your heads chopped off. He proclaimed loudly, full of spirit, as if he himself had just killed the third Hokage. Furthermore, while retreating with the Shinobis from Sanagaka, he launched a fierce attack on several root bases, according to the map provided by Natsuo. He stood out with confidence and a heroic posture. Seeing this, the Sanagaka Shinobis became extremely excited. Indeed, Rasa-sama is amazing. He easily defeated the Hokage. Rasa-sama is the true strongest Kazakage, even stronger than the third Kazakage. The Sanagaka Shinobis were full of spirit, and the morale of the Otogaka Shinobis also rose. But it was a bit strange that even though they had such a big advantage, why did they retreat from Kanoha? Wouldn't it have been better to keep fighting? Perhaps Rasa-sama was worried that if they cornered Kanoha, they would in a desperate act use some means of mutual destruction. The crowd whispered to each other. What they didn't know was that Rasa didn't want to stop fighting. On the contrary, he was the one who wanted to continue the battle the most. Since the powerful Konohagaka was founded, when has it suffered such a disastrous defeat like this? This is truly the happiest moment of his life. But he really doesn't dare to continue fighting leaving aside the issue of whether they managed to defeat all the Kanoha Shinobi. It is impossible for the Suna and Oto Shinobi to occupy the Ichiha clan area. Trying to do that is practically a death sentence. As Rasa retreated, because on his escape route he began destroying Root's bases, Danzo became completely enraged and actually took the initiative to fight Rasa. And then Rasa defeated him easily, although Rasa is considered the shame of the cage level. But he is actually a standard cage level combat power with considerable strength. And Danzo himself is already old, older than the third Hokage. Furthermore, they are still close to Kanoha, making it impossible for him to use Izanagi and wood release. He can only rely on his own wind release, which is really no match for Rasa's KK Genkai magnet release. As a result, the Suna and Oto Shinobi managed to escape from Konohagika without further obstacles. When has Konohagika ever been so badly beaten? And not only were they beaten, but in the end, they let the enemy leave so arrogantly. The Shinobis remained silent for a long time. In the face of defeat and loss, the pre-existing conflicts converged here, combined with resentment, and finally erupted completely. The recent attack exploded all the contradictions that had accumulated in Kanoha. The weakness and incompetence of the third Hokage had caused many Shinobis to lose faith in him. During the Third Shinobi World War, after Minato single-handedly stopped an invasion consisting of a thousand Iwa Shinobi, the third Hokage actually established a policy of reconciliation to end the fighting with an unprecedented offer not to seek reparations for part of Ayala. This caused the war advocates to oppose Hiruzen's seemingly weak decision, and, to keep the discontent in the village under control, he decided to resign as Hokage. Otherwise, he could have been the first cage to be removed from office. However, with the death of the fourth Hokage, the third Hokage returned to power. The incident between the Kumogaka delegation and the Haiga clan, the massacre of the Achiha clan, Root's theft of the corpses of the Kanoha Shinobi one event after another, deepened the resentment of the village towards the third Hokage. During the last incident where Root's laboratory was exposed, if it weren't for the third Hokage guiding everyone's opinions, making them believe that the fourth Shinobi world war was about to break out, the ninja clans would have already started causing trouble. The ninja clans ultimately chose to compromise because it was undeniable that there was no successor to the Kanoha village. The only ones remaining in the village with cage-level combat power 
with a third Hokage and Shimura Danzo, and the third Hokage was at least a bit more reliable than Shimura Danzo. Furthermore, although the third Hokage was confused about many things, his reputation as a great ninja from the past was still significant. He was always considered a powerful shinobi second only to the first Hokage and the second Hokage in terms of power. Faced with the impending war, the ninjas ultimately chose to suppress their anger. However, now they can't bear it anymore. A mere Rasa actually killed the third Hokage. The ninjas were furious. When did we have such a weak Hokage in Konoha? The first Hokage suppressed the ninja world. The second Hokage created countless secret techniques and his strength was only surpassed by the first generation. The fourth Hokage also held the record of stopping an invasion of nearly a thousand Awagaka Shinobi by himself. Only the third Hokage did he really die at the hands of Rasa. That's not all, Rasa didn't even receive a scratch. What did you, as Hokage, even do? Of course, everyone believed that the fourth Kazakage killed the third Hokage, because the barrier blocked the outsider's view. It was difficult to see the situation inside without getting closer, and the shadow guard who approached was killed by Natsuo. At the same time, Natsuo deliberately erased the traces of wood release, and instead used his magnet release to cover it. Due to the third Hokage's intentional guidance, most shinobi now considered him to be the strongest Hokage in history, which is why they tolerated his various policies. However, as a result, he was defeated by the enemy without much effort, plus his policies ended up greatly damaging Konoha's strength. And currently, there is no suitable successor for Hokage, because all the shinobi who could have been the next Hokage were suppressed. White Fang, Fourth Hokage, Nawaki, Kato Dan. There were so many excellent successes, and their deaths were more or less the responsibility of the third Hokage and Danzo. The fact that Konoha, once the strongest village in the shinobi world, has fallen to the point of being humiliated by Sunagaka, is mainly the responsibility of the third Hokage. The people were full of righteous indignation and exhaustion, but their eyes were full of resentment. The ninja clans began to contact each other, showing signs of unrest. The members of Kanova Council were in a panic. Hirazan died, and Danzo was injured. There was only Yudatane Kaharu and Mitakado Hamura, who immediately went to find Jiraiya. But as soon as they saw him, they were stunned. Jiraiya, what happened to you did you encounter an enemy? They asked. Well, it was a man who called himself a Chiharitachi, but from what I saw, he might not be a Chiha Atachi. Jiraiya said with bandages on his body, forcing a bitter smile. But his Manjekia Sharingan is real, and I was defeated by him. Kanoha still has enemies, the two old men exclaimed. And a Chiha Atachi, Manjekia Sharingan, Jiraiya, there's something you might not know Yudatane Kahara hesitated for a moment, then revealed the whole truth and added. Atachi actually remains a Kanova Shinobi, probably someone else with the Manjakyo Shuringen impersonated him. Jiraiya wanted to curse at that moment. I mean, how could the Achiha clan be easily wiped out by a young man? So it was the villagers doing. Why is it that after hearing what you said, I feel like the possibility of that person being a Chiha Atachi is even higher. You technically forced him to wipe out his entire clan. Due to pressure and other mental factors, he may have allowed himself to be manipulated at that time. But with time he will definitely understand the reason for everything. And when that happens, he will definitely cause trouble for Kanova again. Jiraiya finally forced himself to say those words without exploding with anger. Yutatane Kahara and Mitakado Hamura looked embarrassed. They knew that the shinobi of the village were dissatisfied with Kanova's upper management, and now that Hiruzen was dead, it was normal for them to take action against them. That is why it was necessary to resolve the matter of the new Hokage as quickly as possible. They exchanged glances and immediately made a decision. Without hesitation, Yudatane Kahara said, Jiraiya, now that Hiruzen is gone, the village cannot be without a strong man. You should become the Hokage, yes. Now only you are the most suitable. Mitakado Hamura also agreed. Jiraiya sat awkwardly in front of the two old men and then interrupted them. Wait, do you really think I'm fit to be Hokage? Mitakado Hamura and Yutatane Kahara looked at each other, both revealing helplessness. The point is not whether Jiraiya is the best fit for the position, but they know that if someone who has a connection to the Hokage line does not come forward as a candidate soon, the resentment built up by the Shinobi clans will definitely explode. This resentment is not only directed at Danzo and Hiruzen, it is also directed at the two of them. If there is no new generation Hokage to suppress the anger of the village's Shinobi, who knows what the enraged shinobi might do. I am not suitable for the position. Jiraiya sincerely said that he didn't want to be Hokage. A hero like him should belong to the entire ninja world. So how could he be trapped in a small office? I will go and find Sunaid. Jiraiya sighed lightly. Now, she is the most suitable to step forward. Jiraiya also understands the current situation of the village. It can be said that after the misdeeds of the third Hokage and Danzo, 
the level of trust between the village and the shinobi clans has dropped to an all-time low. And Tsunade, the granddaughter of the first Hokage, is the only candidate who can convince both sides. Okay, as long as you can bring Tsunade back and persuade her to become Hokage, we will support her. But if you can't do it, you will obediently become Hokage. Yutatane Kahara and Mitakado Hamura said in unison. Shireya looked at the two of them, his eyes filled with disgust. These two people even now, still haven't taken responsibility to salvage the situation. Instead, they are trying to rely on the new Hokage to help them honestly. Although Danzo is ruthless, the third generation is weak. But they are both much stronger than these two idiots. However, Jiraiya didn't say much. He just closed his eyes and said, Okay, then you should leave quickly. Yudetane Kaharu said, Kanoha village cannot be without a Hokage. The Jonin are already restless. The village has just shed blood, we cannot have internal strife. I'm still injured. Jiraiya's mouth twitched, not wanting to waste time with them. Fine. In fact, the hidden currents in Kanoha are clear to everyone. Even Natsuo, the Achiha clan leader who is completely obsessed with having children, has received numerous contacts. Many shinobi have sent invitations, ostensibly as guests. But in reality, they are discussing the matter of the Hokage. Kanoha needs a strong Hokage. The third Hokage and Danzo are simply not worthy. This is the common understanding of the Shinobi clans. But the specific situation still needs to be studied. Many Shinobi who have dreams of becoming Hokage have started to take action. For example, the reason why Hayuga Hiyashi generously sent an invitation to the Achiha, their former enemies, is because he wants to see if he can compete for the position of Hokage and prove his own strength. Other shinobi also have their own thoughts and are making moves. But Natsuo didn't care at all. During this attack, the Achiha clan has also revealed some of its strength as the Achiha residential area was one of the few areas that was not affected by the unrest. Although the members of Akatsuki were hired, the fact that no one in the village, including merchants and residents, was injured, already demonstrated their abilities. If Natsuo's reputation wasn't so bad and most men disliked him, perhaps someone would have asked him to run for the position of Hokage. After all, Hokage is everyone's dream. At the same time, Natsuo also exposed some of his strength during this attack as after the situation calmed down. Some recognized that the shinobi who stopped Shukaku from destroying the Achiha clan's residential area was him. This information attracted the attention of many people, not only him, but many previously unknown ninjas also emerged during the destruction of Kanoha. For example, Niji gained a lot of fame this time. At only 12 years old, he had combat power at the Jonin level, and was able to participate in the battle against Shukaku, rescuing a large number of shinobi and civilians. This extraordinary talent made him the brightest star of the new generation of shinobi. Even Naruto and Sasuke couldn't help but envy and admire Niji. Niji, you're really strong, Naruto exclaimed excitedly. I can even hear people talking about you when I go to the supermarket. That's great. If I had that kind of strength, I would quickly gain people's recognition, right? No wonder you're Natsuo's disciple, Niji. You must have known Natsuo's strength early on and sought his guidance. Sasuke smiled. You two really hit it well. One has Jonin level strength right after graduating, and the other is an expert who can stop Shukaku's tailed beast ball but we're not inferior either. Sasuke proudly said, After I graduate, I'm definitely not going to lose to Niji in terms of strength. No, I will definitely defeat you. That's right. Naruto nodded vigorously. The internal conflicts within Kanoha brought great convenience to the evacuation of Sunagaka. Don't be fooled by the fierce fighting that Gara and others displayed in Kanoha. But the time they had was very limited, which is why they quickly retreated towards the border with Land of Wind, while Sunagaka's main force on the border also launched a counterattack. In fact, it is very difficult to launch a desperate attack on a ninja village. It is not only a question of whether it will succeed, but also the problem of subsequent evacuation. Because Kanoha has more ninjas and a more comprehensive deployment of manpower. In the original plan, Rasa even considered evacuating with some elites in the Shukaku, sacrificing the lives of other Suna Shinobis. However, the chaos in Kanoha gave Rasa a great opportunity. Clearly, Kanoha had more people and was relying on several defensive fortresses. Even if they could only delay them for a few days, he would cause heavy casualties to the Sunagaka Shinobi. However, Kanoha was unable to exert its strength at all. Even if Kakashi and other elite Jonin tried to coordinate, and even risk personally chasing and killing the Suna Shinobis, they still couldn't stop Rasa from forcefully breaking through Kanoha's defense line and finally joining the main force of Sunagaka at the border. We're still alive. Countless Shinobis were dumbfounded. They had rushed into Kanoha with the mindset of certain death. But in the end, they broke through Kanoha and returned home. After realizing this, they were extremely surprised. We're back. We're going home. Horay. 
Hore, long live the Kazakhage. The Suna Shinobis cheered loudly, tears of joy streaming down their faces, some even with an expression of disbelief. That was Konoha, the strongest ninja village in the world. And yet, we violently broke it. Not only that, we also broke through Konoha's defense and came back. This credit should definitely be attributed to our great Kazakhage Sama. The fourth Kazakhage is definitely the strongest Kazakhage. Even the third Hokage is no match for our fourth Kazakhage Sama. Kazakhage Sama, I am willing to die for you. The deafening shouts filled the air. Looking into the eyes of the Shinobis of Sunagaka, there was a deep sense of reverence. Even the high-ranking officials leading the Sunagaka forces looked at the fourth Kazakhage with admiration. This completely exceeded Rasa's expectations. It was really a pleasant surprise. He originally lacked prestige, he had insufficient strength, and Sunagaka had a poor economy. He could only rely on mining to obtain a certain amount of funds. Now he has become the spiritual pillar of Sunagaka. Kazakhage Sama, what should we do next? The high-ranking official's eyes were filled with fanaticism. Kazakhage Sama, should we launch a direct attack on Konohagaka? The pressure is too great. I suggest we first stabilize the surrounding defenses to prevent a counterattack from Konoha. Fool. Even the mighty third Hokage died at the hands of our fourth Kazakhage. Are we Sunagaka Shinobi afraid of Konoha Shinobi? Coward. That's right, with the great fourth Kazakhage, we are guaranteed to win this war. Yes, that's the fourth Kazakhage who killed the third Hokage. The crowd discussed excitedly. Rasa opened his mouth, hesitating to speak, wanting to say something but stopping himself. It's possible that I'm not the one who killed the third Hokage however. The hopeful eyes of the surrounding Suna Shinobis made it impossible for Rasa to speak the truth. The plan to destroy Konohagika was actually just a desperate counterattack by Sunagika, which could no longer support the dwindling funds and gradual decline in the number of missions. But now, everyone's eyes were filled with hope. The fourth Kazakhage is invincible. Don't even mention that dog Hirazan. What about Senju Hashirama and Ichihamadara? They were just born earlier, otherwise the Kazakhage would have taught them a lesson. Damn, Rasa couldn't hold back anymore. Insulting Saratobi Hiruzen was still acceptable, and maybe even Senju Hashirama. But when it came to a her, they may not know how the third Hokage died. But doesn't he know? Cough everyone, please refrain from speaking recklessly. Rasa said with a serious expression. I actually have great respect for Achiha Madara from back then, and I greatly admire his feat of suppressing the shinobi world with his power. He is my idol. Achiha Madara may not be Rasa's idol, but after Natsuo easily defeated him and Orochimaru, and then watched from a distance as he quickly killed the first Hokage, the second Hokage, and the third Hokage, with only Orochimaru escaping alone, Ichiha became his idol. After hearing Rasa's words, everyone immediately remembered the popularity of Ichiha Madara's catchphrase back then, and nodded in agreement. That's right, I remember that Rasa-sama admired Ichiha Madara. Yes, he even said, the harsh environment of the Land of Wind has forged our resilient character. Every Suna Shinobi will not be as weak as the first Hokage. We will only become determined warriors like Ichiha Madara. Ichiha Madara wanted to unify the Shinobi world through force, and that is also the goal of our great fourth Kazakhage. Our great fourth Kazakhage is the inheritor of Ichiha Madara's will. Rasa shouted in his mind, Did I ever say that I wanted to learn from Ichiha Madara and conquer the Shinobi world? Don't randomly add settings to me. But as he looked at the expectant gazes of the many Suna Shinobis, Rasa silently swallowed his saliva. Morale can be boosted, but not leaked, and he is well aware of this. He suddenly pounded the table with a fist, his face determined, like the most steadfast warrior. What you all said is right, that's exactly what I think. It's time to let the weak Kanoa Shinobis see the resilience of our son Agika. A surge of spirit rose in their hearts, causing every Suna Shinobis to speak at the same time. Let the weak Kanoa Shinobis see the resilience of our son Agika. Although Rasa is known as the worst cage, he has been the Kazakhage for many years. So he is still a qualified politician. Furthermore, his strategic level is not low either. He took the lead in raising the banner of the war and formally declared war on Konoha. Under Rasa's leadership, Sunagaka launched a relentless offensive, quickly capturing many strongholds on the border of Konoha. Although there were also many Konoha shinobi who defended themselves fiercely, they ultimately were unable to stop the Sunagaka army's advance for long under Rasa's cage level force. If others don't know the real situation, can't he know it? To boost morale, he took advantage of Konoha's slow response and launched a major offensive. However, after the initial attack, he immediately began to withdraw his forces without hesitation and create defensive lines. Honestly, this completely contradicts the quick and decisive strategic policy set by Sunagaka in previous wars due to limited resources. But under Rasa's high prestige, the Suna Shinobis all found reasons to support him. We want to conquer and occupy one place. Rasa-sama wants to focus on a long-term goal. 
While carefully observing and considering the immediate situation, Kanoha is too big for us to swallow alone. We need other major nations to act as well and divide Kanoha together. Rasasama is just confusing Kanoha. He is looking for an opportunity to completely crush Kanoha. Although the reasons for Rasa's decisive actions vary in the eyes of different people, but the Suno Shinobi firmly believe that their great fourth Kazakij definitely has a perfect strategic plan. They just have to shut up and carry out the orders. Rasa, no, I'm just being cowardly. Kinoha will never be destroyed as long as that man is there. Rasa knew this deep in his heart. As an Achiha, with countless wives from Kanoha, Natsuo would definitely not stand by and watch Kanoha being swallowed up. That man had just killed the third Hokage, defeated the first and second generations who were under impure world reincarnation, drove away Orochimaru, and could easily treat Shukaku as a doll. Even though his strength might not be on par with Achiha Madara, it wouldn't be too far off. However, Rasa was also very decisive and sent messengers to constantly instigate Kumogaka and Awagaka, trying to draw both sides into the battlefield. He even tried to look Harigake using the results of the attack on Kanoha. If they were lucky, completely annihilating Kanoha might not be possible. But occupying a small piece of land was not without hope Kumogaka. What a joke, is Kanoha really this weak? The fourth Reikage said, the third Hokage being beaten up by a little Kazakuch. During the Third Shinobi World War, Rasa had personally led the Suna Shinobis against the Kumo Shinobis and they were defeated miserably by the Ab combination. And yet, this Rasa had managed to overthrow Kanoha. Kanoha has become completely weak, they don't deserve to occupy such fertile land. The words of the fourth Reikage were filled with excitement. We, Kumogaka, should take action. Boss, should we wait a bit? Dari hesitated for a moment. Kanoha has suffered greatly in this war, and I can't help but feel that something is off. Who cares if something is off? Konohagaka can't possibly destroy itself, right? The fourth Reikage looked disdainful. This is already enough to prove that Kanoha is at its weakest moment. If we don't move now, when will we? Since we have been preparing for war for so long, we can directly launch an attack quote, Kumogaka declares war on Kanoha. He slammed the table with force, showing a resolute attitude. Everyone stood up solemnly and said, Yes, Reikage Sama. Good. The fourth Reikage nodded pause for a moment and continued. Speaking of which, now is a good opportunity. Kanoha is currently in chaos, which may be convenient for our espionage operations. He looked in the direction of Kanoha village, his eyes filled with anticipation. The Achiha clan I have long heard about the reputation of the Achiha clan Awagaka. Is it true? The little brat from Sunagaka actually killed the third Hokage. The third Tsuchikage, Onoki, widened his eyes and said, Although I heard that Hiruzen is becoming less powerful, he shouldn't be able to be killed by that Sunagaka brat, right? Tsuchikage Sama, what should we do? Akatsuchi tilted his head and looked at Onoki. Onoki remained deep in thought and finally said, Let's wait for now. We don't need to risk the lives of the Iwa Shinobi. Due to temporary changes, the war has already started and cannot be ended in a short time. We can wait, he said but sighed. Waiting sounds simple. But Shinobi prefer to take the initiative and create opportunities, rather than wait for them. But the problem is that Awagaka is also facing a serious shortage of powerful Shinobi. Even the position of Tsuchikage needs to be supported by Onoki, who is older than the third Hokage. The financial resources of the village are not sufficient with insufficient family assets. Who dares to gamble recklessly? Is that kid Dadara still playing house with Akatsuki? Maybe it's time to call him back. The third Tsuchikage thought to himself. Kurigaka also received a message from the Sunagaka. This is really troublesome. I thought the tune-in exams would give us a lot of time to develop. Terumi may sighed lightly. I didn't expect Sunagaka to directly start the war. Owl looked at the fifth Mizukage Terumi may seriously and asked. Mizukage Sama, what should we do? Let's not act rashly for now. Terumi may pondered for a moment and finally decided. For Kurigaka, occupying new territories is meaningless. First, we need to deal with the internal issues of the village which is the real priority. Kurigaka is located in the middle of the sea, and can remain stable even if the shinobi world is in crisis. Without this advantageous geographical condition, Kurigaka would have been annexed by other major nations due to its continued internal conflicts. It's good that you can think like this. Al breathed a sigh of relief. It was clear that he also agreed with Terumi Mei's words. But, but, Mizukage-sama, there are quite a few people within our village who want to start a war. They even made decisions pretending to be the Mizukage. I find it hard to believe that they won't take advantage of this opportunity to gain power. I see. Terumi Mei nodded, her eyes showing a hint of sharpness. But so what? If it really gets out of control, I wouldn't mind using war to unify our internal forces. As she spoke, a murderous intent emanated from her. 
The high-ranking officials around her all became solemn upon hearing her words, understood Mizukich Sama. As soon as the war began Kanoha was attacked by Sanagaka and Kumogaka. Sanagaka entered a defensive stance after launching a major attack. However, Kumogaka launched an all-out attack and annexed a large amount of land of fire territory. Fortunately, the warning about the start of the possible Fourth Shinobi World War was issued almost a year ago, relying on Kanoha's wealth and power. The third Hokage concentrated a large number of troops and resources at the border. With the fierce battles fought by the ninja forces, although there were significant losses in territorial concessions, they managed to barely withstand the initial attacks from both countries. However, Kanoha was still at a clear disadvantage. Without a Hokage that everyone could trust to coordinate and decide on the mobilization of troops, it would be difficult for Kanoha to manage to mobilize all the shinobi clans. Konohagaka was not lacking in resources or shinobis. What Kanoha lacked was a hokage everyone could trust. As soon as Jureya finished recovering, he left the village in search of Tsunade. Due to the crisis that Kanoha was facing, Jureya used all available means, and quickly discovered the inn where Tsunade was staying. And without any hesitation, he burst into the room. Tsunade. Emergency situation. Kanoha needs you. The village needs you. The position of the fifth Hokage is reserved for you. It's no longer the time for you to wander around, you know bang. A familiar fist landed on Jureya's face, sending him flying out. Stop making a fuss. Tsunade's expression was unfriendly. You scared my daughter. Although the punch was heavy, Jureya was already used to it. Wiping away his nosebleed, Jureya stood up and said, Oh, sorry, but I'm serious about what I said. Kanoha needs hum. Wait. Daughter Jureya suddenly widened his eyes, looking at the little baby in Tsunade's arms. Your daughter. Jureya said each word slowly. Tsunade nodded, confirming Jureya's words. My daughter. Jureya looked confused and could only ask. Whose child is this? It's mine. Do you have a problem with that? Tsunade's face was filled with killing intent, her fist clenched tightly, as if it was about to strike at any moment. No, what I meant was, who is the child's father? Jureya quickly interjected. Who is it? It just can't be Jureya silently swallowed his saliva, his eyes filled with disappointment. Orochimaru. Tsunade was silent for a moment due to Jureya's nonsense. But seeing Tsunade's lack of response, Jureya seemed to have gotten his answer. So it really is him, I guess it makes sense. Orochimaru had so many girls who liked him back then. And in the end, you became one of them. Jureya looked lost and lifeless, his eyes devoid of spirit. When did they get together? Why didn't I know anything about it? And you two didn't even send me an invitation. He forced a bitter smile, his expression complicated. Well, I guess it's for the best. Even if you did send me an invitation, it would only make me feel uncomfortable bang. Tsunade couldn't hold back any longer and slapped Jureya across the face. It has nothing to do with Orochimaru. Tsunade trembled with anger. It's a detestable brat thinking back to what happened in the past, Tsunade's hatred surged within her. A brat. Tsunade, are you a cradle stealer? It turns out that women, just like men, also like inexperienced young men bang. Jureya was thrown backwards, flying more than 10 meters before landing with a painful cry and spitting out a mouthful of blood. Perhaps because the sound was too loud, it disturbed the child. The child burst into tears, causing the new mother Tsunade to panic. Shizun, who was beside her, also became flustered. They had to sing and play with toys, exerting a lot of effort to calm the child down. However, it seemed that Jureya had finally snapped out of his own fantasies. He quickly noticed Tsunade's resistance towards the child's father. Yes, resistance. Jureya thought. Resistance is good. But was it just a result of drunkenness or was she under the influence of something? Jureya didn't dare to ask. He decisively returned to the topic he came looking for her for. Tsunade, the village hopes that you can return and take on the role of the fifth Hokage. The village's situation is very unfavorable now. Kumogaka and Sanagaka have already launched an attack on Kanoha. We don't know when the other two countries will make a move. Tsunade, the village needs you. Tsunade hesitated for a moment, but finally answered. I understand. I will return to the village. I will also consider the position of Hokage. I know you still have reservations about the village. But now that our teacher has passed away, what else is holding you back? Jureya said seriously. This village was established by your grandfather. Don't you want to protect it? You're the granddaughter of the first Hokage. Huh? You, hum? You're willing to return to the village? Jureya widened his eyes in shock. Tsunade was very resistant to the village. Although there was no direct evidence, the death of Nawaki and the numerous internal conflicts made her bluntly refer to the Hokage as dog shit. He remembers a few years ago when he occasionally met Tsunade. She was still drunk and said that only fools would want to be Hokage. So why is she willing to return to the village now? Actually, 
Jiraiya-sama, even if you didn't say anything, we were planning to return to the village. Shizun said helplessly beside them, taking care of a child is really difficult. Sunade sama and I have no idea how to do it. When it comes to delivering babies, they are both top-notch. The problem of children getting sick is nothing to them, but the child is just too difficult to soothe. Shizun still remembers that at the beginning, they didn't know how to use diapers which made the child uncomfortable. The child cried loudly, and even after Tsunade-sama tried to soothe her for a long time, she couldn't figure out the root of the problem. She tried countless methods but couldn't solve it. In the end, she got annoyed and handed the child over to Shizun. Tsunade then went straight to defeat a group of bandits to vent her frustration. Soothing a child is much harder than killing Jiraiya. This phrase has almost become Tsunade's catchphrase. By the way, not being able to take care of the child is only one of the reasons they returned to Konoha. The other is that Tsune decided to confront Natsuo, and at least hopes that her daughter can grow up in a better place, instead of wandering with her, and having to constantly protect herself from attacks from wandering shinobi or shinobi from other villages. Shizun silently glanced at Jiraiya, and couldn't help but say that Jiraiya's timing was perfect. Because Tsunade-sama doesn't want to have anything to do with Natsuo, and with the excuse of being busy with the Hokage's duties, she could ask a specialized nanny for help. It was also difficult for her to convince Tsunade that she will face Natsuo and her past in Kanoha, just with the excuse of, Lady Tsunade, this is your own daughter, and making her suffer with you is not good for the child. Um, is that so? Jiraiya said. That's quite a coincidence after all. They were teammates. After listening to a few words from Shizun, he understood Tsunade's state of mind. However, although Tsunade decided to return to the village, whether or not she would become Hokage was another matter. So Jiraiya took advantage of the situation and said, Don't worry, Tsunade. The Kanova Shinobi will absolutely welcome you. Many people are looking forward to me bringing you back to the village. Kanova cannot lose Tsunade, just like people cannot lose the sun. Although the village is facing some difficulties now, the workload may be greater, but there are also many rising stars among the Kanova Shinobi, who can completely share the work with you. Without further ado, he began to persuade. For example, Niji, the genius ninja of the Hayuga clan, who is only 12 years old, but possesses Jonin level strength. Kakashi is reliable and capable with outstanding abilities. He is the perfect candidate for the position of Hokage's assistant. And then there's the Achiha clan leader, Natsuo. He has been hiding his true strength all this time, and now he has revealed, shocking everyone. Wait, Tsune suddenly looked up, her eyes sharp. Who did you say has been hiding his power? Um, it's Ichiha Natsuo? Jiraiya hesitated in saying. Honestly, no one in Kanoha village ever thought he would be this strong, considering he was known as the weakest jonin in history. He spends his days either with his wives or marrying more wives. Such an enviable life cough I mean, a life that leads to ruin. How can he have time to train? But when Kanoha was under attack, he single-handedly stopped Shukaki's attack, instantly surprising countless people. When the news of his achievements came out, others thought it was a mistake. They had to verify the information repeatedly before confirming its authenticity. Many people know about Natsuo's life. After all, the fact that he has so many wives and how he spends his nights has piqued people's curiosity. And Natsuo's wives satisfied everyone's curiosity, openly stating, of course, we take turns. How could one person defeat Natsuo? Then there was talk of a fierce battle lasting a day with Natsuo taking on seven opponents. A cold light flashed, and an hour later, a billion elite soldiers surged forward. Infinite power, making the enemy's limbs go weak, full with awe. This is simply something that men fear, and women tighten their legs in response to, a formidable fighting force. Many men wondered how on earth he can have so much strength when he is busy with his wives every day. Seeing this, women even took Natsuo's achievements to confront their own husbands. Natsuo fights hard every night and still improves his strength, while you only do normal work. Why are you too tired to provide for the family at night? Stop pretending to be dead. Get up quickly for me. This is really the men of Kanoha have suffered from Natsuo's hardships for a long time. It seems that Natsuo is no longer hiding his strength. Tsunade and Shizun thought at the same time. One way or another Tsunade had decided to return to Kanoha so sooner or later she was going to face that guy. So she told Shizun to pack her things, and they would return to Jiraiya, Ichiha clan residence laboratory. So Orochimaru actually let you continue staying in Kanoha. 
Natsuo asked curiously, isn't he afraid that you will be recognized after appearing several times in the plan to destroy Konoha? Yes. Yakushi Kabuto smiled faintly. Orochimaru-sama ordered me to continue staying in Konoha and continue collecting information for him. As for the issue of exposure that you mentioned, Yakushi Kabuto smiled faintly, his smile carrying a hint of confidence. I don't think anyone can discover my true identity. Natsuo rubbed his chin. In the Naruto series, Yakushi Kabuto's concealment was very successful. If it wasn't for Orochimaru ordering him to test Sasuke and even go as far as pretending to assassinate Sasuke, exposing himself in front of Kakashi, he wouldn't have been exposed. In fact, even during the exposure in front of Kakashi, the main reason was that Yakushi Kabuto didn't hide anything, which allowed Kakashi to discover him. After all, his mission was already completed, and he didn't need to stay in Konoha anymore, so naturally he didn't care about being exposed. However, Natsuo understood that Yakushi Kabuto's background was in Danzo's records. As a former member of Root, his identity and background were arranged by Root. Or rather, his existence was one of the trade-offs between Orochimaru and Danzo. He continues to stay in Konoha. Could it be that Danzo still has some kind of deal with Orochimaru? But the plan to destroy Konoha has already ended. Oh, come to think of it, Danzo seems to have taken a beating too. Natsuo suddenly remembered some good news. As Rasa retreated from Konoha, following the map provided by Natsuo, he devastated Root's bases along the way, which completely enraged Danzo and in a fit of rage he confronted Rasa only to receive a beating. And Danzo himself is a person who attracts extreme hatred, it is not an exaggeration to say that everyone wants to beat him up. At this moment, when the shinobi clans and the high-ranking officials are hostile towards the third Hokage and Danzo, he has long been voted out of the decision-making circle by the Kanoha shinobi. If it weren't for the injuries he sustained from Rasa's beating, he would have been sent to the front lines to fight the enemy to the death. So it is obvious that his goal of becoming the Hokage successor cannot be achieved. Even if the village cannot retrieve Tsunade, they will retrieve Jiraiya. This has been stated by Yutatane Kaharu and Mitakado Hamura and has gained support from many shinobi clans. In this situation, can he still continue trading with Orochimaru? His reflections were interrupted by Kabuto. Natsuo-sama, may I ask you something? Kabuto pondered for a moment and said, I have received information from Orochimaru-sama, saying that when you killed the third Hokage, you used wood release. Although I trust Orochimaru-sama's information, may I ask if this is true? Yes, that's true. Natsuo nodded calmly. In fact, if I hadn't deliberately eliminated the remnants of wood release afterwards, there would still be a pile of wood on the battlefield right now. You already have wood release. Then, do you also possess the legendary first Hokage's sage body? Yes, I do. Yukushi Kabuto looked shocked. In fact, Orochimaru had felt something was off afterwards. Although the first Hokage's power under impure world reincarnation was far below that of his peak, he should not have lost so quickly in the wood release competition. The gap shouldn't be this big. But if Natsuo had the sage body, then it would make sense. The immense amount of chakra brought by the sage body is the foundation for the extraordinary power of wood release ninjutsu. Wood release again, and Manjekyo Sharingan too. Is Natsuo really this strong? Isn't this equivalent to the combination of a Chiha Madara and Senju Hashirama? Kabuto looked shocked. It's not as exaggerated as you think. Natsuo glanced at Kabuto and instantly guessed his thoughts and said, I don't have as many wood release techniques as the first Hokage, and there are still many powerful ninjutsu that I don't know yet. Although I can use Susanoo, I still have a lot to catch up with him in terms of applying ninjutsu. Although Natsuo can quickly integrate ninjutsu into his own fighting style after using cheats, there is still a big gap in battle experience between him and Achiha Madara and Senju Hashirama. He doesn't have a good opponent to accompany him step by step in adapting to high level battles. Kabuto's shock did not diminish because of this. Even if he can't surpass Senju Hashirama in wood release or Achiha Madara in ninjutsu, Natsuo, with the combination of wood release and Manjekia Sharingan, wouldn't lose to either Senju Hashirama or Achiha Madara, right? He silently swallowed his saliva and casually asked, Natsuo sama, how did you achieve wood release? You don't have the bloodline of the Senju clan, do you? His voice was light and faint, as if he was just chatting casually. But when Natsuo heard this, he stared at Kabuto with a meaningful gaze. Kabuto felt a tingling sensation on his scalp from the gaze. So, Orochimaru left you behind for me. Natsuo suddenly laughed. This is not about a deal with Danzo. It's just that Orochimaru is curious about how Natsuo can use wood release. Yes, there is that aspect. Kabuto swallowed his saliva and felt immense pressure. Of course, you don't have to say anything. Orochimaru-sama doesn't expect me to extract any information from you. Of course, if you don't mind, you can tell me. 
the combination of the wood release and the Sharingan could help with the development of your new medicine. Maybe I can get some inspiration. It's useless, Natsuo said indifferently. The way I obtain wood release cannot be replicated. Don't even think about learning from it. Is that so? Kabuto nodded. He didn't think Natsuo had any reason to deceive him. After all, this man could easily kill him if he wanted to. So what Natsuo said is probably true cannot be replicated. Could it be due to the Manjekyo Sharingan's unique technique? Kabuto thought to himself, but on the surface, he said, I see. However, Natsuo-sama, since you already have the sage body and have obtained wood release, can you share some cells with me? The combination of wood release and Sharingan might bring about even more unique changes in the cells, which could enhance the effectiveness of the medicine we are developing, of course. You can rest assured that I am prepared to never leave the Ichiha laboratory. Your cells will never leak out. If I want to go out, I will submit an application in advance, and you can personally inspect whether I have stolen your cells. He genuinely intended to help Natsuo, although the main reason was to make up for his previous audacity. Kabuto really didn't have the intention of giving Natsuo's cells to Orochimaru as research material. Even if Kabuto dared to give them, Orochimaru might not dare to accept them. What if Natsuo came knocking on the door? Natsuo also understood this and nodded. All right. The Achiha clan's residential area was originally the busiest shopping street in Kanoha, and with the end of the plan to destroy Kanoha, it became the place where everyone in Kanoha wanted to live. During the recent attack on Kanoha, the Achiha clan area is the only area that has not experienced any attacks. Whether it's the shinobi from Otogaka or the shinobi from Sunagaka, it's as if they can't see him. The large army would rather go around and avoid this place. The coordination of the shinobi brought by Akatsuki was also amazing. They directly crushed the scattered enemies, and arrested all the looters who wanted to take advantage of the chaos. Kakuzu even personally took action and killed an elite jonin level wandering ninja who tried to rob during the chaos. During the entire war, whether merchants or guests, not a single person was injured. This security force is simply invincible. Capital will naturally gather in the safest place. After this battle, Kinoha's prestige has greatly diminished, its strength has weakened, and people doubt whether it can protect the residents of Kinoha. Many traders are worried about this, and have withdrawn their investments in other areas to invest in the safest area of Kinoha. The territory of the Achiha clan. Due to the outstanding performance of the Achiha clan, even the price of residential buildings outside the Achiha clan's territory has increased. After all, during the attack, the Achihas also accepted civilians and provided them with protection. Seeing this, Natsuo made a decision. He hired some of the mercenaries brought by Akatsuki and continued to employ them. Patrol and security tasks in the commercial area would continue. This has given countless people great confidence. Therefore, even though the major shinobi clans have reduced their expenses and invested more resources in weapons and equipment, due to the start of the war, they have reduced their expenditures in entertainment. But instead, the Ichiha residence is even more prosperous than before the war. Ichiha's signature beauty salons, massage parlors, and clubs are bustling with people in traffic. In a deep cave with rock formations that resemble irregular peaks and columns, a faint light can be seen coming from an unknown source, barely illuminating the place. In the center of the cave, a kind of glowing seal or circle appears on the floor, surrounded by strange symbols and characters. Suddenly, blurry and distorted figures begin to materialize within the luminous circle. The outlines of the figures are blurred and poorly defined, as if they were distorted by some kind of technique or illusion. As the figures solidify, Akatsuki's distinctive black coats with red clouds are revealed. The members sit or stand around the projection, their appearance remaining blurred, without clearly revealing their facial features or specific details of their bodies. Pain the leader, said indifferently. Since we are almost all there, let's start today's meeting. Didara was a little surprised, but Kikuzu hasn't arrived yet. It doesn't matter if it doesn't appear, what's important is the information he just sent. Pan's tone remained the same. The information I received was that Orochimaru and Sunagaka managed to escape after attacking Kanoha, and the third Hokage was killed. I need some of you to go to Kanoha and take advantage of the confusion and chaos that Kanoha is in to obtain information about the Nine Tails Jinchuriki, and if it is possible to capture him. After Payne briefly introduced the purpose of today, he waited for everyone to speak. Atachi opened his eyes, revealing a pair of Scarlet Sharingan, and a trace of unease flashed in his heart. The third Hokage is dead, so no one knows that he is a spy sent by Kanoha. Furthermore, Sasuk has also lost his protection, Danzo could all go. Atachi said, with a calm expression, Atachi continued. Kissam and I are in the country of fire. 
which is more convenient. Kissam also smiled and added, exactly, I'm also looking forward to seeing Mr. Itachi's hometown. It sure is an interesting place. Seeing that both of them agreed, Pain handed over the task to them. Since Itachi's Amaterasu directly killed the three tails, there are still a few years before it can be resurrected. When that happens, that will be the day Akatsuki will show its fangs. After talking about things, Pain dismissed the meeting. Itachi's consciousness returned to the body, and his eyes looked in the direction of Kinoha. Sasuke, I don't know how your life is going. Itachi said to himself in his mind. Kisum has been observing Itachi's expression and asked tentatively, Mr. Itachi has another purpose for returning to Kinoha, right? Although he is Itachi's partner and respects Itachi, he is also an undercover agent sent by Ichiha Madara. And Itachi was well aware of this and gave his own explanation. I just want to see the situation of the Ichiha clan. After all, I still need Sasuke to awaken the Manjekyo Sharingan before he can face me one day. After listening to his explanation Kisum asked no more questions and the two walked towards Kanoha. The next day, a thick fog appeared in Kanoha. Under Sharingan's illusion, Itachi and Kisum passed the guards at the door smoothly. Then they stood on the city wall. Itachi looked at the familiar but unfamiliar village and felt a wave in his heart. Kisum said coldly, Unfortunately, there are no strong people in such a large village, and sooner or later it will be destroyed. Itachi frowned slightly. Kisum, I was born in this village, so I am very aware of the horror of Kanoha, and I am not completely sure, don't mess around. Hearing this, Kisum didn't say more, normally Itachi is the brain of this team. Let's go and gather some information first. In front of a meatball shop, Kakashi is reading silently with a book of Ichirichir. Kakashi, what are you doing here? A surprised voice rang out, and when he looked up, it turned out to be Yuhi Kurenai. Good morning Kurenai. Kakashi greeted first and then continued, I was just relaxing after everything that happened recently. How is your life in the Achiha clan? However, when the Achiha clan was mentioned, Kakashi keenly noticed that a person in the store had an obvious reaction. He silently gestured to Kurenai, and she also understood. I'm doing very well. Now I'm very happy. I went out for a walk and took the opportunity to buy some dango for Anko. As you know, that's her favorite food, and she especially likes the ones from this store. Kurenai pretended to be distressed. While the two exchanged information with gestures, they looked inside the store, but found that the two suspicious people who were sitting at the table had already disappeared. Immediately Kakashi and Kurenai began to chase them. But before leaving, Kurenai asked Kakashi to send a message to Natsuo. So he called Pakan to be in charge of sending the information. After Itachi and Kisum left the Dango shop, they arrived at the bank of a river. Mr. Itachi, why are we leaving? Kisum was a little taken aback. The Dango in that store was surprisingly good. Itachi took it away before he finished eating. Just now that person is copy Ninja Kakashi. And he discovered that something is wrong with us. Itachi said lightly, Just a Kakashi, Mr. Itachi. Don't say you're afraid. Kissum laughed wildly. Atachi shook his head. It's not that I'm afraid. I just don't want to cause unnecessary problems. Also remember what our mission is. Swish. Just then, Kurenai and Kakashi appeared in front of them and blocked their way. Then, can you tell me what your mission is? Srank missing Nin, Ichihar Atachi. While speaking, Kakashi had already raised the forward protector and watched Atachi vigilantly. Mr. Atachi. It seems that people in this village are not very welcoming to you. Kissum, who was carrying Samahada, grinned. Kakashi was unmoved, still watching Ichiharitachi warily. In the face of a person who can kill his family at the age of 13, he cannot be careless. Our mission. We are here for the son of the fourth Hokage. Itachi's voice was indifferent, but unknowingly revealed key information. Koronai's pupils constricted. It was for Naruto. She thought it was Sasuke or Natsuo that she had come for. Kakashi, Kurenai, please step back. I don't want to kill you. It should be us who said this. They are in Kanoha now. Kurenai didn't like Itachi because of what he did to the Ichiha clan. And now he was ignoring her and Kakashi which made her even more angry. Kissum was already a little impatient, and now the three of them didn't pay attention to him. Remember, my name is Hoshigaki Kissum. Kissum's hands were sealed, and the calm lake was restless. Water release. Water dragon bullet technique. Almost at the same time, Kakashi launched the same technique as Kissum, and they collided with each other. So this is the copy ninja. Interesting. Kissum's eyes showed excitement. Demonic illusion. Tree binding death Kurenai also took the opportunity to attack Itachi. At the same time, an ancient tree with roots grew behind Itachi, and the branches that spread out bound him firmly. Kurenai's body emerged silently from the tree trunk, 
holding a kunai in her hand. It's over, Ichiha Atachi. A hint of surprise flashed in her red eyes. The process went surprisingly smoothly. However, in the next moment, she found out that it was herself who was bound in the tree. This is illusion rebound. Koronai's heart was terrified, and the illusion bounced back, which could only be achieved if the illusions of both sides were not at the same level. How strong is Ichiha Atachi's illusion? Use illusions on me who possessed the Sharingan Atachi shook his head. Then Atachi slowly pulled out a kunai, not at all worried about the illusion breaking. Seeing the kunai getting closer and closer to her neck, Kurinai bit her lip hard and finally freed herself from the illusion using pain. As a result, in reality, Atachi's kunai is still approaching. In desperation, Kurinai was barely able to dodge the attack, but her long hair was still cut off. Atachi was relentless, he kicked Kurinai hard, and she fell into the river. Kurinai. Kakashi felt a little anxious when he saw Kurinai injured. Meanwhile, Kisum took advantage of his distraction to attack him with the Samahada. Kurinai struggled to stand above the water using her chakra. But before she could stabilize herself, Atachi's voice came from behind. That's it. Just as Kurinai closed his eyes in resignation and was about to accept death, a very familiar voice came from behind her. As soon as you came back, you made such a big noise, as expected of you Itachi. When she opened her eyes and looked behind her, she realized that Natsuo was standing behind her, holding the kunai that Itachi was about to stab. Natsuo we meet again. Itachi also recognized the person in front of him. It was Natsuo who had taken over the Ichiha clan. Whenever Itachi thinks about Kanoha, other than Sasuke, he most often thinks about Natsuo. Not because of how deep his feelings are, but because he was the only one besides Sasuke who survived the clan massacre. Mr. Itachi, do you know this guy? Kisum saw Itachi stop and abandon Kakashi and came to him. The five formed a confrontation situation. On one side, Natsuo was the leader, and on the other side, it was Itachi. Be careful of his illusions, Koronai just got caught. Kakashi reminded, looking at Kisum with dread. Ichiha Natsuo, leader of the Ichiha clan, was hiding his strength until the recent attack on Kanoha, where he managed to stop Shukaku's tail beast ball. Itachi briefly introduced Natsuo, making Kisum a little surprised. Natsuo spoke calmly. That's just a small achievement compared to your actions. Being able to kill everyone in the clan, even your parents. As expected of the number one filial son in the shinobi world, the words are full of irony. Itachi felt a pain in his heart, but his face remained calm and replied, I only did it to test my ability, and let Sasuke awaken the same eyes as me, only then will I have an opponent. Natsuo, as a member of the Achiha clan if you can't even understand this, you are not worthy of standing in front of me. Itachi can only pretend again and then told them, you guys retreat now, I can pretend that nothing happened, stop your nonsense. I've wanted to beat you up for a long time. Natsuo got tired of his performance, so he decided to end this fast directly. He had already secretly made a seal with one hand and performed ninjutsu in seconds. Water release. Water dragon bullet technique. The current begins to riot and a giant water dragon appeared, heading towards Itachi and Kisum with great momentum. There I go. Kisum is excited. He hasn't encountered such a strong water release in a long time. Water release. Water bullet technique. After Kisum released the ninjutsu, the powerful torrent of water directly impacted the water dragon. A mysterious smile appeared on the corner of Natsuo's mouth. Burst. Shadow clone, who was hidden in the water dragon, rushed out and exploded in front of the two of them. The loud explosion caused Kisum to be thrown several meters in a pitiful state and suffer minor injuries. But Atachi was just a clone. It's very easy for you to abandon your teammates, isn't it Atachi? Natsuo looked at a tree on the shore, and Atachi's figure also appeared there. Only then did Kakashi and Koronai realize where Atachi was. I believe in Kisum's strength, that's why I let him face you alone. Kisum, who was a little dissatisfied, doubted his explanation. Just as he was about to continue, Atachi stopped him. If this drags on it could affect our plan, so let me do it. As he spoke, Itachi's pupils transformed into the Manjekyo Sharingan, and Kakashi immediately went on guard. Tsukuyomi. Natsuo had no intention of resisting at all. His consciousness was pulled directly into Tsukuyomi's space. In fact, with Natsuo's current mental power, even without using his Manjekyo Sharingan, he can forcibly resist the power of Itachi's Tsukuyomi. It's just that he wanted to see the difference between his own and Itachi's Tsukuyomi space. In a blink of an eye, his body was tied to a wooden stake, and Itachi stood in front of him with a kunai. This is a space that is completely controlled by me. 
Even if three days have passed here, in the real world only a second has passed. Natsuo, I hope you can bear the pain that continues in silence. Natsuo was unmoved and looked at the entire space before shaking his head regretfully. It's all the same boring, no different. Forget it, I'm tired of playing. Before Ichiharitachi could figure out what Natsuo meant, he realized that his pupils had also changed to Manjekyo Sharingan. Then, the entire Tsukuyomi space shattered. Oh, the side effects of the illusion backlash made Ichiha Atachi cry out in pain. Kisum quickly supported him. Mr. Atachi, are you alright? I'm fine. Ichiha Atachi said reluctantly, covering his left eye. Let's go, my illusion has been devoured. Now he has too many doubts in his heart. How come Natsuo has the Manjekyo Sharingan? And why is it stronger than his? Kissum also noticed that the situation had become complicated. So he decided to leave with Itachi immediately. Meanwhile Natsuo made a seal and summoned two shadow clones. Which rushed towards Itachi and Kissum before they could escape. Bringer of Darkness Technique. A deep darkness covered the side of everyone present. Natsuo discovered that many of the techniques developed by Second Hokage were aimed at the Ichiha clan. This technique was born to limit Sharingan's illusion. Itachi frowned slightly. With his Manjekyo Sharingan, he could barely capture Natsuo's movements, which would barely allow him to defend himself. Just as Kisum was about to use full-scale ninjutsu to get out of the Bringer of Darkness Technique's range, Natsuo began his own plan. Tsukuyomi. Kisum's movements froze, and his consciousness fell into the space of illusion. In the illusion space, there was nothing under his feet. Just an infinite emptiness, the feeling of being alone, could drive people crazy. But Kisum's face was not afraid at all, instead he smiled savagely. Is it the same illusion as Mr. Itachi? I've wanted to experience it for a long time. If you think that by trusting Samahada you can escape the illusion, let me tell you, you will be disappointed. Kisum's face changed slightly, Natsuo appeared above the void without warning, and a throne appeared behind him. Natsuo just sat up and looked down at him condescendingly. After you entered the illusion space, Samahada also fell into illusion. Hoshigaki Kisum, an S-class missing nin from Kurigika, defected after trying to overthrow the land of water government, and assassinate numerous influential figures in power. Kissum didn't flinch, all this information is public, anyone who wants to find it can do so. But what was said next shook his heart. For the sake of the mission, you have to keep killing your companions. Your life must be very hard, right? These familiar words reminded him of someone involuntarily. The Kinoichi who smiled and invited him to have a meal together before the mission, but was killed by his own hands in the end. This was the last word the other party left him. Also from that time, he fell into confusion. The so-called excellent shinobi is nothing but a murderer who betrays his companions. He sacrificed his life for the village, but couldn't find what he was fighting for. How do you know this? Forcing himself to remain calm, Kisum knew that since Natsuo didn't act immediately, he must have another purpose for bringing him here. Kissum, I appreciate you. You have worked hard for so many years to create a world without falsehood. But did you ever know that all this is false in itself? And even the man who calls himself a Chihamadara is just a pawn. Natsuo stepped off the throne and came to Kissum's side. The words he said made Kissum unable to stay calm anymore. His reason for joining the Akatsuki organization was his hatred towards this world filled with falsehood and betrayal everywhere. As long as the Nine-Tailed Beasts are captured, the Tsuki no Mi project can be executed, completely reshaping the world. This is what he has been fighting for. But now Natsuo said that all this was false. He just went from one lie to another. Kissum suddenly felt that the world was not worth it, and the world was always full of malice towards him. A smile spread across Natsuo's face, and his voice sounded very illusory. Do you want to find the meaning of your life? Do you want to be able to really live? Kissum calmed down quickly. Why should I believe everything you say, even if what you just said is true? How can I be sure that your path is not one full of lies and betrayal? Natsuo's smile didn't change. You can rely on your own eyes to confirm everything I said in the future. There's nothing more real than your own experience. Kissum's heart moved a little, but he still asked, what about the price? There is no goodwill for no reason in the world. What is Natsuo's purpose? Why are you so serious? Natsuo waved his hand. I just think you're a qualified person and I want you to work for me. After all, there are not many people in the entire shinobi world who are as honest as you. Kiss him. However, this is a condition that he cannot refuse. Since he has the opportunity to get closer to the so-called truth, he is not afraid even if his body is shattered. As long as you can prove that what you said is right, it doesn't matter if I give you my life. As expected of a pure shinobi, Kissum made a decision without the slightest hesitation. Natsuo also smiled brightly. No problem. Whatever you want to know, feel free to ask. Kissum thought for a while. 
then raised his head and looked at Natsuo firmly. I want to know the true purpose of the Eye of the Moon plan, and the identity of Ichiha Madara. Three hours later in Tsukiyomi space, Kisum's worldview was smashed to pieces, and then reshaped a little bit. So, Project Tsuki no Mi is just an illusion to immerse everyone in a false world created by Ichiha Madara, Akirabito. After so many twists and turns, Project Tsuki no Mi turned out to be fake. Okay, what else do you want to ask? Natsuo spoke for more than three hours, and even he felt tired from the sight of the infinite void of Tsukiyomi space. Kissum thought for a moment and shook his head. Not for now, but I will verify everything you said. If what Natsuo said was true, then his life belonged to him. That's good. Natsuo smiled, and a kunai appeared in his hand, then several clones surrounded Kissum. To avoid any type of suspicion, we have to be as careful as possible. Kissum started to panic. Actually, my acting ability is not bad. It's not necessary, ah. Uh. The reality, an instant later, Kissum fell to his knees in pain, his shark-like face contorting. Kissum, Atachi also sensed the change on Kissum's side, and complained inwardly. I'm a Kanoha spy. Why do you hit so hard? But he couldn't say those words, so he had to use his last resort. Susanu. A huge red skeleton emerged, dispelling the darkness. A skeleton arm stretched out and grabbed Kissum from the ground. Atachi took the opportunity to use fire release. Great fireball technique, blocking Natsuo's attack, and then escaped. Kakashi wanted to chase, but was stopped by Natsuo. Don't worry about them, go see Naruto first. Kakashi remembered Itachi's words from just now and hurriedly left. He also has to report today's intelligence to the two advisors without delay. Only Koronai and Natsuo were left at the scene. Are you okay? Seeing Koronai's bruised red arm, Natsuo used the mystical palm technique to treat her, and soon the bruise disappeared. Koronai stared at Natsuo who was treating her carefully. Natsuo said with concern, How are you feeling, honey? The wounds are not serious but it is better to treat them as soon as possible. Koronai looked gratefully at Natsuo. Thank you for saving me, my hero. As Natsuo finished treating the wounds, he said, You're welcome, honey. Don't worry, you'll be fine in no time. Koronai with a suggestive look and a mischievous smile said, You know, after a rescue like that, I think I deserve something special today. Something exclusive. Natsuo was a little surprised at Koronai's flirtatious smile and insinuation. Natsuo raised an eyebrow and said with a mischievous smile. Exclusive, you say? I have a couple of options, but I think I know what you mean. Koronai said as she approached. Yes, I want your exclusive attention today. I don't want to share you with your other wives. Oh. Honey, you're a constant temptation. Are you sure you want to deal with me alone tonight? Kurenai replied. I think I can handle it. Natsuo leans towards her, a mix of amusement and desire in her gaze. So, it'll be a interesting night. A forest outside the town. Atachi fled here with Kissum, and seeing that Natsuo did not catch up with them, he dispersed the Susanoo. Although it was only used for a short period of time, there was also a piercing pain in his body. Atachi-sama. Are you okay? Kissum was panting heavily, supporting his body with Samahada, cursing Natsuo constantly in his heart. It's no big deal. We have to abandon the mission about the Nine Tails. Now we have to go back and tell the leader what happened. Atachi felt a little relieved Akatsuki wouldn't be going after the Nine Tails Jinchuriki for a while. But Kissum, uncharacteristically, did not listen to his advice. Atachi-sama, we are so embarrassed today because of Natsuo. Wait for me to recover for a few days and I will take revenge on Kanoha before returning. No. Atachi's face changed, and he said almost subconsciously. He immediately realized that his performance had been a bit exaggerated, and returned to his indifferent face. It is certain that the people of Kanoha will now be alert to intruders. If you return you may find yourself surrounded by enemies. I used to be a Karigaka Anbu, so I have no problem seeking revenge on the few remaining members of the Achiha clan in Kanoha. Kissum was unmoved. That won't work either. Atachi collapsed in his heart. Why did everything end like this? Now Kissum wants to seek revenge against the Achiha clan. What if he ends up attacking Sasuke? Everything about the Achiha clan belongs to me, so you can't touch them. Deliberately emphasizing it, Atachi walked towards the distance. They can't stay in the land of fire anymore. God knows what trouble they might encounter if they stay. Kissum must stay away from Kanoha. What Atachi couldn't see was that behind him, Kissum showed a playful smile. Residents of the Achiha clan, in the dim light of the bedroom, the soft light of the candles danced on the walls, coloring the room with warm, golden tones. Kuranai sat on the edge of the bed, her short skirt rising slightly, as Natsuo approached her with an intense gaze. His lips met hers in a kiss that was like a burning whisper, his strong hands holding her face tenderly. 
The rustling sound of silk brushing against her skin, mingled with the calm rhythm of her labored breathing, an echo of the tension building between them. The deep, dark tones of the bedroom enhanced the intimacy of the moment, creating a separate world where only the two of them existed. Koronai closed her eyes, letting her senses flood with sensations. She shivered slightly as she felt Natsuo's hands slide under her blouse, seeking the warmth of her skin. His fingers explored with a gentle touch, caressing the softness of her stomach, a journey that awakened pleasurable sensations. The atmosphere was filled with barely audible whispers, the rubbing of the fabric against her skin, her contented sigh as she felt her breasts being caressed with passion. Natsuo, giving in to desire, ripped the blouse without breaking it completely, revealing suggestive nudity. The rustle of her torn fabric mixed with the rapid beating of her hearts, creating a private melody in the middle of the room. Kora and I felt a surge of emotions. The contact of Natsuo's lips on her skin unleashed a cascade of sensations that ran through her body, a dance of caresses that ignited the fire of their shared passion. Kora and I pushed Natsuo onto the bed. A playful smile graced her face as she folded the hem of her skirt, transforming it into a suggestive belt. That showed off the curves of her body as she sat on it. Kora and I felt intoxicated by the tension-filled atmosphere, a tingle of anticipation running through her body as she settled on top of Natsuo. With a hasty gesture, she removed the last piece of clothing that prevented their connection. Kora and I, with a mixture of longing and expectation, bit her lip lightly as she lowered her hips, a dance of emotions in her gaze as tension and desire intertwined within her. In the darkness of the bedroom, the atmosphere was permeated with a palpable intimacy. Kora and I was on top of Natsuo, a fiery embrace uniting them tightly. Her labored breathing and glances full of complicity spoke of a shared desire and a deep connection. The silence was filled with barely audible whispers, the touch of their bodies, the rapid beating of their hearts. Cora and I let out a shaky breath, an echo of the pleasure that coursed through her being, as she gently lay down on Natsuo's chest, exhausted but completely given over to the intimate moment they had shared. In the dim light of the bedroom, the atmosphere was charged with an intimate connection between Cora and I and Natsuo. With a playful gesture, he hugged her, and, in one smooth motion, they rolled together. A sincere laugh escaped her lips as she found herself beneath him, a moment of complicity that added warmth to the moment. The rustles of silk and the faint sound of her shared breathing intertwined in the air. Burning desire flowed between them as he moved gently, seeking to make the experience more exciting. With a playful touch, Natsuo took a bottle of wine and spread some over Kurinai's skin, tracing a tantalizing path from her neck to her chest. The atmosphere was filled with the intoxicating aroma, adding a sensual nuance to the atmosphere, as Natsuo explored the contours of Kurinai's softness, each caress igniting the passion between them. With increasingly faster movements, Natsuo sought to deepen the connection they shared. They embraced each other passionately, letting desire grow in the warmth of their union. Their lips met in a passionate kiss before they took a brief pause, breathing deeply into each other. Natsuo forcefully turned Kurinai, continuing their intimate connection. The barely audible whispers of her breath filled the room, mixing with the rapid beating of her heart. A moment of ecstasy was reflected on Kurinai's face as she, with a suppressed sigh, experienced pleasure beyond words. Natsuo held her as she surrendered to the intensity of the moment. After a pause, Natsuo had her turn on her side, allowing them to maintain the connection as he slid into her with passion. Natsuo's passionate caresses on Kurinai's breasts added a nuance of complicity and desire to his encounter with her. A sigh of ecstasy escaped Kurinai's lips as her pleasure washed over her, manifesting in a moment of complete surrender and connection with Natsuo. Natsuo then gently turned Kurinai's face as she stood with her back to him. Their gazes met, their lips touching in a soft dance of tongues that expressed the deep connection between them. They shared intimate moments throughout the night until Kurinai passed out from exhaustion. A few days later, Kinoha Gate. Looking at the familiar yet unfamiliar place, Sune took a deep breath. This is the village that her grandfather built, the dream of her younger brother. And today, the purpose of his return is to become Hokage and confront the bastard Natsuo. Kinoha, I'm back. One of the Sanan, Kanova's slug princess Tsunade, had returned. This news has undoubtedly calmed the growing undercurrents in Kanoha. Some people are excited for her return, and other people can only grit their teeth in hatred towards her, although Tsunade has miraculously brought a daughter. But the position of Hokage has never relied on a healthy personal life, but on real power and prestige that surpasses countless others. And Tsunade is obviously the most advantageous competitor for the position of Hokage. With the blood of the first Hokage and second Hokage flowing in her, if she hadn't left Kanoha on her own during the fourth Hokage's election, and had participated in the election instead, then the position of the fourth Hokage might not have fallen to Namika's Minato. From this perspective, the deaths of Nawaki and Dan have many questionable points. The Senju clan's background was too strong for a one-eyed old man who was going crazy, 
wanting to be Hokage. So after Tsunade arrived in Kanoha, almost everyone supported her, pushing her towards the position of Hokage. They talked to her about giving her daughter a bright future, hiring the best nanny in the land of fire full time to take care of her. They also mentioned to her about how, after becoming Hokage, she could use the power of the village to better protect her daughter. After a long series of words, Tsune finally accepted the position of Hokage. Or rather, she never intended to refuse in the first place after all. This village was protected by the first Hokage and second Hokage at the cost of their lives. Now she was needed to set things right however, after a series of complex inauguration ceremonies, Tsune did not immediately deal with the attacks from the Kumogaka and Sunagaka. Instead, without hesitation, he opened the intelligence database and began searching for the information about Natsuo. Tsune looked at report after report, after reading all the information about Natsuo, the anger she had been holding back erupted within her. Without hesitation, she smashed open the window and headed straight to the Achiha residence with determined steps. Bang! Tsune kicked fiercely, breaking the door of the Achiha clan residence into pieces. Her eyes were filled with anger. Natsuo, die, you bastard. The base of the root. Crash. Danzo, who was still recovering from his injuries, pushed away the teacup in front of him and cursed angrily. Since you left the village, you should never have come back. Why do you want to go back and fight for the Hokage seat with the old man? Now that both Tsunade and Orochimaru had left the village, and Jiraiya does not want to be Hokage, sooner or later the position would belong to him. Unexpectedly, within a few days, Jiraiya brought her back. This shattered his Hokage dream again. Jiraiya in the dark room, Danzo's wailing like a ghost was heard. Land of Rain, Ichiha, Itachi and Kisum have returned to Akatsuki's base. When they saw the embarrassed appearance of the two, some of the members who stayed at the base all showed expressions of surprise. Katsu Katsu, isn't this Itachi? A simple task and you ended up like this. Didaro is enjoying Itachi's misfortune a little. He disliked Ichiha Itachi's arrogant demeanor the most. However, Itachi was unmoved. I met a more troublesome opponent and suffered a loss. Is it from Kanoha? An indifferent voice came, and everyone followed the voice and looked. It was Pain. The purple Rinnegan stared at Ichiha Itachi. Pain was also curious. In the existing information, it seems that the current Kanoha has no one who can make them suffer. Something must have gone wrong. While gathering information about the Nine Tails Jinchuriki, we encountered Ichiha Natsuo. Itachi said softly, Conan, who had been silent, also raised his head. Pain's expression changed a little. Ichiha Natsuo, according to Kakuzu's information he is strong, but he shouldn't be able to defeat both of them. But Itachi gently shook his head. He possesses the Manjekyo Sharingan, and apparently his illusions are more powerful than mine. Hearing this, everyone present was shocked. Apparently he was hiding more than we thought, he is a master of several powerful ninjutsu and forbidden techniques, in addition to possessing the Manjekyo Sharingan. Itachi said the information, and everyone's eyes flickered. In Kanoha, there is no shortage of geniuses at any time. Sasori's rough voice was heard among the group. Pain also stopped considering Natsuo alone with an employer without any strength. But that's all. In his eyes, even the most talented ninja would not be the opponent of God. The crowd dispersed, and Kissam returned to his room. It's just that there is already a man in a vortex mask waiting for him. Seeing this person, Kissam was not surprised at all, but his eyes became playful. Is what Achiha Atachi said true? The masked man, Abito, said in a low voice. He suspected that Atachi had other purposes for returning to Kanoha this time. But fortunately he had placed a spy beside Atachi. Although he already knew that Natsuo was hiding his strength, but the news that he possesses the Manjekyo Sharingan made him a little worried. Only those who personally possess the Manjekyo Sharingan know what terrifying force it can bestow. Of course. Kissam grinned. Atachi Sama and I were stopped by copy ninja Kakashi and another Kanofa Kinochi as soon as we entered Kanoha and then that guy defeated us. After speaking, Kissam carefully observed the only Sharingan that the mask revealed. And although they were small, he perceived changes. Kissam began to laugh in his mind. Ichiha Abito, you make my job very easy to confirm some of the things that Natsuo told me. Tsunade Sama. What a surprise, Natsuo said. He looked up and saw Tsunade who couldn't contain her anger and fiercely threw a punch at Natsuo's face. He raised his hand and easily caught Tsunade's full power blow. Bastard. Tsunade's eyes burned with anger. You are stronger than cage level, you really are good at pretending, Tsunade said sarcastically. Being able to casually block her punch like that, Natsuo was obviously not as simple as an ordinary cage level. In the end, she still didn't know how to feel about what happened. She feels great frustration about the situation, as well as deep anger towards Natsuo. But she also feels pain and sadness since her daughter, and being back in Kanoha, remind her of the people 
she lost in the past like her brother and Kato Dan. Well, circumstances forced me to do it. Natsuo responded relaxed and unconcerned about what was to come. Internally he was surprised. But he was not intimidated by Tsunade's unleashed fury. Well, Tsunade, although I'm glad for your visit. I don't think it's good for the new Hokage to break into the Achiha clan like this. Natsuo said with a smile. Tsunade who was going through a series of emotions at this moment, shouted, Natsuo, don't you dare speak so flippantly. You know perfectly well why I'm here. Don't tell me you've forgotten what you've done. A pair of fists fiercely smashed over. Natsuo sighed helplessly, even though the great ninja war had already begun. Why was this Hokage still so idle? Tsunade threw punches with both fists, each punch carrying a gust of wind, and just one punch was enough to seriously injure an elite jonin. Natsuo defended himself while retreating. Fight back. Tsunade shouted angrily as she continued to strike. You had the guts to take advantage of me while I was drunk, but you don't have the guts to fight back. Natsuo could only smile helplessly. Although he was innocent, he was still in the wrong. How could he possibly fight back in a situation like this? You won't fight back. Huh? Tsunade's eyes narrowed. All right, then I'll just kill you today. With that, she became even more ferocious in her attacks. Natsuo's eyes narrowed. Although he felt responsible for what happened to Tsunade, that doesn't mean she can go too far. Natsuo said to himself, It seems that I must show some strength, otherwise Tsunade will not be able to calm down, and this situation may get out of control. And so bang, 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 bang. Their figures intertwined, fists hitting flesh. The more Tsune fought, the more excited she became, as if she wanted to vent all the anger, frustration, shame, guilt, pain and sadness that she had accumulated during her year of pregnancy. Seeing her like this, Natsuo decided to first let her vent, so he only focused on stopping and evading her attacks, retreating step by step. The main residence of the Achiha clan was being destroyed by Tsunade's strong blows. The earth was cracking, covered in the footprints left by Tsunade's footsteps. Trees, flower beds, and buildings, all turned into ruins. Fortunately, the Achiha clan had a large estate with plenty of space, otherwise they would have ended up attacking someone else's home. Tsunade suddenly leaped up towering above and fiercely threw a punch. However, in the next second, her expression changed. Not good. Perhaps the noise here was too loud. Anko, holding her little son, curiously peeked out from behind the wall. But this position happened to be near Tsunade's attack. Although it didn't hit her directly, even the residual force from the battle was not something a baby could resist. Tsunade quickly restrained her power. Although she wanted to vent her emotions by hitting Natsuo, that didn't mean she wanted to harm others because of it, much less a baby. And at this moment Natsuo's expression became serious, his pupils suddenly changed. Susanu's figure quickly appeared and stood directly in front of Anko. Bang. Tsunade's punch heavily struck Susanu. However, Susanu didn't even sway and directly withstood this punch. Anko, what are you doing here? Natsuo frowned. It's okay if you're curious. But bringing a baby, do you really think that with all this commotion, this is a safe place? All right, I'll leave now. Anko stuck out her tongue knowing that she had made a big mistake by accident. In fact, she had already received Natsuo's notification saying, don't come near, no matter what noise you hear. But she couldn't resist her curiosity, especially when she heard that the fifth Hokage was coming with the appearance of catching a bastard. Her inner spirit couldn't help but stir, completely forgetting that she still had a baby in her arms. She is probably the most fearless mother of the Achiha clan. That her son could survive safely until now, he was considered to be a child favored by heaven. Anko quickly ran away, knowing from Natsuo's expression that he was truly angry with her this time. Seeing her leave, Natsuo tried to calm down, and then turned his head to look at Tsunade, his eyes flickering with a dangerous light. Hokage-sama, it seems you've been a bit too reckless, maybe I should spank you hard to make you behave. Tsunade, she suddenly felt a sense of danger. Just as she was about to take action, suddenly, she met Natsuo's eyes. The next second, she felt dizzy. And before she could react, her body was firmly grabbed. Natsuo's patience had run out at this point. He understood Tsunade's anger, so he had been giving in all along. But that didn't mean he was going to let her continue like this as long as she wanted. Furthermore, she is a medical nin. If she had not wanted to have the child, she would have been able to take action right after the incident. But now that her rampage almost involved his son, although much of it is Enko's fault, it's time to stop this charade. So Natsuo directly used the Jinjutsu. Shuringen, taking advantage of the moment when Tsunade was suppressed by the Jinjutsu, he rushed forward and tightly bound her. Tsunade quickly regained consciousness from the Jinjutsu, her face full of anger. You have a lot of nerve daring to attack the Hokage. Not only do I dare to attack the Hokage, 
I dare to do other things too. Natsuo snorted. Hokage-sama should be careful, don't beg for mercy later. Beg for mercy Tsunade seemed to have heard a particularly funny joke. Are you talking about me? Do you think the esteemed Hokage would beg for mercy from you? Natsuo, how would you know if you don't try? Tsunade, delusional. Natsuo, very good. I hope you can maintain that attitude until the end. Saying that, he carried Tsunade into the bedroom. Wait, what do you want to do? Tsunade became a little panicked and shouted angrily. Bastard, let me go. One hour later, you dare to attack the Hokage. It's treason, I will kill you. Two hours later, kid, I will definitely kill you. Kill you. Three hours later, Dan evil Achiha. Grandfather was right. When Achiha Itachi was killing people back then, how could he forget about you? Five hours later, damn it. Are you a beast? Ten hours later, Yutatane Kaharu, Mitakado Hamura, Jiraiya, Kikashi, and others wanted to see Tsunade urgently, but they didn't see her at all. They waited for a long time and did not see Tsunade return, so they actively followed Tsunade's footsteps and tracked her to the Achiha clan residence. When they were about to enter the main residence of the Achiha clan, they heard the sounds of gasping and stifled moans. The sound was melodious and pleasant everyone. After a while Tsunade met the people who came to look for her at the Achiha clan residence. Tsunade was so upset her teeth were gnashing. But after her daughter was born, she had also considered this situation so although she felt various emotions towards Natsuo, such as anger, it was more of a superficial resistance. Deep down in her heart she had accepted Natsuo. Although she wouldn't admit it easily, but when she felt Natsuo's gaze, she instinctively stepped back while saying to herself, this was too much. Fighting for 10 hours straight. Is this guy an animal? Who wouldn't panic when facing such an enemy? However, as Hokage, she finally forced himself to maintain a dignified and elegant demeanor. Looking at Natsuo from a high position and said, you have great fighting strength and, in this war, please serve Kenora well, and don't do anything like hide your true strength. Do you understand, leader of the Achiha clan? Natsuo said nodding. Ah uh, yes, yes, everything Hokage-sama said is correct. I was petty before. Tsunade was still feeling uncomfortable with the situation, so after discussing some trivial matters, she dismissed Kakashi and the others. Today, she didn't plan to leave, mainly because her body was weak and she felt truly exhausted, and she did not want to continue dealing with the affairs of the village. So she planned to use the excuse of Kanoha village lacks military funds. The fifth Hokage is preparing to have a night-long conversation with the Achiha clan leader, hoping that the Achiha clan can lend a hand to the village. However, after everyone left, her expression changed, and she solemnly spoke to Natsuo. Was it you who took action against the third Hokage? Natsuo smiled faintly, took a sip of tea, and remained silent. I see. Tsunade sighed bitterly. As expected a powerful cage-level expert and the leader of a clan, why would he hide his true strength? How could someone like him not be able to uncover the true situation behind the destruction of his own clan? Almost everyone at the cage level is decisive and ruthless. How could a man like him not have any thoughts after discovering the plan to destroy Kanoha? But I suppose it was his own doing, right? Tsunade sighed lightly. Killing the Hokage is definitely wrong, but you also have to consider the person's identity. As the Hokage, Tsunade has the right to know the true circumstances of the Achiha clan's annihilation. You killed his entire clan, and now he has only killed you. Tsunade can only lament that her own teacher brought this upon himself and cannot live, and then figure out how to use Natsuo's strength to protect the village. After all, she can understand Natsuo's actions towards the third Hokage when the Waki died back Back then, she almost really went after the third Hokage and Danzo. And now, if she weren't the fifth Hokage and couldn't do certain things for the sake of the village, she would directly go after Danzo. Tsunade shook her head, her twin ponytail swaying with her head. Her fine hair carried a captivating fragrance as it scattered in the wind. Tsunade took a deep breath, her eyes no longer filled with anger. Or rather, as the Hokage, Tsunade understands very well what she should do now. Natsuo, the village needs funds. Tsunade said in a deep voice. 10 billion. I won't hold you accountable for what you did before. It is unclear if she is referring to the incident in which Natsuo killed the third Hokage or the incident in which Natsuo imposed himself on her. Tsunade smiled slightly. Tsunade seemed fierce and aggressive, but as the Hokage, she never prioritized personal matters over official duties. In the end, compared to her personal honor and disgrace, she valued the village that the first and second Hokage were proud of more. All right. Natsuo nodded. I will begin to mobilize the funds. But it is too large an amount, so I will give you the funds and parts in a reasonable time. So readily, 
Sune blinked her eyes. She had already made a big demand, and she thought there would be a negotiation. But Natsuo agreed without hesitation. It seems that I underestimated the financial resources of the Ichiha clan. Did I set the price too low? But since they had already agreed, she wouldn't go back on her word. If I still want to obtain funds from the Ichiha clan, is that possible? Tsunade asked tentatively. The village had a large funding gap, including compensation for the ninjas, funds for village reconstruction, and military funding for external walls. Although Kanoha was really rich, but when she took over the village the first thing, she noticed was that the finances were a disaster. She still doesn't know how much is the fault of her master and his group of friends. Natsuo replied, That's possible, but it won't be without conditions. Tsunade asked, What do you want? On behalf of Kanoha, I hope to receive another 10 billion in financial assistance. Natsuo didn't hesitate and said, I want you to bear my child. Tsunade, is he trying to force the Hokage to sell herself? Tsunade, of course did not agree to Natsuo's request. Kanoha hasn't fallen so low as to sell out the Hokage. Tsunade's self-esteem also does not allow her to do such a thing. Well, let's try a different approach. Natsuo blinked his eyes. How about this? If you stay at my house for a day, the Achiha clan will support Kanoha with 100 million Ryu. As long as you don't take the initiative, I won't do anything to you. How about that? Upon hearing this, Tsunade's eyes lit up. So, if I don't initiate it, you won't make a move. Of course. Natsuo said matter-of-factly, You're trying to give me money, aren't you? Tsune burst into laughter. I'll take this bet, that I take the initiative. Natsuo, you must be daydreaming. She may not be able to control others, but can she even control herself? Although it's a bet, can she really lose this bet? Natsuo also knew this very well, but he did intend to give Tsune some money. Mainly because Tsunade is the mother of his child and so far she hasn't received any support from him. The current bet, just like the 10 billion compensation earlier, can be considered as compensation for Tsunade. He even planned to bet a few more times, lose more money to appease his conscience. After chatting for a few more sentences, they went their separate ways. Natsuo had a mindset of just wanting to give money and didn't care about anything else. On the other hand, Tsunade, looking at Natsuo's calm appearance, started to feel a bit uncertain. He shouldn't have any way to make me take the initiative, right? Tsunade thought for a moment. No, that can't be, can it? What can he do to shake my determination? This bet has a high chance of winning, so there shouldn't be any problems. As long as she didn't agree, the situation would be a guaranteed victory. Wouldn't the winning rate be 100%? But considering her strange gambling luck, Tsunade felt a bit anxious. Maybe I should play it safe. Tsunade pondered for a moment and called her secretary, Shizun. Shizun, bring me my medicine bag. Tsunade Sama, what do you need it for? Shizun asked curiously. Tsunade whispered, I'm planning to drug Natsuo. Ah, Tsunade Sama, why do you suddenly want to? Shizun panicked. Last time, Tsunade was a victim of the effects of drugs. Why are you thinking about drugging someone again? Shizun, you don't understand. Tsunade whispered, did you know that after a man has an orgasm, he has a refractory period. In theory, as long as Natsuo is in his refractory period, my bet with him will be absolutely safe. Even if Natsuo really has some means to make her take the initiative as long as he is in his refractory period, those means will have no effect at all. This is a double insurance. Tsunade praised her own cleverness. You make it sound like it makes sense. Shizun pondered for a moment and said, I'll prepare it for you. Good, when it's time for dinner, I'll find an opportunity to drug Natsuo. This round of gambling will be a guaranteed victory. Tsunade also had a determined look on her face. Gambling against me, Tsunade. Natsuo, you're still too young. Soon it was time for dinner. Various delicacies and exquisite ingredients are served on the table. Tsunade and Shizun silently swallow their saliva. Although the Senju clan's wealth is not inferior to the Ichiha clan, the problem is that Tsunade has already lost it all. They now owe a large sum of money. Although they have no worries about food and drink and traveling is also easy for them, they can forget about eating these precious delicacies and rare ingredients. Their appetites are instantly aroused, and they enter a ravenous mode. But the Echeha clan's generosity goes beyond just abundant food. This is the famous Katsura Crown, a specialty liquor from the land of rivers. Tsunade's eyes light up. It is said to incorporate the fragrance of the Katsura tree leaves unique to the land of rivers into the liquor, making it the finest sake. Yes, indeed. Natsuo nods. Consider it a gift for Hokage-sama. After all, the Ichiha clan has offended Hokage-sama in many ways. I hope Hokage-sama can forgive us. This also includes Natsuo's apology. 
Tsunade's heart is instantly moved, because of her pregnancy and the crying of her child, she hasn't had a good drink in a long time. Now is the perfect time to satisfy her craving for alcohol. Tsunade immediately takes action. Shizune is also the same. How could Tsunade, a petty woman, let her loyal follower drink alone? Both of them have been craving alcohol for a long time. They start drinking heavily. Meanwhile, Natsuo sips his drink slowly, one small cup at a time. Drinking alcohol is a big taboo when trying to conceive, and he rarely touches a drop of alcohol on normal days. However, since it's a way to make amends, he decided to accompany her and drink a little less. Tsunade started drinking heavily as a form of revenge, not even bothering to eat, and started chugging straight from the bottle. Shizune, who does not have a high tolerance for alcohol, was the first to get drunk. Tsunade soon became dazed as well. Oh, oh, right. I still need to drug Natsuo. Tsunade tried to maintain some clarity and started taking action. But she only ended up drinking another glass of alcohol. Huh. Why does this alcohol taste strange, like it's medicated? And then Natsuo noticed that Tsunade suddenly got closer to him. Natsuo. Tsunade blushed, the esteemed Hokage herself, had made such a serious mistake. She accidentally drugged her own drink. It's all because Ichiha's alcohol is too good. Natsuo, you despicable person. No, this won't do. Kanoha is in urgent need of funds. So I must take advantage of Natsuo's mistake and make a fortune. Of course, as a dignified cage level expert, I will never repeat the same mistake. Shizune, I'll leave the drugging to you this time. Tsunade said seriously. Shizune also vowed earnestly, yes, Lady Tsunade, I will do my best. Tsune continued to eat and drink excessively. Since she had entrusted the drugging to Shizune, her only responsibility was to keep Natsuo's attention. And so, after three rounds of drinking, Shizune should have taken action by now. Natsuo, let's see what chance you have to win against me this time. In the midst of confusion, Tsune maintained a hint of gambler's pride in her heart. In a game where victory was certain, how could I, Tsunade, have a reason to lose? Then she took a sip of her drink and realized after swallowing it that something was off. Hum, this taste doesn't seem right oh my god. Did Shizune trick me? Tsunade mustered all her strength to turn her head and found Shizune already heavily intoxicated. And she herself was also quite drunk. And so, Natsuo discovered another warm and fragrant body in his embrace. Natsuo, damn it. Why am I so unlucky? Tsunade's face turned red with anger, even suppressing the flush on her face. I'm sorry, Lady Tsunade, I accidentally made a mistake. Shizune said with a face full of shame. But this was also inevitable. Shizune's strength was already inferior to Natsuo's. So if she wanted to drug him in front of Natsuo, she naturally had to wait until he was a bit drunk. But since Tsunade was already showing signs of being drunk, Shizune had naturally also had quite a few drinks. In addition, Tsunade herself had to focus on keeping Natsuo's attention and creating opportunities for Shizune. So she naturally couldn't devote too much energy to Shizune's side. Who could have expected that Shizune would actually make a mistake with the wine bottle and end up drugging Tsunade? Tsunade discovered the crux of the problem. Actually, if I think carefully, without the assistance of drugs, as long as I have a strong will, I won't be the one taking the initiative at all. It was because I initially wanted to be foolproof that I ended up being clumsy and creating a huge loophole. The battle continues on the next day during dinner. Tsunade let loose this time eating and drinking freely. Anyway, I won't drug you anymore. Can you still make me fall for it? But after three rounds of drinks after Tsunade finished a glass of wine, she felt a familiar taste again. Why? Why is it like this? Tsunade became angry and began to investigate the problem. She quickly caught the culprit Ringo Amari. Why did you drug me? Tsunade's face was full of anger. Did you plan this with Natsuo? Plan. Ringo was puzzled and said strangely, No, I was just helping you guys. Earlier, you took drugs to create an opportunity with Natsuo, right? Well, considering that you treated me before, I definitely wanted to help you. Natsuo was too lazy to care about Tsunade and Shizune's actions. One way or another he wouldn't lose out. Even if by some divine luck they managed to give him some drug with the sage body nothing would happen to him. Besides Natsuo, another person who noticed the actions of the two drunk women was Amayuri. After thinking about it, Amayuri believed that it must be because Tsunade was too proud to admit that she wanted to be with Natsuo. So she deliberately used medicine as an excuse. Although Amayuri herself thinks that Tsunade is a formidable cage level expert, making excuses is really embarrassing and not decisive enough. But she feels grateful to Tsunade and Shizune for their medical treatment, and she feels guilty for accidentally causing trouble for Tsunade at that time. She decides to take the initiative to create an opportunity for her life-saving benefactor. Why are you blaming me instead? Amayori feels very wrong. What the hell did you help me with? Tsunade's anger rose as she drank, 
She almost wanted to take action. If Amayori wasn't pregnant, she would probably have started hitting people already. Amayori also opened her mouth in confusion after hearing Tsunade's words. This is during dinner the next day, although what happened yesterday was a misunderstanding on Amayori's part, but since Tsunade made her stance clear, there will definitely be no problem this time. However, unlike the previous special meal prepared specifically to entertain Hokage-sama, today's food was made by Yukino and a few wives who love cooking. As wives, although their culinary skills cannot compare to those of professional chefs in hotels, how can a housewife let her husband not taste the food she cooked? Therefore, although the Achiha clan employs high-level chefs every few days, Natsuo's wives will perform a cooking with love. Tsunade and Shizun are determined to prepare for today's battle. This time, there will definitely be no accidents, Tsunade said firmly. But as soon as she picked up her chopsticks, huh, why doesn't this dish taste right? Tsunade cried out, Natsuo, what did you do? Natsuo furrowed his eyebrows and took a shallow taste, and he also realized that something was wrong. He couldn't help but ask Yukino. Yukino, did you make this dish? Did you put something in it? Put something in it? Yukino looked puzzled. No, I didn't. Why would I do that? But I did add some seasoning that Tsune brought, the powder in the small bottle that Shizun brought two days ago. She said it's Tsune's favorite flavor. She doesn't like dishes without these seasonings. Did I do something wrong? Yukino asked timidly. Shizun opened her mouth but couldn't say a word. When Yukino saw the small bottle around her waist, she did say the word seasoning. After all, she couldn't say in front of Natsuo's wife that she and Tsune were planning to drug Natsuo, right? Who would have thought that Yukino actually remembered it? And in order to satisfy Tsunade's taste, she added Tsunade's favorite seasoning. This, but it has to be said that as a product of Tsunade, the medicinal effect is quite good. And so, a family reunion began. Natsuo. After a whole night Tsunade wailed and rolled on the ground. I will never gamble again. I don't want the money anymore. I don't want it. Even Natsuo fell into silence. Even though he came up with a surefire gambling method for Tsunade, and even cooperated with her to prepare to lose money. The result was such a huge victory, yet it still collapsed under the cause and effect law of Tsunade's gambling defeat. Perhaps this woman is naturally unlucky when it comes to money Tsunade finally escaped from the Ichiha clan's residence. Not to mention the agreed gambling afterwards. Even the money from the initial 10 billion Ryo transaction, she didn't want it. This made Natsuo very helpless. He really intended to honestly pay the money and make Tsunade happy. Who could have expected? But it has to be said, Tsunade's body is really weak ahem. Although Tsunade really can't win money, but Natsuo still planned to send a subsidy of 12 billion Ryo. This made Tsunade, who had escaped back to the Hokage Tower in Kanoha, breathe a sigh of relief. Kanoha is really in need of money. It's not bad at all. This helped her a lot. Just why is it 12 billion? Tsunade was a bit confused. 10 billion can still be considered as the previous transaction between herself and Natsuo. So what about the remaining 2 billion? Is it because of what happened at the Echiha clan residence? Tsunade's expression suddenly turned unfriendly. Land of Rain, Amegika, the start of the fourth shinobi world war is inevitable. We just have to watch as all the shinobi villagers attack each other. When they are exhausted, we will collect the nine biju. Abito took a deep breath. This will make our actions much easier. Mem. Pain nodded slightly. The ones who benefit the most from war are mercenaries like them, right? In the original story of the Naruto series, the main reason why the fourth shinobi world war did not start immediately was because of Orochimaru's manipulation. He decisively killed the fourth Kazakage, leaving Sanagaka without a leader and unable to start a war. Since they were unable to start a war, they had no choice but to submit to Kanoha. At that time, Tsunade, who had just taken office, was also decisive. Knowing that Kanoha was weak, he did not take advantage of Sunagaka, preventing them from betraying them again. Instead, she loosened the noose around their necks and improved their political relationship. Her actions turned the strained relationship between Kanoha and Sunagaka, during the Third Hokage era, into a true alliance. Although Kanoha and Sunagaka suffered heavy losses in terms of combat power, after the two major nations formed an alliance, Iwagaka and Kumogaka did not dare to start a war even if they wanted to. Even if they united, it would be the same. Kurigaka was still in a period of internal recovery, and would not take the initiative to act. This delayed the outbreak of the fourth shinobi world war, until Abito and Nagato could no longer bear it, and Akatsuki took the initiative to start the war. In reality, if they could watch their enemies wear each other down, who would be willing to strike first? 
But for now, the scale of the war is still small. Only Kanoha, Sunagaka, and Kumogaka have taken action. Awagaka and Karigaka have not yet moved. Abito squinted his eyes and thought to himself, Perhaps I should add some fuel to the fire. Offspring plus one, the comprehensive potential evaluation is 186. And you have gained chakra plus 16. KK Jankai would release. Yuzumaki Yoko gave birth. With the lineage of the Yuzumaki clan and Natsuo's sage body, the baby's comprehensive potential has increased once again. This reward further complements Natsuo's potential, plus he can now use wood release at the same level as Hashirama. If we don't count the accident with Tsunade, Yoko is probably the woman who has given Natsuo the greatest rewards among his wives. Of course, Yuzumaki Yoko is not the only one giving birth. There are also many Kunochi giving birth, contributing to Natsuo's strength. Furthermore, during this time, with hard training and the help of the restorative potion revival number one, Yukumo's body has finally recovered. Although she is still far behind a Jonin, she is no longer inferior to an average Chunin. Yukumo's face turned red, but there was a gleam of excitement in her eyes. Natsuo-sama, please be gentle yes, leave it to me meanwhile. On the other side, the fourth shinobi world war was in full swing. Although Tsunade had stayed with Natsuo these past few days, she still issued some decrees and replenished the front line with a large amount of manpower. And most of these reinforcements were sent in the direction of Kumogaka. Don't be fooled by the fact that Sanagaka launched the first attack. After occupying a piece of land, they strangely began to build fortresses and improve their defenses, as if they were determined to defend it. The territory they occupied was not very large and posed little threat. But Kumogaka was different. Under the leadership of the fourth Rakage, Kumogaka launched a fierce attack with an extremely rapid offensive. Even elite shinobi like Kakashi who was sent over, was seriously injured. If it weren't for Mike Guy unleashing the seventh gate in a battle and injuring the fourth rakage, their offensive might have been even greater. However, Tsunade's actions have not provided much support to the front line. After all, she has just taken office. On the one hand, she needs to familiarize herself with the functions of the Hokage. And on the other hand, she needs to control the manpower under the control of the previous Hokage, so that she can easily mobilize the overall force of the village. To defend against external threats, one must first ensure internal stability. Although this statement is somewhat biased, it is not without reason. Whether it's Jiraiya or Natsuo, she tightly held onto these trump cards and didn't dare to play any of them. After all, although Kumogaka is very aggressive, it is just the power of a single country. The front line can still hold on, and there is still a chance of victory. At least delaying time is still possible during this time. She used the funds provided by Natsuo to expand her own power while guiding the relationship between Kanoha and the shinobi clans, gradually gaining control over the village. However, as the situation deteriorates bit by bit, she will eventually play the card of a cage-level expert. Jiraiya also knows this, knowing that he may have to go to the battlefield at any time. So he takes advantage of this last moment of peace to take a good look at the new Kanoha. After all, it's been a long time since he last visited the village. Jiraiya takes out a copy of the Kanoha news and reads its contents. An old man was taking a walk and accidentally fell into the nearby river, shouting for help. Two root shinobi pass by, pretending not to see and continued walking while chatting. The old man, in a desperate situation, shouted loudly, overthrow Shimura Danzo. The two root shinobi, upon hearing this, were shocked and quickly jumped into the river, dragging the old man ashore and arresting him. Jiraiya bursts into laughter, slapping his thigh. Ha ha ha. This newspaper is really interesting. It's just like Danzo's style. Since the newspaper is out, there's no need to guess. It must be Natsuo's doing. Of course, it's not just about satirizing Danzo. He didn't hold back when it came to the third Hokage either. Jiraiya looked at it and couldn't help but laugh and shake his head. But the third Hokage shamelessly changed the teaching materials and boasted that he was the strongest Hokage in history. Before, the third Hokage had some prestige and more importantly, he held the power of the Hokage. And now, the esteemed third Hokage was defeated by the fourth Kazakuge. He instantly became known as the most useless Hokage. There are several jokes Jiraiya is almost laughing his head off. It seems that Kanoha has really gained a lot of new and interesting things. Jiraiya wiped away the tears of laughter. So this hermit should also gather some materials. I heard that the Achiha clan's club has a great reputation, excellent service experience, and a proper attitude. Well, I'll go criticize them first. Saying that, he walked towards the Achiha clan's territory. The Achiha clan district is even more prosperous than before. People come and go in an endless stream. Jiraiya headed straight for the entertainment street, where it was even more bustling. This is Jiraiya's main observation target. As a hermit who travels the world, I must thoroughly investigate how decadent these Achiha have become 
and whether they can still serve Kanoha on the battlefield, Jiraiya said with a righteous face. Then he looked around and suddenly found that his eyes were not enough. The Achiha Club is undoubtedly the most famous, but there are also many similar places located in the Achiha clan district. At the entrance of each club, there are two attractive girls standing, charming and alluring, a mischievous smile with endless charm. Jiraiya silently swallowed his saliva, that swaying whiteness was too tempting, and this is just an ordinary storefront. What kind of scene is the Achiha Club, which is regarded as a holy place by countless fans? It's simply disgraceful tarnishing the Achiha clan's reputation. No, 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 as a ninja. I can't make such a simple decision. Hum, I need to go into the club and carefully investigate before making a judgment. Jureya found a reason for himself and forcibly averted his gaze, heading straight for the Echiha club. His time was limited, and he didn't know when Tsunade would call him to the battlefield. If you want to criticize, you should start with the one with the biggest reputation. However, just as he was about to enter the door suddenly, he made eye contact with a fellow fan who was also about to enter the door. Is this the transformation technique? Jureya was taken aback. To visit a club, one must transform. Who is this person? Meanwhile Sasuke, with his transformed appearance, looked strangely at the white-haired old man next to him. I've never seen this face before. He must be a beginner. Are you staring at me to see how I do things? and then imitating a seasoned veteran. Hum, I understand. Sasuke thought about his own embarrassing state when he was brought in by Natsuo, and couldn't help but smile. He suddenly thought of his past self and felt a sense of camaraderie. He grabbed Jiraiya's hand and said, Brother, don't worry. We're men, there's nothing to be shy about. Big Brother will take you to experiment. Saying that, he pulled Jiraiya directly inside. Jiraiya. Jiraiya was dumbfounded. At first, he thought it was a salesperson from a club, and then he thought it was someone pretending to be familiar with him. But when Sasuke paid for everything and acted like a big brother taking his little brother out, Jiraiya finally realized. Was he being treated like a newbie? Jiraiya burst into laughter on the spot. A newbie. I, the mighty pervy sage, have roamed the five great nations clubs, experienced countless styles, conquered thousands of women, and have an immeasurable amount of experience. You think I'm a newbie? You really? You think highly of me, brother? Jiraiya shook Sasuke's hand excitedly. To be honest, this is the first time I've experienced such a wonderful feeling. Right. Sasuke laughed and said in the voice and appearance of a middle-aged man. Let me tell you, Ichiha Club is definitely the best among all service establishments. Indeed. Jiraiya sighed deeply. I have lived for so long and never tried these kinds of activities. It's a pity that time is limited, and so is my energy. Otherwise, I really want to fully experience those projects with names that sound great. Jureya was filled with emotion. He now felt that his decades of romantic experiences were nothing compared to this. No wonder Achiha has such a prestigious reputation. It's because Achiha is really awesome. But brother, why haven't you played? Jureya looked at Sasuke strangely. Is there something inconvenient? The previous entertainment was very fun for him. But this brother by his side well. I have my reasons, Sasuke pondered for a moment, sighed lightly, and shook his head. Although these things are fascinating, I still want to save my first time for the person I love the most, there's no way. Sasuke can't just say that he's trying to stimulate his emotions in order to promote his Sharingan, right? It's easier to be seen as incompetent if he finds other reasons. It's better to find a pure reason even if it's forced. I see. Jiraiya suddenly realized. He has actually had a good impression of Tsunade, but Tsunade has always rejected him. Perhaps if I were more innocent, not flirting with other women, would she have accepted me long ago? However, this does not mean that he is doing it for this reason. With Jiraiya's insight, after such a long time with Sasuke, he has naturally noticed the slightly immature complexion hidden beneath Sasuke's transformation technique. Although Sasuke's true age is uncertain, his young age is certain. But among all friends, why care about age? Jiraiya sighed. You really are something, my brother. But since you've decided to remain pure, isn't this a bit too much? It must be uncomfortable. A Sasuke waved his hand and said, No matter how many escorts come, they won't be able to break my resolve. What is there to be afraid of? Truly, he is my good brother. What else could Jiraiya say? He could only silently give a thumbs up. The two of them became more and more excited as they communicated, truly enjoying each other's company. Although they had just met today, there was a feeling of meeting too late. They became true Iron Brothers, because Natsuo already gained enough strength, for now the criteria for accepting wives has become much stricter. Because Natsuo revealed his strength during the Kanoha collapse plan, or perhaps it was because the war had already broken out, many Kinochi were trying to escape an increasingly dangerous job. 
by marrying into the Achiha clan. However, the Achiha clan is no longer like before where even Chunin level Kunochi were accepted. After several years of accumulation, the number of wives in the Achiha clan is quite abundant. Although it's not to the extent that Natsuo can't handle it, but it's enough now. Unless a cage level Kunochi arrives or possesses a powerful Keke Janaki, Natsuo no longer plans to accept any more wives. After all, Natsuo encourages his wives to become stronger, do whatever activities they like, and even allows them to intervene in the administration of the Achiha clan, so any wife's expenses are not a small amount. Now, Natsuo has to defeat three or four women every day to complete his daily tasks, which is indeed not easy. If Natsuo had not obtained a sage body and did not have his Manjaku Sharingan technique that greatly aids his recovery ability, he might have had some difficulty persevering. After all, not even Natsuo can spend all day fighting for the revival of the Achiha clan. Occasionally, he also needs to exercise, maintain his skills, master ninjutsu, and research new medicines. Natsuo then looked at the only Kinochi he accepted as a wife during this time. Although he had imposed restrictions on accepting more wives, he couldn't let the female characters from the Naruto series pass when they arrived at his door, right? Sai, I've really sacrificed a lot for the Achiha clan. Natsuo sighed, with a cold expression, fair skin, and hair that shone like the sun, especially with a proud chest that almost looked down on everyone. In Natsuo's impression, it seemed that only the fifth Hokage of Kinoha village, Lady Tsunade, could firmly suppress this woman. She is Samui from Kumogaka, another spy. But Natsuo has also gotten used to it. After all, in the vast Ichiha harem two-thirds of them are spies. Samui is an elite jonin of Kumogaka, with exceptional talent, truly a valuable asset. Natsuo decided to show more favor to this person in the near future. Meanwhile, Samui quietly entered the house and observed the Ichiha clan's mansion out of the corner of her eye. There are so many children and many newborns. If we move the Achiha clan to Kumogaka, we will be able to obtain great combat power within 10 years at the latest. Rekage Sama, I will not disappoint the villagers' expectations. The fourth Shinobi World War broke out. Fifth Hokage Tsunade was busy dealing with matters. Today, news came from the coast of Kinoha that Kurigika suddenly attacked the border. Tsunade immediately called on many Jonin to come and discuss. This attack is very strange. Narashikaku, the intelligence officer of Kinoha, frowned. Given the current situation, even if Kurigika declares war directly, we are unable to provide much support to the coastal areas. But they chose to attack Kanoha at this time, considering Kurigika's previous behavior when the Chunin exams were held. I believe this may be the action of individual Kiri Shinobi, and has little to do with Kurigika. Before the Chunin exams, Kurigika threatened Kanoha with the excuse of Ringo Amairi's disappearance, as if they were going to declare war. At first, Kanoha was nervous. But the subsequent visit of Ao and others, and the ultimately signed treaty, gradually made the people of Kanoha realize that perhaps Kurigika did not want to fight with them, and this was only the action of individual lower-level Kiri Shinobis. And this time is similar to that time. After all, even a clear declaration of war cannot give Kanoha enough time to send reinforcements. Kurigika has no reason to play a sneak attack and lose the trust of a major ninja village for such a small benefit. It should be. Tsunade also nodded, but that doesn't matter anymore. Kurigika and Kanoha can't back down on this matter anymore. Now, she can't claim that this is just the action of her subordinates either. Rather than letting the shinobi world know about Kurigika's internal conflicts, it is better to go ahead and actually get involved in the war. After all, Kanoha is currently surrounded, and Kurigika has a geographical advantage, so they won't lose too much. Furthermore, this could be an opportunity, managing to transfer internal conflicts to external conflicts, which could help integrate Kurigika. Yes, but our country's coastal defense is weak, unlike the inland areas. The third Hokage signed an agreement with Kurigika, so the coastal defense was reduced. Nara Shikaku sighed softly. It's the third Hokage again. A Jonin muttered under his breath. What was he thinking when he revoked the coastal defense? The Jonin next to him snorted. Maybe he's just getting old. He's just seeking personal glory. Another elite Jonin shrugged. After all, the agreement with Kurigika can be considered his accomplishment. The expressions of the crowd turned unpleasant. This is another problem that the third Hokage overlooked. And now, they need to help fix it. The third Hokage's prestige has greatly diminished. If it weren't for the fact that the fifth Hokage, Tsunade, is his good disciple, people would probably have even harsher things to say. Tsunade remained silent. Although the third Hokage is their own teacher, his actions have made it difficult for people to have a favorable impression of him. Not to mention that the third Hokage has been in control of Kanoha for many years, with his influence spreading throughout the village. The Saratobi clan is also numerous and holds many important positions. 
Some scattered public opinion actually makes it easier for her to grasp power. Bang. Danzo slammed his cane heavily on the ground, making a crisp sound. The defense line of Karigaka needs support, so let me handle it. Danzo opened one eye, half closed as if just waking up from a dream. After all, there shouldn't be any stronger support than me. He couldn't let the public opinion continue to spread like this. After all, his relationship with the third Hokage was too significant. Indulging others in despising the third generation was simple, but it would definitely backfire on him in the end. Oh, are you willing to go? Tsune was somewhat surprised. If Danzo took charge of the defense line, the power that originally belonged to him within Kanoha could be in his control. She didn't expect Danzo to take the initiative. After all, it was Hiruzen's mistake, so let this former teammate help him clean up the mess. Danzo sighed lightly, as if reminiscing about his relationship with the third Hokage. But then he added another sentence. Of course, I am alone and weak, and I am also seriously injured. I need a skilled person to help Achiha clan head, would you be willing to lend me a hand? As he spoke, he looked at Natsuo with one eye. Tsune was taken aback, then quickly realized. So he's targeting Natsuo. She instinctively wanted to refuse. However, she heard Natsuo's clear and cheerful voice. Sure, I'm willing to accompany Danzo-sama and make some waves. And that concludes this episode. If you enjoyed it, I'd seriously love it if you guys could leave a like on the video as it genuinely helps out so much, and it keeps me going. Plus it takes only one second. That said, have a wonderful day. See you in the next one.